Is uh, Fiona not here? Eh? Well, if I had X-ray eyes, I'd tell you. Oh, I uh, I tried ringing her, but I think the phone's off the hook. Tell me something I don't know. Right, she's not in, and Alex looking for her. Yeah, I know. That's why she's not in. As far as I'm concerned, she's finished. Uh, Rita, yeah. uh, the roast is cooking beautifully. And maybe she's I mean, she can't expect me to go on representing her after this, can she? She's supposed to be a singer, not a flaming vanishing act. Anyway, I won't hold you up. Juvenile lead won't serve him. Oh, uh, I, I, I just wanted a word with Rita. Uh, don't forget, we're entertaining you at lunchtime. Oh, what are you doing? Blythe spirit. Alec. Techno notice, Derek, he's got some problems. Which are nothing to the ones I like. If Fred Elliott starts. I know, Rita, about Rita, this... Rita, believe me. Trust me, the last topic I'll allow Fred Elliott to raise will be his marriage proposal. Just look upon it as a gathering of friends with mutual interests in common. Well, as long as you stick like glue to what you want out of it, like dressing up and funny handshakes. Well, all that's required is Fred's rubber stamp. I'm quietly confident. 12.30 for one. Right, this party. Right, yeah. OK. Um, nothing formal, just, just to get together with me mates, yeah? Oh, what kind of 21st is that? I'm having tea at my mum's, aren't I? All the flipping family. Put a cake down, Liz. She's got to have a cake for a birthday party. Oh, yeah, well, cake's included. Well, I'm having one of my mum. What I'll do, right, is if there's any left, I'll, I'll bring that, yeah? What, leftovers? Maxine, you are getting free drinks and a few nibbles. If you don't want to come, forget it! Excuse me. I'm uh, trying to organise something here. Right. Uh, nibbles for how many? Well, Kevin and Sally can't come because they can't get a babysitter. So, of course, there'll be Precious Alan and um, me and Tony. And I think we can bank on Alec Gilroy turning up, can't we? Oh, button it, Maxine. You're not in work today, then? No. I did 72 hours last week. You can have too much of it, you know. <sighs> no choice, Gary. Well, come and have a game of football with us. That's a choice. I mean, this chucking yourself into work's all right, but... I'm not chucking myself into work. It's a necessity. It's to run up to Christmas, remember? All right, I forgot. Well, you're not doing out later on. Come and have a pint. No, I thought you were looking after Judy. I am. She's coughing and spluttering all over the place. Her mum's coming up later on to give us a break. So she's on her own? Who, her mum? No, she's got a scamper. No, Judy! Oh, oh yeah, only when I came round to have a check on you. I don't need checking on. I'm reading the paper, or I'm trying to. As I've said, I had a rough week. All I want to do is sit down and recharge my batteries. Right, yeah, of course. Uh, see you later then, eh? I'll get that, don't get up. I'll do on my way out. Yeah, well, if it's carol singers, tell them I'm not in. Right. Oh, thank you. Morning, Norman. Not working today, then? No. Oh, well. Sunday used to be the traditional day of rest until the supermarkets changed it. Made a difference, you know. So what do you intend doing with yourself? Nothing. Oh, I see. Alone with your thoughts. I know. It can be bad for you, can that? Mr Sugden, mate, look. I'm OK. I'm on top of the world, all right? I'm very pleased to hear that, Norman. <laughs> Don't mind a cup of tea. If you're making one, that is. I'm not surprised your manager's on the warpath. Why did you do it? Because I wanted to be with you. Come on. Don't say you didn't enjoy it. That's... That's not the point. Uh, you've let him down. Well, just forget about Alec. He's a pig. Do you know what he said to you me? You have let a lot of people down. Most of all, you've let yourself down. I feel responsible, don't you see that? Look, I've got a conscience and all, you know. I feel bad. Of course I do, but... Well, the alternative was too good to miss. Come on. I've been a naughty girl and I need slapping. Are you going to slap me? <laughs> no, I think I'll let Alec do that. You're going to have to face him sometime, you know. I oh, know. It's not now, eh? Hey, Adam. I mean, if she's got flu, what's she doing, Larry, in a felon? Eh? Spying on her, were you? 
I happened to be crossing the road when I saw him get out of his car. Uh, probably the doctor. Uh, doctors have bags, haven't they? Briefcases. All this fell out was a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, pint when you're ready, Betty. Preferably today. I'm on my own here. Can't you see? <laughs> Great. Well, you can study in here, can't you? In between serving customers. Oh, you know, help, Andy. You, Tonto, me the Lone Ranger out there. Do you know I'm in a right mess, Betty? I've got Judy and Samantha off with Flo, mm. and then Andy McDonald's let me down again. You'll have to come in tonight. Hey! Free! Oh, I can't come tonight. We've got visitors. Well, cancel it, Betty. I'm desperate. Right, who's next? Uh, this gentleman's before me, Vera. I can't cancel him. I'll have a pint and uh, whatever this other gentleman's having. Oh. Oh. I'll have an orange juice, if you insist. Right, bring some mixers up, Betty. Mm. You can forget tonight. <laughs> the answer's no. Do you know that lad of yours is a dead loss? What's the point of having an education if you're unreliable? If you win anything about you, you'd give us a lift. Prior engagement, Betty, love. I'm lunching with Rita at the Wiltons. You and Rita? <laughs> I'll tell you what, Sean, my miss would be dead pleased if you could see this. Me accepting a drink <laughs> off her current boyfriend. Not pleased about much these days, is she? Oh, my heart bleeds for you. Is that why you're doing it? Hey, hello. Nobody's indispensable, you know. Excuse me, but this must be my day for being confused. You mind telling me what you're on about? The mystery. The gifts. You're bound to be in the frame, aren't you? Sean, you're talking in riddles. Now, Elizabeth might find that attractive, but I'm afraid I don't. Thanks for the drink. Family outing, is it? Something like that. We're going to buy a boat. A look at one, Becky. She exaggerates. If you like it, though, you're going to buy it, aren't you, Des? If I like it. Boat, eh? Not emigrating, are you? It's a canal cruiser. In the car backs. And let Des do the talking. She'd buy it sight on seeing this one. Not at work today, then. Yeah, this is a hologram. Oh. It's a rum do, is that? Des and his lady. I thought she and her daughter were living over the bookie shop. Only I just saw him coming out of his house. Feel like a pint. Only I dare not Betty skimmed me alive. Got company coming tonight. Nice. Hi. Ah. Ex RAF mates. Got the supplies. He's thinking of buying a boat. Who? There's Barnes. Oh, it's bad news that. He's been there before. How's that? Des. Boats. He burns them. Does he? Ah. Right. Well, I'll let you get on with it. I'd be grateful. <clears throat> what? Excuse me, sir, but you've got a very lucky face, and I was wondering if you'd care to cross me palm with a bar of soap. Angie. Angie. What are you doing here? Called in to see you. Just glad you're in. Well, I feel a fool talking to an empty car, wouldn't I? <laughs> Call me. <laughs> oh, well, no. <laughs> OK, Fred. Uh, I can recommend the Amontillado. Capital, Derek, capital. I'll try the wine with the meal. Right. You were saying, Mavis? Uh, oh, lunch, it's just traditional roast beef. <laughs> Your line of work. If it's bought right and cooked right, you can't fail to hit the bullseye. <laughs> uh, um, uh, bullseye? Beef? Oh, oh very good. <laughs> ah. I'll just check me up. 
<coughs> uh, I notice you've only set four places, Derek. Does that mean you're not expecting... Anybody that... else? No, no, just the four. <laughs> One at each corner, so to speak, making up the... Uh, uh, ah. Table. <laughs> ah! Rita, Hello, welcome. <laughs> now the party's complete. <laughs> well, I brought you a bottle. If you don't like it, you can put it on your geranium. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Rita, love, you're looking very well. You're looking a lot better. I'm worried about you. Oh, well, I'm still not 100%, but uh, can't turn down a free dinner, can you? Oh, Rita. Hello, love. Now, don't you drink this if you don't feel well enough. Oh, I'll force it down. <laughs> A toast. Are all glasses charged? Uh, yeah. Now, I know this is Derek's job, this being his own. Uh, but... uh, no, 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 no. You, you go ahead, Brett. <clears throat> now, Rita's responsible for this, bless her. And I would feel it's amiss if I did not acknowledge it with a few words. Rita, you're looking at a very happy man. Because I have the joy and privilege of calling your friends my friends. To friendship oh. and all who sail in her. Yes, friend. to friendship. <laughs> mm, we are posh. So tell me, what happened after South America? North America. Then up as far as Canada. Some of the people I met you wouldn't believe. A fella in Oregon wanted to marry me, give me a used car lot as a wedding present. <laughs> well, why didn't you? Hadn't fulfilled my destiny, had I? And what's that then, eh? Coming back here to see me? Uh, not exactly, no. That was more an addendum to the agenda. <laughs> Firm I worked for sent me first to London, then up here to Manchester. Who was it said they only move who travel far? Me. Yeah, but who'd you nick it off? Kingsley Amis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, with me it's full circle, isn't it? Today I don't feel as if I've moved at all. I'm only a temporary mind, so don't get excited. Oh. So, how long are you staying for, then? Till I've sorted out Mike Baldwin, then it's back to London. Mike Baldwin? They do stuff for Quebec, doesn't they? I'm a key member of their design team. That's what I was doing in Canada, impressing Quebec. It's a small world. No, it's not actually, Curly. It's vast. And I've loved every inch of it. So, what about you? Still not married? No, no, definitely not married, no. Anyone on the scene, in the wings? What happened to that dozy girl you used to take up to the attic? What was her name? Uh, no, Angie, there's no one, full stop. I'll make another brew, eh? Kimberly, that was it. <laughs> yeah, long gone. <laughs> Still, she had more brains than some I could mention. Raquel, for instance, what, what's she up to now? Well, uh, just like you, she went off to fulfil her destiny. She, uh... She went abroad. Oh. Now, remind me, uh, was the sugar in this? No, where'd she go? I told you, uh, sh she went abroad. Mm. Thick as a brick she was, Raquel, wasn't she? <laughs> Good at catching fellas, but terrible at keeping them. I think it was her voice. Enough to have anybody dashing for the earplugs. <laughs> I can honestly say... I've not tasted anything as succulent in a long time. Yes, that was very nice, Mavis. Thank you. Well, I've just relieved you. Enjoyed it. Mm. Now, um, sponge pudding and custard, Rita. Oh, well, only a little one oh, for me. Fred. Big as you like, Mavis. I should be careful if I were you. I could get used to this. I said, get, get used to this. Well, we hope it's going to become a regular occurrence, don't we, Rita? Well, I, I know Derek does, cos... Well, he and Fred, well, you really hit it off together, haven't you? I'll serve the pudding. It's grand, is this, Rita? Good conversation, good food, <laughs> and the best company of all, you. <laughs> Let's just enjoy it for what it is, F.A. <sighs> Derek, I hope Mavis is obeying my orders in there. I said a little one. Oh, it's in hand, Rita. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Fred, uh, I must show you the garden after coffee. Garden's a bit parky for that, isn't it? Well, then, the, uh, the conservatory. I'm uh, seeking a little favour. The least you can do after all that grub you've just shifted. I'm always ready to do somebody a good turn. You know that, if it's within my scope. Very much within. Take to the day. Uh, a young fellow were taking his family on holiday. Well, I say young. He's 40-odd or so, is Timmy. Any road. 
His transport lets him down the night before, so I does no more than get our Ashley to get my car out and run him to the airport. No charge, just the pleasure of seeing that family back on track. Well, I'd expect nothing less of a square dealer. Hey, I didn't do it just because you were a member of the fraternity, you, you know. Of course not. Do anything for anybody, I would. Mind you, I must admit that Tommy and I had a lot in common. Tommy? I thought he said Timmy. You did, Fred, I heard you. No, it were him that Ashley took to the airport. Timmy. Tommy's Timmy. Tommy. Moo, I'm talking about. Don't think you knew oh, him. Oh, no, 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 but I knew of him. He died not long ago. That's him, I. Numbered among the celestial rectangle is Tommy, and yet still with us in a strange sort of way in Timmy. You're baffling me, Fred. Timmy's Tommy, to all intents and purposes, reincarnated, one for one, as it were, carrying on the good works of his father. Oh, yes. Yes, Tommy will rest in peace now that he knows Timmy's completed the number. Uh, are you saying that this Timmy has replaced his father as square dealer? Recently conscripted. Uh, confidential is that, Beric. You know, you know, we shun publicity. It strikes me you shun more than publicity. You shun honesty as well. Derek! Allowing me to go on hoping when all the time you knew the vacancy had been filled. Well, if you'd asked me direct, I'd have told you. There were no such devious underhand tactics. I've been duped. You've used me. I resent that, Derek. You've used me to get closer to Rita. Not in this world! Hey, now, cheer up, well, the pair of you. Well, if you think for one moment this woman would consider marriage to someone so lacking in honesty hey, and now, integrity... you're going too far, Derek. Shut up, Rita! I'm talking to this tub of lard! A gentleman does not tell a lady to shut up! How would you know how a gentleman behaves? You're loud, you're obtuse, oh, you're totally bereft baby, of scruple. I'm sorry, I've had enough, I'm going, I'm sorry! You're a scoundrel, Rita. Elliot! A womanising scoundrel! Derek! Rita! Rita! Elliot! Take this bivouac with you! Rita! Rita! None of that were my fault. It was a disaster, as I knew it would be. My fault for being there. Uh, uh, can I see you? I mean, I'll make, it, make us an ask of a tea. No! Go home, Fred. Just go home. Oh, that was Angie Freeman. It was, Kev. Huh? Why didn't you tell her to give us a knock? Oh, you'll see her around, especially Sally. Tell her to look forward to it. See you in a bit. See ya. <coughs> Listen to her. She'll catch you dead in here. Well, I've no staff, have I? Anyway, it's all them paper tissues she keeps using. She's getting all the fibres up her nose. She's got the flu. And you shouldn't have put her under pressure to come in. <coughs> Destiny, did he buy it? <laughs> not in yet. Just curious, though. Well, I mean, it's not every day your manager buys a boat, is it? <laughs> so I'm paying him too much. Come on, drink up. I hate it, Neil. Oh, Jim. Oh, don't worry about Jim. He looked blank when I broached the subject. Jim? Well, you get a sixth sense in my game, Liz. You can tell when a bloke's on the level or not. What are you on about? The flowers. It was definitely not Jim, in my opinion. You mentioned it to him? Well, indirectly, yeah. Just to ease your mind. I never thought for a minute it was Jim. You fool. I'm going home. Hang on. No, Sean, I'm going home. And you'd no right telling him. I didn't. He didn't know what I was on about. Liz. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you, do you think it wise having an infected barmaid sneezing all over the beer? I want to take her home, but beer is digging her heels in. Well, if I lose time at work over this, I'll be claiming compensation. What are you waiting for, Vera? A fellow coming round with a barrow shouting, bring out your dead. But I've no staff. How am I going to manage? Oh, I can give you a lift. You? What do you know about pulling pines? You can't squirt a can of polish proper, you. Judy, we're going home. Hang on, I'm the boss. Oh, thanks, Mum. I feel awful. Oh, well, go on, then. Clear off, pair of yeah, you. Yeah, come on, come oh. on. Let's have you back to bed. 
I just have to shut Bob, that's all. And this is your fault, Alec Gilroy, drawing attention to it. Well, she wasn't exactly inconspicuous, was she, Vera? Anyway, you don't have to shut the shop, neither, because the cavalry's here. <laughs> Me. All right, take it or leave it, Vera. But if Sean kept it vague... All Jim needs is another excuse. Hey, I get that down, you. An excuse for what? To come sniffing round again. Play the big protector. Well, maybe you need one. Some bloke has definitely got his eye on you, Liz, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, if he gets really worrying, I shall go to the police, let them sort it. And say what? Somebody I don't know has bunged me a thousand quid and sent me some flowers. I know. Daft, isn't it? I wish it was. Scary, more like. You can say that again. There's something about that fella, the messenger. Oh, well, it gives me the creeps. Sean did run you home, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Hey, I didn't invite you round here to put the wind up, mate. I'm not. Yeah, well, fill that up. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not in? Told you so. And if he does come in, you brass it out. No, just apologise, that's all I'm doing. Right, girls. Um, two white wines and sodas, please. Hey, what are you doing, Alec? Little lighted. Well, it was either me or the SAS. Vera was panicky. Yeah, I heard she was desperate. I didn't know she was that desperate. <laughs> you were never my favourite customer, young Webster. Hey, Alec Gilroy, back behind the Rovers bar, eh? You used to have this place, didn't you? Mm. World's worst landlord. Funny how you forget the bad times, innit? <laughs> 220, love. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Right, go on then. Go and sort it out. Alec. Can I have a word, please? Uh, I'm sorry, we've no food on, ladies. Skeleton staff and not even a bone to pick. I, I want to apologise. I, I want to explain. Save your breath for your nasal spray, Fiona. You're in breach of contract and I'll be suing you in the courts. Say goodbye to that little shop of yours, eh? Yes, Squire. Fiona's no idea who's on the guest list. Hey, why don't you come? I can't go to a 21st uninvited. Of course you can. <laughs> Bring Ken when he comes back from Scotland. Oh, if he gets back from Scotland. He's probably camped out underneath his doorstep. He'll come back, if only to see you. Oh. Hello, 7431. Mum, listen. I love. Uh, what's up? Right, listen, I haven't got long, but, um... I've got to see you tomorrow. Yeah, 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 I know Dad's due to visit, but you've got to come by yourself. Mum, listen. I've got to see you tomorrow. Steve? Steve? He's scared. But he couldn't tell me. Tell you what? Who it is. Who sent the money. He knows. Oh, morning. Oh, she <laughs> love this. She love me as well. That time for a change. <sighs> I don't know. So, look, what is so important that you have to see Steve without me? A favour. That's all I'm asking. Well, that's no answer, is it? Look, I told you. He rang me and he wants to talk to me in private. And he won't say what about. I'll tell you what, Elizabeth, you're becoming as mysterious as your boyfriend, so you are. Jim. All right, fair play, sorry. Ah, oh, well, why not? Be cruel not to, wouldn't it? After all, you're getting used to getting your own way, aren't you? Thanks, Jim. Real. Oh, it's terrible, I know, but I was half hoping he'd scream the house down when it was time for me to go. No, he didn't. But Denise allowed you to be alone with him, though, didn't she? She never let us out of her sight. The only concession was that the accountant made himself scarce out on business, or so she said. How was Daniel? Well, he was his usual self. He made me welcome as if I'd just come home from a day's work. And what's Denise like with him? Motherly to the nth degree, for my benefit. As an exercise in hypocrisy, it took some beating. What time do you get back? Oh, after midnight, I'm shattered. Oh, are you going to take the morning off? No, no. Uh, I've got a couple of free periods, so I can go in late. More coffee? 
Yeah, go on then, I've got time. This is a good one from the Mallets. You're 21 today, so we're just here to say, life's a mix of joy and sorrow, hair today, gone tomorrow. I reckon she got that out of book. Look, is it because I brought the cards up for you? What? I mean, did you want to pick them up off the mat yourself? I mean, some people want to do that. No, it's okay. I'm sure you'll get a card from me when you go round to your mum's for tea. No, I won't. He won't be there. He's in America. You'd think he'd remember your 21st, wouldn't you? You are still banking that money you lent you, aren't you? Yeah, of course I am. Standing order every month. I'm still gonna have to pay him back even if I lose this place. Alec can't see you for that much. I mean, you only miss one gig. Look, who knows what he can do, eh? He's vindictive and I've been a fool. Happy birthday, Fiona. If anyone was to give Fred Elliot the elbow, it should have been me. Instead, your Derek gets up on Derek his hind legs. Derek was cut to the quick. Your boyfriend knew full well what was on his mind. Derek hasn't got a mind. Fred Elliot's not my boyfriend. And how do you think I felt? Stood there like a fool with a tray of sponge puddings. Anyway, I got rid of him. Fred. But he'll be back. Ah, Kevin Webster was in earlier, said you had a visitor yesterday. Yeah, Angie Freeman. You know, I don't know why I bother buying this. The uh, Jungle Telegraph's a lot cheaper. Well, That's they right. all leave Weatherfield for sunnier climbs, but they all come back, don't they? <laughs> nice one, maybe. Oh, so, uh, hey, are you coming to Fiona's do tonight? Uh, no, I've made me excuses. Oh. Well, what's cheering him up? Maybe. Right, this time I am taking to my bed. If you know who comes in, as he will, will you tell him I'm not seeing anybody today? You're not leaving me to face him. I want no flowers, no pills, no pig feet, nothing. Have you got that, oh. Mavis? Hey, you owe me. I might come down later and relieve you for lunch, if I'm feeling better. Oh. Trouble? There's me with a house full of puddings and all she can do is think about herself. Oh, I'm sorry, Tony. What, what was it you wanted? Uh, but I only called in to say thank you. I mean, come on, any idiot can pull a pint. Yeah, but how long does it take to train an idiot? I'm still short-staffed, Alec. Vera, I saw last night as a bit of fun, the chance to bring back a few memories. You, you can't rely on me to do it again. But you enjoyed it. You said so. Well, well I, but there's a snag, isn't there? In all conscience, I'd hate to be the one to make his condition worse. Jack, you know, I mean, if he if he knew I'd been behind that bar, he'd race back here in his pyjamas. How do you mean? Well, you should loaf. I mean, he's never liked me, has he, Jack? I felt it when we worked together. It hurt me then, and it hurts me now. You well. see, no matter what I did, I couldn't win his trust fear. And I tried, believe me, I tried. Well, it was bare grudges, I must admit. Oh, it happened. I know it does. I mean, no rhyme, no reason. It just happens. Same with a cocker spaniel that lived across the road from me in Southampton. But does he have to know, Jack? Ooh, I wouldn't like that, Vera. Going behind his back. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'll make a start in the bar. Mind you, the alternative doesn't bear thinking about. No staff. Pub going down the tubes. Hardly the tonic your Jack needs, is it? Mm -hmm. I say, hey, what? What does Alec Gilroy want? Oh, it's suddenly Vera's right hand man helped her out in the bar. I had to take our Judy home. She was in no fit state. Behind this bar? Alec Gilroy? Why, oh, he knows the ropes, or so he tells me. He's not the sort to put his hand in the till, is he? <laughs> I'm surprised we've still got a till here. <laughs> Uh, look, if you're busy, I can always call back later. No, come in, Mr. Barlow. I'm just giving Sophie a dinner. Hello, Sophie. Is that good? Sit down. Uh, no, no, really, I can't stop. Uh, progress report on Daniel. I went up to Scotland uh, yesterday and uh, he's looking fine. I just felt you ought to know. Uh, what soap powder is she using? Um, what's she washing his clothes in? Uh, well, I'm afraid I don't know. That wasn't exactly... Well, he has a reaction to some. Did you tell her? And what about fabric conditioner? Is she using it? Look, Kelly, my intention was just yeah. to see Daniel. Ah. His mother wasn't yeah. exactly hospitable. 
progress report, you said. There's no progress if you ain't being looked after proper, is there? Come on, Sophie, eat your dinner. Well, go on. It's your son. You must have found out summer. Mr Baldwin to the office, please. Mr Baldwin to the office. The lady from Quebec arrived. <laughs> I can't wait to see Mike's face. Hey, I knew it were you. Kevin said he saw you driving away from Curly's. I couldn't call, Sal. I was dead busy. Yeah, well, you will call, though, won't you, when you've got a bit more time? You? Me. And you knew it was her? <laughs> no, honestly. Quebec summer collection. Stephen Reed wants her to show it to you. When you're ready, Mr Baldwin, time's money. Please, Kelly. If it was within my power to bring him home, I would. Believe me. But he's gone to strangers and they don't know how to look after him. Yeah, but well, Daniel's resilient and because of you, he's a fine, healthy boy. What's going on? Now you're here, I'm going. Look, going if where? I thought it was going to have this effect on you, I wouldn't have said. What have you said to her? I'm sorry, I just can't bear to think of my Daniel with strangers. I, I can't let her go in this state. Sorry. Kelly. What about Sophie? Hey. hey Kelly, I'm running you home. Oh, hang on a sec. <phone rings> yes? Kev? Hey, hey, you'll never guess what is going on here. Pass, Sal. Now you try and guess what's going on here. This pleated back's a bit complicated, so you'll have to put your best girls on that one. All my girls are best. As long as you get it right. Sorry, Mr Baldwin, I'm going to have to go home. Kevin's been left on his own with Sophie and... So, make other arrangements. I need you here. Well, what other arrangements? Kevin can't mind her. He's dead busy. And you're not, I suppose. This problem would never arise in Toronto, you know. Got a crash as big as that workroom downstairs. Have to talk to Stephen Reed about getting one here. Hey, Mr. Baldwin. Yes, all right, all right, go. We pretend we're all in Toronto. <laughs> Thanks. Now listen, creches cost money I can't afford, so don't mention it to Stephen, OK? Give over, you're loaded. Curly Watts says you change your car twice a year. Oh, yeah, and what does he know about it? He lost what marbles he had left when his wife did a runner. Why is his sleeve only three quarters? Wife. What? He said Curly had a wife. Yeah, that's right, didn't you know? Raquel, she used to work in the Rovers. He married her, didn't he? Lasted all of five minutes. Oh, no. Oh. That racing paper's not for you, is it, Betty? No, it's for Jack. <laughs> Vera's visiting him this afternoon. <laughs> How was Sunday lunch? Oh, oh it was embarrassing. Sorry. It didn't quite end in fisticuffs, but very nearly. I mean, I, I've just... Waiting terrified for Fred Elliot to come in. Well, who was fighting then? No comment. Huh? I'd rather draw a veil over the whole thing, but whoever's fault it was, it wasn't mine. Rita's. Let's just say, Betty, mm. that if she would stop vacillating over Fred Elliot, life would be a lot simpler for the rest of us. Doing what over him? Well, playing hard to get. Oh, I see. <laughs> Hello, love. Uh, you any better? A bit. Good. Packet of these, please, Mavis. I've got a throat like sandpaper. Oh. Well, you're not thinking of going back to work, are you? Yeah, I tried that last night and then it killed me. Oh, yeah, your mum was saying. Anyway, I better be off. Vera will think I'm lost. <laughs> oh, listen, if you see your mum, tell her to sort it out a bit quick, will you? She'll understand what you're talking about. What? Well, that computer of hers, you know, with that catalogue. They're saying that I owe her money, but your mother's looking into it, so... Uh, bye bye, Bye, Betty. Thank you. <laughs> Well, at least your illness is genuine, Judy. Rita, she's just bluffing to keep a certain butcher on his mantle. Close it up. It took you long enough, did it? Come on, then. What happened? Where's Kelly? I told you. She went off crying about something Ken Barlow had said about Daniel. Anyway, you're here now. You can take over. See? Told you your mummy won't be long, didn't I? Kevin, why me? Couldn't you sort this out? I mean, surely you could look after your daughter for half a day. So, we pulled out here. Kev, it's Corbus is on the phone. Just don't those track rods for the Peugeot. 
tell him, yeah? I've got to go. Sorry. Come on, Sophie, love. No. I, I came here to clean the bathroom, not to get the third degree. Admit it, ma'am. You're dipping catalogue again, aren't you? No. How many... Suspected as much when you borrowed off us. Told you what I wanted it for. To buy a jacket. Oh, funny I hadn't seen the jacket, isn't it? Oh. So now I'm a liar as well as a thief. I don't know yet, do I? Shows a jacket, ma'am, and quick. Thanks, Louis. So what's the plan for tonight? Alex again? Well, if you don't agree to come in. Look, I don't like working evenings, Vera. I mean, Billy wants me at home. So Alex doing you a favour and all, isn't he? Jack's not going to like it. Jack won't find out unless some loud mouth tells him. Look, it's only temporary better till I get my staff back. I've got you some peanut brittle. I'm not in a peanut brittle mood. Mrs Sullivan, what for a face like? She wasn't there. The other one saved me. Mavis. Did you say out about Sunday's fiasco? She just looked at me a bit face. Why don't you go and see yourself, Uncle Fred? Delicate situation, Ashley. I say, delicate situation. Well, sup up, let's get back to the shop. I thought you wanted to see Mrs Sullivan, Uncle Fred. I do. The question is, does she want to see me? Come on, back to the shop. Hey, Freddy. Hiya. Hi, Ashley. Usual, please, V. Right, love. So, I don't suppose you know what the big secret is then, Sean? Sorry? Well, Elizabeth's going to see Stephen on her own. You know, it's all uh, very hush hush. I know what you're on about. Don't you? Oh, well, that's one up to me then, isn't it? It's obviously something just keeping from the pair of us. 65 kilo. There you are, Vera. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Look, whatever you say, just look pleasant. I don't want no getting back. But this fella, this Fraser Henderson, who is he? Well, Fraser's like Mr. Big in here. He's seen you and he likes you. In fact, it's a bit more than that. He fancies you. A prisoner? Well, you can just tell him from me to quit it. I don't want his money and I don't want his flowers. Well, can't you just like him? Be flattered. Steve, the whole thing frightens me to death. I don't want it, do you hear me? Tell him. Well, I've got enough on my plate explaining this, haven't I? What? You turning up instead of me dad? Fraser's hardly going to be happy he's missed you, is he? You don't know me, Stephen. I don't know him. Mum, I've told you. He's seen you. He talks to me about you. Look, if you can't accept his gifts for yourself, do it for me. Because if you don't, I'll probably get me a kick in. Most have seen better days, but Jean can work wonders. Those owners are relying on her to bring them to life. Every job that comes in is different. Because every girl I try to bring. I could brain you let me shout my mouth off like that. Hello, Angie. I knew there was something up yesterday. Yeah. Why, Curly? Why didn't you tell me about you and Raquel? Fancy a cup of tea? Instead of letting me slag her off like I did. Do you realise how bad that makes me feel? You feel bad, I know, otherwise you'd have opened up. That got something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, Raquel Star certificate. You know, the star that I discovered for her. It's disappeared now. It's gone into a big black hole. I'm sorry. That's what I came to say. I'm sorry about you and Raquel. And I'm sorry for what I said. No, no, it, it's my fault. Listen, it's just that seeing you again is the best thing that's happened to me in, well, ages. And I just didn't want to spoil it. Listen, do you fancy going to a do tonight? I've got an invite here somewhere. There you go. Hi, Ed. Oh, thanks, Rachel. Really right, <laughs> thank you, Mark. Brilliant. Oh, thanks. Right, just sit down around there and uh, just tell Liz what you want to drink, yeah? Right. Hey, you didn't tell me how you get on at your mum's. <sighs> Pretty perilous, really, yeah. They wanted to come here back for a while. Why? Because my dad was half canned and kept bursting into tears telling everyone what I was like when I was a bear bear. Mm. Have you heard from your Lee? No. Not a sausage. I think he's just forgotten. <laughs> it's Jay's the birthday girl. Hey, hiya. <laughs> oh, you're here. I am, so don't come too near. Oh, hey, right. give her a kiss for me, will you? Oh, all right. Oh, nice. Whoa! <laughs> I said a kiss, not a 
snog. Oh, we're just showing your affection for her, you like her, I brought you Prezi as well, as well as what Lump has just given you. Thank you, and thank you for coming as well. You're welcome. Hey, hiya. Hiya. Hello. You could have told me, couldn't you? You were visiting your steam. Well, it was all very last minute. Anyway, your mate Jim told you, didn't he? Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Hi. Um, who's that dark girl in the corner? Jill Ferguson, why? No, I just thought I knew from somewhere, that's all. Any sign of him yet? What, of Alan? No. But he said he might have to work. But if I were you, I'd actually look after Loverboy here, cos he seems to be taking a fancy to our Jill. Hey, I just asked what you were called, that's all. Hey, hello. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, sir. What, what can I get for you? Just off, better thanks. Ah. She's uh, 21 a day, did you know that? Who? Fiona. It's hardly a joyous occasion under the circumstances. Yeah, playtime at the moment, friend. I only discuss business when I have a secretary taking down minutes. Look, it wasn't her fault that she missed that gig in Scunthorpe. It was mine. Well, then, if you leave your name and address, I'll sue you as well. 60p, please. She took to her room like Rapunzel only came down to see if Fred had been in. Well, it's obvious why he didn't show. He couldn't face me. Not after the stunt he pulled. Oh, for whatever reason, he didn't call. And from Rita's reaction, I would say that he didn't ring either. Did she say he didn't ring? Oh, but I could tell. If anything, she seemed disappointed. If I'd have known how upset Kelly was going to be, I'd never have called. It was a terrible mistake, I'm sorry. Yeah, have you spoke to her lately? Well, I tried, but her parents are very snappy. Heaven knows what she told them. Yeah, I tried to phone her as well, got the same response. So, it's not going to turn in tomorrow, is she? Oh, hi, Vera. How's, uh, how's Jack? Oh, hi, yeah. Uh, well, I saw him this afternoon. He's still in pain, but he's on the right side. No idea when he's coming out? Oh, wish he would come out. They're all down with flow. Mm. <laughs> what intrigues me is I persuaded Alec to step in. No, I didn't. He volunteered, bless him. <laughs> Alec Gilroy, a volunteer, can you believe that? Well, maybe he'll volunteer to mind Sophie tomorrow, eh? Oh, come on, Kevin, surely Sally will well, do Well, Sally's digging her heels in, Ken, she's going to work. She made that plane before she slammed the door and went to bed. Tax a bunch, you played a blinder. Of course, I recognise you now. Well, if Fiona sent you round to give me the old soft soap... She doesn't she... even know that I'm here. She's trying to enjoy a party. Money for dresses, studio time, demo tapes. I wasted a bundle on that girl and I entangled in it back with interest. Huh. So she told me. It's a messy business, civil action. It can get very personal. No barristers, the prior know everything. Facts and figures and invoices. They'll leave no balance sheet unturned. So? So I'm just suggesting it might not be worth anybody's while in the long run. Some kind of barrack room lawyer, are you? <laughs> Uh, no, Mr. Gilroy. What are you, then? I'm a friend of yours. No, I ask what, not who. Oh, all right. For what it's worth, not that I think it's got the slightest relevance, sir. I'm a detective. Store detective? CID. Hi. Hi! I'm here, although I don't know why. Oh, well, I'm glad you are. I'm in need of some moral support. I still think I should have had an invite. Hey, you're a friend of the management. Hey, listen now, did you go on with Steve? Did he tell you? Yeah, he did. He didn't really make any sense, though. Didn't make me feel any better, either. Of course, you know, owning me on Garage is only the start. What I really want to do is Formula One racing. You know, Formula One racing, you know, a couple of cars, a team of my own, that sort of thing. <laughs> if Doctor can see you now, he'd sign you off. Doctor can see you now, he'd sign you off. You're knackered, Gav. It's up with Tony. He's forgotten how to dance. Oh, he's over there playing Mr. Big Man. Oh, I've got a drink somewhere. Everybody! Cut cutting time! Yeah. Oh, you're wrong. Oh, no, I hate this bit. But I'm really glad that you're doing it. 
The cake, ladies and gentlemen, I've just got to tell you this, was ordered all the way from Chicago by uh, Mr. Lee Middleton, who I know is Fiona's brother. Yeah! There's a card in the room as well. Uh, you open that little fancy thing to cut this in. Natalie, I've forgotten the knife. I told you not to have you do it. We're rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> He's let me off for my birthday present. He's let me off with the money that I owe him for the shop. Fantastic. Congratulations. <laughs> it's a picket pee, Ali. It won't let you off, really, innit? Hey, don't you worry about Alec. I've had a word with him. He's called off his dogs. You're in the clear, Fiona. Honest. Would I lie? Hey, Fiona. There's 21 of these, so I hope you've got plenty of puff. Come on, let's have you up here. Uh, lights down, please. There you go. Make a wish. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Yeah! 21 today! 21 today! Yo! Everyone. It's the next morning, Maxine. Oh, you know this much? Decided then. Have I decided? Well, none of my suggestions was any good. Kevin, you had two suggestions. One was Emily and the other one was Percy. Which, in actual fact, amounts to one suggestion. And then you wanted me to do all asking. Perhaps you could just clear these breakfast dishes away for me then. I'll do it at dinner time. I've got to get across the road. Right. Don't suppose you could collect Rosie from me just this once, could you? I shouldn't have thought so, no. No. Look, so I'm not just being difficult, but when school's finished, it's our busiest period. You've got women picking the cars up from last night, dropping them off for tomorrow. Oh, women. <sighs> Come on, Sophie. Come on, girls, let's go and get ready. So what are you going to do with Sophie, then? I haven't got a clue, Kevin. <coughs> but don't you worry. I'll sort it out. Come on, love. I don't know if it's come to your attention, daughter dear, but this is not the evening. And wielding this mop is not my party trick. I'm cleaning. And I'm not in the habit of coming in a new outfit every day for that. So we're going to see you out and about in this new jacket tonight, then? You might. Although I was saving it for best. Joyce, did you get that catalogue payment uh, straightened out for me? Look, what, what is this? Home shopping? Get some work done. Oh, you all right, Better? Oh, yes, it's just one of those funny sensations. What do you call it? Deja vu, you know, like you've been in this situation before. Oh. Look, all I'm saying is that your landlady's husband's ill in hospital and it's up to all of us to pull together. Yeah. Uh, Alex, absolutely right. I mean, we shouldn't be standing around chatting now. Um, I'll, get, I'll get back to you later, Betty. Right. I, I better do upstairs. Hmm. Betty. What? You know that reminds you were sent? Have you got it? It's in my bag. Well, I got one this morning, you see. I reckon it must be the computers. I'm going to ring and query it. Do you want me to ask about yours? Well, your mum said she'd sort it out for me. Yeah, but I'm phoning anyway. Oh, well, I'll go and get it, love. Right. Now, whose turn is it to make the brew? Oh, wasn't you, boys, isn't it, Betty? According to Jack and Vera's rules. <laughs> Hello? Kevin? Well, what's going on? Has your daughter been on the phone? Well, what's going on here? Um, Stephen Reed's online one is in Hong Kong. Tell him I've got a great idea for a children's range. Oh, I'm in trouble. What do you mean? She's inspired thousands of pounds of extra work, potentially. Yeah, inspired Mike to look for a new supervisor, more like it. Hello? Hello? Nobody <laughs> there? <laughs> I just can't get over Lee giving me this place, you know. Do you know what I can do with it now? Not that I put any thought into it whatsoever, but have a look at these plans, see what you think. Oh, I've borrowed some new clothes, by the way. My clothes, my ex-boyfriend. You know you don't need to ask Max. Hey, Tony, what happened to him last night? Don't know. 
at one point, right, I thought we might go 70s. Then I thought it might date. And then I thought, well, would people really know the difference? <laughs> Come on, then. Help yourself to come. Hello, Fiona Middleton. Hiya, Jill. Are you all right? Thanks for coming last night. Yeah, and thank you for the earrings. Yeah, they're great. I'm going to wear them today. So, did you have a good time? Well, you met someone. Who? Yeah. Yeah, I think I know who you mean. I think you've got problems. Yeah, I do. Well, I'm going to probably have Sophie on whiskey and cigars come five o'clock. <laughs> Just fill in those details for us, will you? Well, Fiona's 21st last night, right? Oh, yeah. We could go, but remember. Well, you might have saved me if you had. Yeah? Well, Max drank every cocktail going as usual. <laughs> and then she passed out as usual. Yeah. So, um, I got chatting to someone else. Female. And then I uh, took her phone number, didn't I? And then I said I'd ring her, didn't I? I mean, she wasn't anything spectacular, really, you know. She just had that one little quality Max didn't. She was vertical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but was she conscious? It helped, yeah. Why do I always get tangled up with the next one before I'm properly finished with the last? Because you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Trouble is, girls aren't always too happy about that, are they? So, have you considered not ringing this other one, then? Oh, Kev. I'm a man of my word. If I said a ring, I'm gonna have to ring, aren't I? Uh, can you deliver it to my house when it's done? I thought you had an excuse to get out and about. You thought wrong. I don't know how you're not tempted to do a few of these yourselves each day. Rita hardly needs to. Tell the world. <laughs> hey, can I have some room here, please? Hello, Emma. I'm not sure, but you could be about to get a visitor. Outside, garage. Waste of money, these. Oh, you say that every time, Tricia. How did you do? What? We know. I don't know. I, I think... Can you take that for me, please? A hundred pounds? You've won a hundred pounds! Oh, I have! I have! Hey, let me see. Oh, oh, bells, oh, bells. Oh. Well, why didn't you serve her first and she'd have had my dump ticket? I'd have had that hundred pounds spent by now instead of standing in with my mouth open. Oh, go on, give her her money. Oh, you filled in your details, have you, Joyce? Right. My purchase comes to a grand one pound fifty, I Thanks, believe. Emily. Anyway, maybe I'll be luckier next time, eh? See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be coming here again. Oh. This couldn't have come at a better time. Good. Oh. Well, I suppose that's what keeps them hooked. Well, I think this calls for a cup of tea. Yes, you get it back. I mean, that's very nice, thank you. Just got into a taxi. <laughs> Coming up to Thunder Day for most folk, and here we are just getting started again. Oh, I. <laughs> Listen, Alec, I know you haven't said all, but. I know you'll be wanting summer. You know, for hours you're putting in. Money? Well, it's only fair. Oh, not payment. For working here, after all the years of service Jack gave me, and now there he is. No, no, no. I'd be embarrassed. But... I understand. I don't know. You and Bet and Annie Walker. You've all made your mark in here, haven't you? <laughs> well, you wouldn't, Jack, will make yours. Do you think so? Oh. Oh, don't you realise what impact you can have, Vera? I mean, young adults coming here for their first proper drink. It needs to needs to be an event for them. What about the wild nights you had when you were a girl, eh? Oh, I had plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine. You go into your local and it turns out to be the night when you meet the man or girl you're going to marry. <laughs> there was a bit of a sing-song. It was a theme night. Folk all dressed up. Green. Huh? Everything was green. Even the drinks were green. It was an Irish night. And what was the name of the landlady? Vera Dilworth. <laughs> what a character she was. <laughs> she even dyed her hair green. What? For a room full of Jim McDonald's? Well, it was just an idea, Vera. <laughs> and uh, about that money business, I mean, if it makes you feel any better, I mean, you can 
slip me the few pounds, if you like. <laughs> but at least let me earn it by putting some thought into this Irish night for you. Do you think Diane may ever be going so far? Possibly. I did say when he gave me the job that having a family is a bit unpredictable at times. Isn't it, Trisha? Hey? Eh? Just saying, having a family has its problems. Do you know, he hadn't even noticed this yet. Sensitive yeah. soul always has been. Hey, are you still all right to go to the supermarket? Yeah, that's where we're going out with Sophie. We're going to go and get Rosie and then we're going to go shopping. Hi. Right. It's my husband about. No, he's at a meeting, but he will be back soon. Oh, right. come on then. See ya. See ya. Bye. See ya. Oh, come on, Sophie. So, you travel all around the world to end up with a job back here, eh? Hey. <laughs> My job's in Canada, and I live in London. <laughs> I, uh, I worked for Stephen too, you know. Uh, Launch of the first range, did the catering. Did you say? No. We've only just made the weather for a connection. Oh. You're super, isn't it? Uh, to work for. Mm. I've known worse. So, uh, will you be doing all the travelling now, or shall we be seeing Stephen again? His management. He fancies a trip, he takes it. If not, he sends somebody else. <laughs> yes, Mike, what can I get you? Uh, Lion Scotch and the GMT. Right. Mm. Now then, you have to talk to him about. Uh, no, Vera. And you won't? I promise you. Right, I'm off then. I won't be too long, Ali. Yes, it's, uh, no rush, Vera, no rush. <laughs> Give him my best uh, regards. There you are, Mike. Keep the chance. Oh, thank you. Oh, Judy. Keep an eye on things, will you? I've got one or two phone calls to make. Yeah. I know who it is. Who? Hey. Do you ever have that thing about lookalikes? You know, when you meet someone new and they always remind you of somebody in the past. And it just drives you mad until you can think who it is. Yes. Paul Risbrook. That's who you look like. First boy I ever kissed. Or oh, who kissed me, I mean. Oh, yeah, very good. Right. So what? Put you off for life, did it? No. Not at all. Oh, yeah. Is Max not with you? No, we do go out separately sometimes. As it seems you do. I got a phone call from Jill, my mate from college. She was there last night. Did you talk to her? I might have. Only she seems to think she remembers talking to you. Actually, she seems to think she remembers you asking her for a phone number. The thing is, she thought that this Tony that she'd met might have been the Tony I used to talk about. And she, unlike another friend of mine I might mention, was paying me the courtesy of finding out if I minded first. Well, and do you? No, I don't. I can think of someone who might, though. How about you mind your own business? <laughs> How about you find some of your own friends and stop using up all of mine? Mm, I might just give you all a miss. Even better. Getting low on tonics, Jacko. I beg your pardon. I said we're getting low on tonics. You just called me Jacko. Oh, force of habit, sorry. Still getting low on tonics. <laughs> Cellar where it used to be, I suppose. Curly? Hiya! While you're in the chair, it's your last chance to buy me a drink. Why? I'm off tomorrow. Uh, I thought you said that you'd be around all week. Practically all week. I've got to whiz back to London and see the boyfriend before I go off to Canada again. Make the effort, you know, keep him sweet. Yeah, right, uh, Sam. Oh, sorry, Samantha, a pint, please. No, uh, two. Why didn't you tell me you was taking sulfur at work, were you? Because I didn't have any other option. Kevin, don't leave me with the problem and then criticise me for what I do. I was worried, that's all. Yeah, well, today's over. You just worry about tomorrow. Although Mike may just grant your wish and fire me. How many years did I have to listen to you complain about him? How unfair he was, how unreasonable he was. Suddenly, he's the man with perfect solution. Now, I'm the one who's got to compromise. Look, I know you like your job and all that. Yeah, I don't know that you do. You see, Mike Baldwin treats me like I've got a brain. He's one of the few. Look, this new man stuff, Sal. I struggle with it, but I do try. Will you just tell me how this family misses out by me going to work here? I haven't stopped doing all the mothering, all the shopping, meals, birthday parties. I still do it all, and I go to work. I mean, what do you want me to do, Kevin? Take the kids away like Denise did, and then you don't have to worry about it. Don't talk daft. I'd go mad without you. 
Aaron might have gone mad with you. Come on. We'll work something out. That's all I'm saying. It's we. Not me all the time. A ship mentioned. No. Which says it all in my experience. Any sign of... What a sausage. Uh, right, Rita, we're off. Good night. 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 Thanks for staying. Oh, Rita! Hello, stranger. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be having a drink over the road. <clears throat> I should if I were you, Derek. We thought we might have seen you earlier. You were spotted. I had other business in the area. So you weren't just avoiding me? Yes, I was. Oh. Fred. You know, <clears throat> I get ladies come into the shop, well, mostly ladies, and with the supermarkets, etc., these days, there's a lot remain faithful to Fred Elliott, quality butcher, but there's one or two that have, um, well, got the impression that there's a bit more to their relationship with me than what meets the the meat. It can happen. Folk will tell you, Rita. I have heard. They call me a womanizer. Bit of flirtation's good for business. As cute as ever. You're not dwelling on what Derek said. I know what I'm like. I say I say things in jest behind the safety of my counter Helen and before doesn't. I doesn't. And before I know it, I find myself promised to three Weatherfield women. You've proposed to other women? Eileen uh, Phillips and Norma Beatty. I don't know what I said, but turns out I've got myself engaged three times since last Saturday fortnight. Not quite engaged, Fred. Nothing was settled. No, it wasn't. Any road. Uh, well, I'll... I'll get round the other two somehow. I always do. Is that why you're here? To get round me? Well, I'm single, I'm still in business, and I don't have to be dishonest to anybody but myself. Except perhaps Eileen and Norma? Except perhaps Eileen. I'll always wonder what your answer might have been. I say, I'll always wonder. Never tell me. Either way, I don't. It, it could. I'll just have to remain curious. So will I. Lift. No, thank you. Fine. I'll, uh, I'll give you this and I'll go. What, no gift tag? I, uh, I threw the flowers away. Though I've got to say I hated doing it because I can't stand waste. I'll tell you what, you do me a favour, eh? Return to sender. Or better still, give it to your wife. You're a hard one to please. No, no, I'm not. I tell you what would please me most is if you, no, sorry, your friend left me alone. That would make me ecstatic. Weatherfield's setting the trend in fashion yet again. Hi. Oh, is what what? Oh, the jacket. Yes, uh, yes it is. <laughs> uh, so be careful. I don't want you spilling out on it. <laughs> and no, you can't borrow it. I'm sorry. I really thought you had, you know, money troubles again. No, no, don't worry, love. Everything's fine. 
Oh, and I suppose you're going to be civil to me now, now I'm on the other side at bar. You know, I suppose I am. Canada's not all that different from here. Not from what I've seen. Don't destroy all our illusions. And the bit where the factory is. Well, it's more of a sales outlet now everything's made elsewhere, but honestly, it's like a parallel universe. Uh, no, it can't be. Generation after generation of people who've never been anywhere else, never worked anywhere else. And you've got to be so careful with what you say, because you never know who might be related to who. Yeah, <laughs> it is like around here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Ange, got to go. You know, early shift. Kids and all those other terribly adult excuses. See ya. Nice to see you again, And yourself. Later on. See ya. See ya. Brook. Yes, see ya. Yeah, bye. Trisha told us. Well, she hadn't. Why? You're worried? We're expecting to buy us drinks. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I thought I might shout our Judy and Gary a little treat. Well, I think that's nice. Don't you, Emily? She's going to treat her daughter out of her win. You're very altruistic. Mm -hmm. um, good night. Very what? Beats me. Hey, these moral types. They don't half take fun, aren't they, don't they? <laughs> hey, all joking apart. It is your turn for the next round. When the two people love each other and want to get married, there's nothing anyone can say or do to change that. And if all somebody dreams about is being a square dealer and they don't want him, there's not a lot anybody can do about that. Mm. Where'd Curly go? Oh, I think he went to the loo. Right, so tell me again. You had it off with Denise's husband. Curse of the salon. Ex-husband. <laughs> What? Not Ken Morley? Oh, don't my mum, mate. She's just a dizzy blonde. You get a few of them round here. Drinks do. Yes, I did. I haven't finished with you yet. What's up? Well, no one told me it was a farewell party, so I made other plans. <laughs> what, like coming back here and getting into your gym jams and a cup of hot cocoa? <laughs> the world doesn't stop just because you're back in town, you know. I mean, suddenly you're here and then suddenly you're gone. You can't expect just to drop in and drop out when the fancy takes you. Hey, cool it. You knew I was only passing through. With this job, I might be back a bit more often. Yeah, but what would happen if you didn't have that job? You know what you did? You just walked off to Mexico like you were going to town or something. Well, that was a weird time. I didn't know I was going till I found myself in the travel agents booking me ticket. My life changed within a few days. That can happen, you know. Oh, and meanwhile, I'm still stuck here. And you can come back and knock on my door any old time, and I'll still be here. I was hoping, yeah. What for? To catch up with one of the best friends I ever had. Oh, friends. Friends. Oh, I'm very good at being a friend. You didn't even have to come home with a bottle of red wine because you've got a boyfriend stashed down south somewhere. You wouldn't have wanted any of that now. One minute we're living in each other's pockets. The next minute you're off round the world. And what did I get, eh? What did I get? One postcard? Maybe two? And then you come back here, criticising everybody, laughing at us small-town hicks. No, I haven't. When? Oh, and of course, we don't wear the right clothes, in your opinion. The north of England's never been right for you, Angie. It's got to be London or Mexico or, or Canada or Maidenhead. I've never been to Maidenhead. Yeah, right, OK? We've caught up. See you next time. We'd better. That's if I'm here. I might not be. Well, if you move, let me know. If not, I'll take my chances if that's OK. See you, Curly. See you, Angie. Building a career in life. 
I was the oldest assistant manager at Better Buys because I let Reg Holdsworth sit on me. It's the same as this place, only different. Norman, this is just self-pity. Well, maybe I'm pitiful. Norman! It was the same with Angie Freeman, wasn't it? I mean, she wanted to be a designer. She is a designer, isn't she? Yes, exactly. Everyone said she's got not a chance, no hope. She'll get ripped off. And what does she do? She just goes off and does it. Well, what do you want to just go and do? I don't know. Fifty flaming yards and then it cuts out. I'm not an expert on them, me. Well, what are you looking at it for, then? Hey, you didn't look. Here's a mechanic coming. All right, don't. Got a problem? Don't start any of your smart Alex stuff here. Well, you look like you're broken down, that's all. What's it to you? See yourself. You can stuff it! I'd sooner see it rock than you have a penny out of me! You and your two-faced partner! You've taken enough for my money! Do you want it? Keep it, have it? No, Tar. No. Who no would? I don't even want it in the same house. Take it to work. If he comes in, chuck it back at him. But I did. I did that and look what he did. Brexit. But there's no sign of out, out forced. No. Well, either he's got your key or he's a flaming good burglar. Yeah, I know. Comforting, innit? Oh, don't. It's not bad. Close it. I don't even want to look at it. You know, you should have called me last night. I'd have stopped with you. Yeah, well, I just piled all the furniture behind the door and went to bed with a flaming bread knife. Couldn't find a poker. You're going to need the lock changing. Shall I send Bill round? Bill? And then Jim will know all about it. No tar. Well, maybe Jim ought to. Strong right arm, you know. Maybe you should... He was the last man to have me frightened for my life. No tar. Well, at least report it to the police, any road. Oh, and say what? Look, somebody broke in last night, but they didn't actually take out. They left me a present. And that's probably nicked, and then I'll get done for it. No! They're putting me in a funny position. I don't see how. Because you'll want to know why I didn't say anything. Well, just say you didn't know. Yeah, well, first off, you won't believe me, and second off, you'll say it's my job to know. <sighs> Trisha, just tell him that you're pregnant. I tell you what, I'll wait till he's in a good mood. Mind you, kid could be going to school by then. Look, I'll stick up for you. We're in the same boat. Are we? Yeah, of course we are. Last thing that Angie said to me was that Quebec, Canada have got a crash. A crash? He doesn't think we're entitled to wages. Yeah, well, let me work on it. Hey, the errant machine next door but one got sacked because she was pregnant. I ought to find out what my rights are. They can't buy rights, but they just don't want to pay maternity. There's no point telling him before he needs to know, is there? No. It'll only give him longer to show you. No. Hey, you could be out here before he knows, and then he won't notice till you can't reach the machine. Till who can't reach the machine? Nobody. But just say, Mr Baldwin, this time of year you put weight on something terrible, and then there's Christmas coming. Oh, I Christmas? Well, I go up like a balloon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, just keep the needles going, all right? Go on, then. Go on what? Give us a couple of scratch cards. Oh. A road to ruin. What? I won, a, I won £100 here this week. I see. There. And was it not to your liking, this £100? Pound? Are you far me? Far me? You're the one that's busy giving it to them back. Oh, some people. Give us another couple. Oh, right. Uh, yes, Mr Sutton. Uh, just a gazette, please, and a packet of uh, mints. There we are. Is there any chance of a handout here, please? Um, anything else, Percy? No, thank you. That'll be fine. Thank you very much. Uh, That's right. Those are what I want. The humble. Yeah. Thank you thank very you. much. You wouldn't bring anybody luck, you wouldn't. 
That's four pounds she's got through while she's been stood here. And I don't see where the amusement comes. Oh, well, she doesn't seem very amused by it. Right, now then, where's the coach load? Where's the rush, Fiona? Um, have you got any glue that sticks plastic? Oh, well, we've got glue, whether it's plastic Yes, that, that one up there, it's, it's um, wood, leather and ceramics, and I think all kinds of plastics. Do you know, as you know. <laughs> Little men broken hearts as well, I shouldn't wonder. No, I dropped a mirror, but I broke the frame, but I didn't break the glass. Is that seven years good luck? Now, I read about that. What it means is seven years of dodging a baldy agent with glasses. Heard then, have you? <laughs> oh, lovey, he's put it on the internet, they know, in China. I can't even go in the pub now. He always seems to be there. Well, I don't know about other folk, but I've got things to do. I can't hang about here all morning. Are you not doing a turn in this Irish, do you, do you? If I had a pound for every time someone said to me, you look dead Irish, I'd be completely skint. Don't know why. See you later on. See you. Bye. Bye. Well, I can see you've been rushed off your feet. Well, it just looked like we were getting busy. Panic over them? Nobody's panicking. You're, you're being very funny. Am I? Yes, not two words out of you all morning. You've just been burying yourself in the back. I don't know what you're thinking or anything. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. You're quite right. I shouldn't bury myself. I should get out and about more. And who knows, I might meet a fella who might show a bit of interest. And then there'd be two of us getting out and about. And instead of being embarrassed and humiliated on his own, we could be embarrassed and humiliated in your house, like we were last Sunday, like we were when he came in here yesterday. I thought that was it. Very penetrating of you. But, I mean, it... Well, it wouldn't have altered it. Do you hear wedding bells? No, neither do I. I've not often seen a man unproposing. Have you? No. Never mind what would have come of it. I felt for him yesterday. He was jump... No, he wasn't. He was crawling through hoops, trying to get the pair of us out of it. And I... Felt for him. I can't tell you what I felt for your wonderful Derek. Do you know what sort of profit margin I'm working on? Now, a crash. Yeah, well, looked at one where it will practically pay for itself. If you could teach the little biters to sew, if you can't, I'm not buying it. Oh, sorry, Mr. Yeah, hang on. Hey, I want to have a word with you. Wait until you're out of here, says Ida. Oh, let's have a crash, says Sally. I blow up like a balloon, says you. You're in the club, aren't you? Um, well, sort of. What do you mean, sort of? It's not the sort of thing you can be sort of. Since when? Well, I don't think I want to describe to you the exact moment when. But... Oh, can't you remember who else was there at the time? I don't have to take this. Then don't muck me about. When are you due? March. Oh, cool. Right. Let's have a little talk, shall we? Marie Celeste fish cakes in crispy batter packs. Six. Trout in peppermint sauce. A hundred and two. Lobster in chocolate with smoky bacon flavour topping. None. Squid rings. Squid rings in licorice and sherbet. None. Norman Watts in Nowhere Land. One. Oh, stuff this. Um, Geraldine, would you go and help Mrs. Harris on the quick checkout, please? Norman? What am I doing? You're dealing with an insurance claim for a defective freezer. Now, I know you've been under strain. Out of 4,000 million people on this planet, somebody has to make a list of mushy cod. And that lucky person is me. Well, there are worse things you could do with your life. Yes, and why don't I think of the better things? Angie did. Raquel certainly did. I think you should take some time off. You know something? You're dead right. I'm chucking this. Chucking what? This, this, all this. You can't just chuck a career in retailing. Not when you've climbed... Oh, can't I? You watch me. I'm jacking this.
Will you give us a pint of the black stuff? Oh, yes, the Irish night, are you? I don't know how you do it. Psychic. Are you right there, Michael? <laughs> No, when you said Irish night, I was thinking more Claude Rogers, that sort of thing. You know, Mary Hopkins. She was Welsh. Well, he didn't look like either of them. No, no, it's the authentic stuff, is this, Vera? I mean, big revival. I could just find another lot like the Dubliners or the Chieftains. Uh... So you think it'll bring people in? Oh, it's a big following. It's me lad, though, isn't it? Vera's lad, the dodgy fellow. I thought she looked fit. I suppose that's why she's been round here such a lot. Well, you don't see Terry round here, do you? Who's going to pick up the bill? Me! Oh, come on. First she's off sick, then it'd be maternity to leave. Now they want a flipping crash. Well, she's out. Oh, come, you can't sack her now. Not till I've checked her entitlements, no. Got to make sure she can still afford to pay me the rent. Not an idiot, you know. Hey, mix in. This is the place, all right? Yeah, well... We all have bad days at work, Curly. You want to try casualty on Saturday? It's not just work. Oh, I know. I know, mate. Oh, yes, I know. But like I say, we... Well, we all have some reason for drinking, don't we? Right. <sighs> but I'm 33, Martin. No, actually, I'm 33 and a half. I mean, 17 years ago, I was half the age I am now. I was just a kid. In another 17 years, I'll be... 50. Uh, 50. Oh, come on, girl. Will you stop talking like this? You're just going to depress yourself. I mean, all right, next year... I'll be 30. You've been 30 for years. That's you all over that, jumping to conclusions. I know, I know. So now you know where she got the money from. A scratch card. I know. I nearly went and paid Betty's catalogue for her. You what? You were? What for? Cos I thought she were going to get caught out. You mean you sent her money? Our money? For now? She's done it before, you know. I'm not saying stealing, just, well, hanging on to it for a bit, you know, finding a use for it. I think you owe your mum an apology. No, don't. Not if nobody tells her. How are you going to get your money back if nobody tells her? She'll know anyway, it'll come up in the book. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I thought we had a meeting. Oh. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's inexcusable. Oh, the sooner it wasn't. I'd really like to excuse it. Oh, well, come in, come in. No, I really am so sorry. I mean, there's just so much it's going on. It's quite all right. Look, I haven't been twiddling my thumbs. Yes, but you shouldn't have to come round. Well, there's something I've been wanting to talk to you about anyway. Can I offer you something? Thanks. Time presses and business. Right, well, uh, what did you want to talk to me about? Well, well it, it might be the same thing that... Um, You are obviously preoccupied about something. What is it, too private to discuss? Oh. Well, well, you know that my partner walked out on me, Denise. She walked out on Daniel and myself. Yes, yes, I remember. Well, she suddenly reappeared when Daniel was here with his mind there. And she took him. Oh. Do I need to say any more? No. Oh, you see, <laughs> it wasn't inexcusable. What are you going to do about it? Everything I legally can. That's going to take a great deal of your energies. Thank you very much. We're just going to have the crack. <laughs> Well, after you, mate. There we go. Hey! Right, now then, Curly, this should cheer you up. Good luck. Oh, what are you doing about? Oh, he's making me feel like I'm about 90. No, he's got it wrong. I'm not depressed about it. About what? Being 33. No, no. You're not 33, are you? I thought you were older than that. No, old time very much. You're still a third of a century, mate. He comes from wearing a suit. Hey, I tell you, this is the first thing that's going. Oh, listen to that. God bless. I wish I could play an instrument, you know. I'd go busking. But I can't, so I won't. Do you want to buy a suit? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs Sullivan's not in, is she? Mrs? The lady from the cabin. Oh, Rita. No. So you can't pay your papers, you're all right. Double scotch and thread, please. Huh? Hey, uh, what do you think of the band, Fred, eh? They take up a lot of room. Oh, do you not like the music? I only recognise two tunes. 
Silent night and God save the Queen. I only know which is which because one of them everybody stands up for. Well, this isn't either of them. I believe you're right. Could be letting yourself in for quite a battle. I'm sure I am. Now, that might... Oh, look, this will affect my work. I mean, when it first happened, perhaps, but then, well, I was rather badly you, shaken. You don't need to explain. Look, if you could just... Well, just get someone to take over the school play. I was thinking of a rather more complete solution. Because there was something that I wanted you to consider. I am under pressure, Kenneth. You know that as well as anybody. I have a budget, and I'm over it by at least two teachers' salaries. I don't believe I'm hearing this. Now, the first thing to do is just hear what Peter Ross has to say. I mean, you might find it quite an attractive package. Oh, yes. The man who explains what a nice basket has been arranged for your head to fall into. We are talking about the option of early retirement, that's all. Well, if it's an option, I'm not opting for it. I'm asking you to consider it. Thank you. Impeccable timing. You once misread my feelings about a, a situation. Please don't misread them this time. There's nothing remotely personal in this. Well, if she'd made her mind up to tell him sooner, she would have made everybody's life easier, including mine. Yeah, but you should be sticking up for her. Vera, I'm trying to get him to open a crash. Isn't that sticking up for her? A crash? Baldwin? Ah, that'll be the day. Well, I'm working on it. Yeah, well, I've worked for him. I know what he's like. Well, I don't see why it's such a problem, really. I mean, people have always had babies, haven't they? It's no big thing to just fit them in. Oh, I know. I don't know why I'm fighting her battles for her. I've got enough on my mind. My husband's laid flat on his back. I've got a bub to run and... Oh, Vera, sit down. I thought Alec was helping you out with a pub. Oh, he's having an Irish night. I tell you, between the jigs and the reels, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. <laughs> it's very popular, though, isn't it? All that Irish music. What with river dance and everything. Well, they always win the Eurovision. He reckons he'll pull them in, you know, people in, but I don't know. They're a funny lot. You know, half of them bring their own drums, other half have whistles. I'll tell you what, it's like the hippie version of the boys' brigade. Give us a slow one, will you, Tim? <laughs> you know, it's been all right living round here. Yeah? And you've been good mates. Well, some of the time. And you've been a good neighbour. What do you mean, Bean? I've decided. I'm selling the house. Flipping that, Kayla. You're selling up. I'm selling up. Oh, be a bit choosy about who you sell to, won't you? Because I'm going to live next door. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, where are you thinking of moving to, mate? I don't know, it's a big world, isn't it? Hey, he's only jacking your job in an alley, though. You're jacking your job in as well? I will, I will. Ah, uh, but you haven't told your bosses yet. I've uh, told uh, my colleagues, it's only fair. Flipping that, Kayla. So what are your plans then, mate? Well, I haven't got any as yet. But on the way home from work, I did pick up a brochure. It's an atlas. Mother. Are you all right? Very sad, this tune, don't you think? Oh, aye. Make a butcher's heart bleed, so it would. Maybe even a bookmaker's. I can take it or leave it. Oh, I see. Like other men's wives, then, eh? I forget. Rovers return. Well, there's no one telling. I've got no to read. Hospital radio's gone off. I'm at my flaming wits end. I thought it's that bad I could even ring the wife. Oh, you sound a lot better, Chuck. I can tell. Well, it's time to check my staff have remembered how to lock the door. I'll see you, gents. Uh, Sean. Here. Uh, look, just ignore me, mate, all right? I mean it. It's ex-wife, all right? Hey. Who 
think, what is it? That, all that noise. I can hear it, yes. Oh, it's gone now. Is it all right at your end? Now everyone would want it is. I'm going to give you a lift. This is called a bowling. A little word meaning deaf in Irish. On account of the fact its delightful music is soft and muffled. That is, when it's played by someone who has the heart of it. And not to the condition that you love us all in by the time you finish knocking the living daylights out of it. Now, would you take this home and hang it on the wall with the rest of your souvenirs and fill your fist with a pint instead? Yeah. Yeah. You see, now that's what I call a musician. Yeah. Sounded awful. Oh, Deirdre. I'm glad to see you. What? Life's too short, you know that. Life's too short. I'm glad you came. Business to be in, I reckon. Do you? Well, got your ups and downs, of course. Who hasn't? But there you are. People are always going to want a punt, aren't they? Uh, do I know you? No, no. I'm just uh, interested in people. You know, what business they're in, their leisure activities, all that kind of thing. It's just an interest. What's your line? Me? <laughs> oh, I'm. Uh, I'm just an advisor. Are you? That's right. I give people advice. Would you like, sir? Would this be advice in general or advice to me in particular? <laughs> it's tailor made to your own requirements, Mr. Skinner. Right. What is it? I knew you as a man who'd appreciate advice. Stay away from slim redheads. That it? Secret of a happy life and a successful business. Simple, isn't it? But then, that's the thing about good advice. And believe me, that is good advice I've just given you. You understand it? Perfectly. Well, that's nice to know. Telling Vera. Hey? About that letter I got from the catalogue yesterday morning. Oh, aye. First, they're accusing me of not paying. Now they've decided I've paid twice. <laughs> oh, they're useless. You didn't send in any money directly to them, did you? Not through me. I've sent nothing above what I've given you. And I'm not going to either. As far as I am concerned, I'm paid right up to date. No, it's them playing at silly beggars. <laughs> yeah, they'll have it on a computer somewhere. And none of them will know how to use it. Well, I'm not saying anything at all. If they think that I've paid two instalments, it's their lookout. Mm. You know what really bugs me? No. The fact that she's lied to me again. Who? My mother. You don't know that. Of course a pig in no. You don't know it for a fact. Then why won't she tell me she'd 100 quid on scratch cards? They want to cover up the fact that she's fiddling again. I don't know. She didn't want to share it with us. She wouldn't be able to keep her gob shut normally. You know how tight she is. <sighs> I really believed the last time. She cried. She gave me this long speech about how she couldn't believe how daft she'd been. How sorry she was. How guilty and stupid and embarrassed she felt. She promised me that if she ever felt tempted again, she'd talk to me. She'd tell me. Just don't go assuming she's at it. She'll only get stroppy as that shouting and wailing. Just so long as no one disrupts your Sunday. Doesn't matter whether I'm at the end of my tether. June! Oh, shut up. All I'm saying is don't go accusing her the second she comes through the door. Let's have us dinner first. Then I can always escape to Rovers, if you want to talk to her in private. <laughs> I've never been anywhere, me, you know. 
I once put my name down to go to Moscow on a school trip in third form. Well, that got cancelled because nobody wanted to go. No, oh, and that's a shame. Hmm. They were all more interested in Tenerife than Benidorm yeah, and all those other ancient centres of European culture. Oh, whereas you just wanted to go to Moscow for the uh, sun, sea and sex. That's right. That's right. Of course, it never occurred to me mum and dad to go abroad. Their idea of abroad was taking the caravan to Scotland instead of Lincolnshire. Other than that, it was just Lincolnshire and my mum saying, oh, they can keep abroad. Who needs abroad with scenery like this? Why? What is there in Lincolnshire? Nothing. It's flat. Ah. Ah, Hispania. Now you're talking. Spain? Curly, I thought you were to widen your horizons, not go and lie on an overcrowded beach with a load of bimbos from Wigan. Spain is a very fascinating country with ancient and interesting customs. What, like wet T-shirt contests? <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to run with the bulls of Pamplona. You want to be careful. That sounds dangerous. <sighs> Well, if I don't come up against danger when I'm going round the world, I'm not doing it right, am I? And that's the whole point of going, isn't it? Mm. Living on your wits, throwing caution to the wind, seeing what kind of person you are. That's right, mate. Of course it is, yeah. Right. Uh, dinner will be uh, ready in about a quarter of an hour. You see, I was five minutes late putting my Yorkshire's on. <laughs> oh, this is a treat. Mm. This is smashing. Here, get down, scamper. Oh, it's all right. I'll give him a roasty. Oh, he can get <laughs> stuffed. He's a greedy swat. Sling him out in the backyard, Gary. No! Well, if I'd known he wasn't welcome, I wouldn't have brought him. Oh, oh. don't start, Mother. They ignore her. She's been ratty all morning. <laughs> Haven't you, look? Hmm. What's the matter, look? I'm not eating. I've got mouth ulcers. Oh, what a shame. Cos this is a smashing, isn't it, Gary? You're not kidding. Why didn't you tell us you did 100 quid on scratch cards? Who told you that? Does it matter? Look, can we just eat our dinners in peace? I didn't tell you, because... What? It doesn't matter, Joyce. Do you don't have to tell us why. I, I want to. I wanted to surprise you. What do you mean? I wanted to get you a bit of something. See? I just think it's a bit odd that she didn't say anything, that's all. What have you got her, Joyce? No, uh, yeah. What do you fancy? Oh. You don't have to get us anything. Just give us back that 45 quid that you borrowed. What 45 quid? I'd rather have that back. I lent 45 quid to buy a jacket. Well, I can't give it to you right now, cos I haven't got it on me. Yeah, well, yeah, whenever, whenever. Where is it? Oh, home. Whereabouts at home? At home! Shut up! It isn't at home, cos she hasn't got it. Leave it. Have you? Are you starting that again? Well, have you? Accusing me. Because I'm going home if you're going to start that tack again. So, shut up and get your dinner at. Was it you sent in that money on Betty Williams? Account? Why? Because it's been paid twice now. They must have got the payment late, that's why she got that letter. And somebody, somebody who doesn't trust me, obviously sent in an extra payment thinking I'd not sent her payment in. And isn't it funny how that payment didn't manage to go through until you'd won your hundred quid, eh? Look, it's square. It's paid. Her account and Vera's oh, account. Oh, so you're admitting it, then? No, I... I'm leaving. I don't have to sit here and be accused of all sorts. Sit down, I've Joyce. been cooking that all morning so you can flame him while eating. Well, I'd rather do without. I'd sooner choke. She's only trying to help you cos she's bothered about you. Oh, you as well now? Well, it won't be first time, would it? I'm leaving. Oh, for God's sakes, man. Talk about giving a dog a bad name. If you've got money troubles, then come to us. Don't go nicking off other folk. We'll help you. Day I need help from you, madam, I'll be in a right sorry state. Come on, scamper. Don't just go, ma'am. Mother! Somebody's walked out now. Yeah. Mm. You know, the most annoying thing about having neighbours that argue is you can never actually hear what they're saying. You can just hear the voices. Now, if you could hear what they were saying, at least it'd be more interesting, wouldn't it? Mm. Oh, that one. Yes. Hello, Mrs. Smedley. Oh, hello. She shuts up one. Does she? Yeah, you just missed her. <laughs> That's how it seems. Do you know, nobody's answered my ad yet. <laughs> you what? For a childminder, I put an advert in there, but nobody's answered it. You don't know of anybody, do you? What's the money like? I'll do it. 
No, I'm looking for somebody who's qualified. <sighs> Brought a kid up on my own. You don't get better qualified than that, do you? Well, no, I mean someone who's registered. Registered? Yeah. Anyway, we better go. See ya. <laughs> Come on. Um, you, you don't know anywhere open that sells scratch cards, do you? Uh, yeah, I think that big garage on Queen's Road, I think they do. I still can't fathom how they managed to get in. I mean, there were no damage, nothing. Well, you've got your new locks now, anyway. Oh, I for what good it'll do. I mean, they got through last time, didn't they? And they can't have had keys. They'll not get through those in a hurry. I know I'm being boring. I just can't help thinking about it. Hey, I'm going to take root here if I don't stir my stumps and get cracking. Are you going? Well, I've got stuff to do. Uh, you can stay as long as you like, you know. Listen, um, I may well be stopping at Ken's tonight, you know, when he gets back from Scotland. Why don't you stay at my place, if it'll make you feel any safer? There's Bill there and Roy and Tricia. I'm tempted. Well, do. No. No. I'm damned if I'm going to spend the rest of my life being frightened. Why should I? No, I've got these new locks. God, they cost me enough. Anyway, Sean might come round later. Hey, and thanks for stopping. Oh, give over. I've enjoyed it. I'll just go and get my stuff together. Hello? Hi, Sean. What? When was this? I don't believe this. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I'll see you later. A fella threatened Sean on Friday night. Told him to stay away from me. It's them! It's him! Vera, how much did we take on Friday night? Er, uh, I can't recall, I found. Well, I mean, roughly. I think we did quite nicely. Because I think you could do worse than have some sort of theme night regularly, you know, once a month. Hello, uh, Alec, excuse me a minute. Vera, did I leave a pair of gloves in here at dinner time? Oh, ah, yeah. Like leather ones? Yeah, better found them rimmed back. Thanks, Mum. Ah. Does Jack know you're muslin in here? Muslin in? I'm helping her out, see. <laughs> oh, the goodness of your heart, I know. Mm. What are you up to? Note. Pull the other one. Look, can I get you a drink? I was talking to Fiona at dinner time. Hey, hello. Oh, thanks, love. All right. Mm. She asked me to be her agent. You? She hasn't got a clue. No. Oh, well, she'll have a job on getting work at any of the clubs round here now. Let's do her agent is. <laughs> Why, what have you been spreading? Just the truth. How she messed up contractually twice. Anyway, be no good. Make any difference, there are whenever in it. No, well. Oh, oh, now, can I get you that drink? Uh, no, thank you, Alec. Uh, I've got all day tomorrow to listen to Mavis's allotment stories. I don't want to listen to them now as well. See you. Ta ra. Well, Hello, love. Hello, I'll I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, you. All right. No, I mean, we've got this really unusual plant, and it was given to us by our next door neighbour, who about a couple of months ago. Uh -huh. We've never been able to identify it, have we, Derek? You no. can't hear me. She's still not answering it. Dab. She'll be sat there deliberately not answering it. Well, that's it. I've had enough. I'm going for a pint. That'll be it now. She won't be speaking to me again for another three months like last time. Till she's right up to her neck in it. Are you coming? No. She might ring, you never know. Stupid woman. You're chucking your job up and selling your house. What for? If I'm gonna do it, Vera, I'm gonna do it properly. Yeah, have you heard this? I'm not playing at it, you know. 
You've been chucking everything up to go around the world. I mean, well, that's your security. I don't want security. I've had security, and it's boring. I'm boring, and I'm fed up with being boring. Well said, lad. The boss is coming in tomorrow, and I'm going to tell him. Yeah, but don't you think it's because, well, you might be thinking about Raquel? Well, of course it's because I'm thinking about her. I've got a lot to be grateful to her for. If you want, uh, if you want me to book your flights for you, you could pop in the shop sometime. Don't be encouraging him and stop rattling on about these theme nights and all. Just a bit upset about Jack. <laughs> now, have you got your agenda worked out for this expedition? Yeah. Yeah. It's a very attractive plant. Well, it's elegant even, as they say. It's got, like, long pointed leaves like a hand. Like that. Uh, why don't you pop over and have a look? Well, I, I can do. And you say it's not many of the books you've looked in? Oh, he'll make it up. Even if he doesn't know, he'll say out. I shan't need to make it up. I shall know what it is. I've already got a fair idea of what it is from Mrs. Um, Wilton's description. Oh, I. Uh, Derek, Derek, just go and get that plant that Des Barnes gave us. I bet a pint he makes some it up. <laughs> I'll bet you around. I'll be able to identify it. Derek, go and fetch the plant. Oh, yes, all right, in a minute. me. look at the time. You better get your homework done later. Are we going to spend most weekends working on the ball? Weather permitting, get our money's worth. I'm glad you like her. Can Lauren come one weekend? Of course she can. As long as it's all right with the mum and dad. She went green when I told her we were buying a boat. What, seasick? No, envious. She was dead envious when I told her we had a flat as well as an house and all. Why? What did you tell her? Just that we had a flat as well as an house. And did you tell her why? No. You did, didn't you? No. I told you. I asked you not to tell anyone. Well, let's not argue as soon as we've got through the door, eh? Yeah, oh, well, it's all right for you. I mean, you're not the one who'll end up in trouble if anyone starts sniffing round. It's only Lauren. Lauren's only not Only gonna... Lauren, nothing. Who else have you said anything to? No, there. Oh, you idiot. Fathead. Hey. Well, it's great, isn't it? Getting told off and not being deceitful enough. Shame you can't get GCSEs in fibbing. I'd be well away if I took after you two. Top of the class, university. No stopping me. It was appalling. From start to finish. Rained the entire time I was there. I don't know where to take him. He cried. Then I began to feel useless and selfish, like I was trying to make him do something that he didn't want to do. Look, are you wanting to be on your own? And the worst thing was having to take him back with him there, Brian. He is a loathsome man. What do you just say? I'll just drink this and then I'll go. Why? Well, you've had a long day. But I thought that you... I mean, I hoped that you might want to stay. Oh, well, I did. I do. God. I'm sorry. I'm going on, aren't I? I was very happy on Friday night. Sorry I'm like this now. Ah, oh, it's understandable. I mean, uh, you'll stay the night? Yes. <laughs> Look, why don't I give you a set of keys? What for? Here. Oh. There we go. Oh, great, thanks. I, I never like to think of you in that bed set. Oh, I'm all right. We all get on. You know what really bugs me? What? When I took him back, he actually seemed pleased to see Brian. Tell so yourself, V. India, eh? Can I come with you? No. You can go by yourself, mate. Tempted. I know, right? Every time you don't turn up somewhere without managing to let me know, you've got to take me out to the restaurant of my choice. All right, where do you fancy? Greek place on Quebec Street is gorgeous. All right, let's go. All right. Actually, it's a bit pricey. I'll have a sec. Here we are. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, no. No, Billy Williams, what do you make of that? <laughs> Fascinating, isn't it? Well, I don't think I've seen one like that before. You sure it's not plastic? What do you think it is, Will? Well, I'll tell you a story about this plant. We had a Polish fella down the allotment. Uh, he had a plant just like this. About 1960, I suppose he was. 
his name? Gagoski. Joseph Gagoski, nice little fella. <laughs> Always smiling. Well, anyway, I don't know where he got the plant from, but he cultivated it and he put it all around the edge of his allotment. Really? Aye. And you know, pretty soon, people began to notice his allotment was doing a bit better than everybody else's. Oh, aye. <laughs> aye, and it was all down to this plant. Something to do with the drainage, as far as I recall. Mm. So, anyway, the lads all started taking cuttings, bringing them on. Pretty soon they had it all around the edge of their allotment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, they did very well and all for a while. Best produce they'd ever had. Until one day, the local Bobby takes up his allotment. He'd been on the list for some time, you know. Takes a walk round, and you know, he arrested every one of them. No. For cultivating cannabis. Cannabis? Cannabis? Oh, it's never cannabis! Excuse me, Is this your plant, sir? Yes. Uh, no, it's hers. I, I mean, it was given us. Uh, we didn't Have know. Have you got any more like this? No. Right, well, I would destroy that if I were you. Yes, I will. I shall. I'll do it now. Uh, where did you get it? It was given us by a neighbour. His name's Des Butt. He's over there. Well, he was there two minutes since. Fraser Henderson? Uh, yeah, that's right. Have you heard of him? Oh, I. Oh, yeah. I've heard of him. He's big time, Fraser Henderson. He used to run half South Manchester till he got sent down. What do you mean, run half of South Manchester? Well, drugs, protection, all that. Big stuff. Steve said he were in for fraud. Yeah. Well, he's clever, isn't he? They probably couldn't get him and any of his rackets, so they'd have to pin someone else on him just to get him locked up for a bit. I don't believe this. is getting worse. Did they watch this place? They must if they left the necklace. And they must keep tabs on you to know it's me you're seeing. What am I going to do? I didn't go to the police. Look, don't take this the wrong way, but... Uh, what? I think we ought to stop seeing each other. Did you know you can get up to ten years for cultivation with intent to supply? Oh, come on, it was hardly... Are you growing any more? Do I need to search the house? No, it was just that one. So it was just a joke, was it? Giving what you knew to be an illegal substance to the elderly couple who live next door? Yeah, sorry. So it was a bit stupid, wasn't it? It was a bit nasty. Well, it was stupid anyway. Right. Well, the fella's destroying the plant, so... So that's the end of it, so as far as I'm concerned, all right. Yeah, all right. But you might want to pop round and apologise. I don't think they're too pleased about it. Yeah, OK. Sorry. Thanks. Hmm. All right, well, I'll see myself out. You were a bit of all right, weren't you? It's not me I'm thinking of. Oh. <laughs> and how do you make that out? You want to stop seeing me for my benefit? Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I don't mean permanently. And how's that going to look to him, eh, if we stop seeing each other? That's just going to give him the green light, isn't it? He's inside. But for how long? Look, I've been threatened. He's not threatened you. He likes you. He likes me? But I don't want him to like me. Yeah, but it's not you that's going to get their skull fractured next time, is it? No. But what is he going to do to me, eh? Because he sounds to me like he's the sort of bloke who won't take no for an answer. He sounds like the sort of fella who just... just takes exactly what he wants and gets away with it. You'll have to go to the police. I daren't. He'll do something to Steve. OK. Well, um, have you thought about moving out of the area? Where to? Well, I don't know. Anywhere they don't know. You mean give up my flat and chuck in my job? Well, yeah, I, I could help you financially. No. I want him to see that I'm in a relationship and I'm not available. He's seen that. That's what that little warning last Friday was about, obviously. <sighs> Look, Liz, 
These are seriously bad people. I can't start taking them on. Oh. So you're all right when you're taking what you want from me, but as soon as there's any bother... Well, what do you want me to do? Go out there, take them on single-handed? Is that it? Eh? Get my legs broken, my ribcage smashed up? No. Nobody would, Liz. Nobody would do it. Nobody in their right mind. Right, you better go. I don't like leaving you. Get out. Go and stay at the address. I want you to go. Get out! I'll drive you around. Get out! Go on, go! Make sure you lock up properly. Liz. Get out! Hi, Ray. Not another break in. Oh, no, no, not that bad. Listen, I'm sorry for ringing you at Ken's. He must think I'm all right. Penny. He thinks no such thing. He knows you've been having a few problems. I didn't go into any detail. Hey, listen, do you mind if I put the kettle on, Lonnie? I just got dressed and came straight out. Oh, no, no, of course not. I'll do it. Oh. Hey, you're a saint. <laughs> yeah, they're having me sanctified next week. <laughs> Whatever it is they do. Blessed Deidre of the Virgins. Oh, consecutive thoughts, maybe not. Is it Sean? What's he done? Washed his hands and left me to it. What, because of this Henderson thug? He tried to make out it were for my sake. But we both know it we're trying to save somebody's skin and it wasn't mine. I don't know him very well, but he always seemed rather macho to me. Yeah, well, it just goes to show you can't judge a book by its cover. Or rely on anybody. Except you, of course. Listen, you must have thought I was so childish dragging you around here at crack of dawn. I just suddenly... I felt so isolated. You've done it for me. I'll tell you something. It's lucky for that weirdo he is in prison, because if he wasn't, I'd screw his nasty little neck right round. We have to do something. We've had our wrists slapped. Best just to leave it alone now. We should have stayed in the pub and owned up. Oh. I mean, I would never have let you give him the wretched thing in the first place if I'd known it would get him into trouble with the law. Well, I'd be getting chucked in the slammer, darling. I mean, Alan Thingamy's not stupid. He could see at a glance they wouldn't know a banned substance if it jumped out the cornflakes. Oh, I still say we should go next door and apologise. Sorry. Got to shoot over to Wigan. Oh. His nibs has taken a couple of days off. Reckon him and Liz have had a bit of a ding-dong. He plays his cards close to his chest, does our Sean? Well, tonight, then? Got the in-laws coming. I won't stay late. They're up at five. We'll go when they've gone. If you insist, boss. So hey, I hope you realise you got off with it like Maeve. You could have been dragged down that cop shop and quizzed for hours about your criminal contract. Hey, that's enough. <laughs> we could sue you for a remark like that. He didn't mean it, did you? He just happens to have a rather heavy-handed sense of humour. Oh, well, forgive me, but I don't happen to think that being accused of drug trafficking is very funny. Drug trafficking? She has a tendency to go over the top. <laughs> Well, no one thinks for a minute. You try telling her that. Yeah, all the same. What's funny? <laughs> <laughs> hey, now you get back to your sump pumps. <laughs> Ta da, love. See ya. Now, if you're going to dive in the back every time a customer comes in, you'll be just as well going home. Yeah, you're right, Rita. I'm, I'm being oversensitive. I mean, we, we're just going to have to brazen it out, and with a bit of luck, the whole thing will blow over. Provided Derek doesn't lob a couple of hand grenades through next door's letterbox. Well, Derek is furious, and rightly so, but... Well, it's promised me that he's not going to do anything till he's cooled down, and then he'll deal with it in a, a calm and dignified manner, because we want to show Des Barnes that we know how to behave like civilised human beings, even if he doesn't. <laughs> Is he in? Des? Yeah. You've just missed him. He's gone to Wigan. How's Beauty? Fine, fine. That's typical, isn't it? He's not man enough to stand up to me, so he skulks off out of my way. He's gone there to work, not skulk. 
Your mother, then? She's in the shower. Going up and soap her back, if you like. She's very broad-minded. I thought better of you, young Rebecca. Tell them I'll call round tonight. My gran and grandad will be there. Your grandparents are coming? Yeah, for tea. It's now, not... thank you very much, Becky. Thank you. you you've been most helpful. Ha! Ah. There's no need to spy on me. You'll get your drat money. Nobody's spying. Ma'am! What's up? Talk about paranoid. Want to be accused of spying now. By the milkman? By my mother. She's got it into her head that I'm keeping tabs on her till I've got my money back. She looked awful. Guilty conscience. She shouldn't have nicked it in the first place. God knows where she'll end up. Sure as hell with Derek and Maeve. Oh, don't fret, Jude. Your mother will come out smelling of violence like she always does. I was going to suggest that she came out with us on our Christmas night. But how can I if she's not speaking to me? Ah. Um... Hey, while I think on, we better get some wear books or else I'll all be full. We can manage now you're getting your bonus. Well, I have plans for that. Like getting another dishwasher? No, like another bike. Well, a down payment on one at least. You what? Well, we've talked about getting a replacement, haven't we? And we've talked about me getting pregnant. And if by some miracle I ever do, then going on the back of a bike is the last thing I flame in need. Unless you're thinking of taking one of your popses on it. You wanted to see me? Yes, I did. Good. Because it, it's best we sort things out now, isn't it? So that when my time comes, there's no misunderstandings about my rights. Except that by then, it'll no longer be my problem. <laughs> what do you mean? I didn't ask you to discuss your rights, but uh, to tell you that your services are no longer required. Hey! Now you will be paid till the end of the week, but if you want to knock off now, you can. <laughs> I can't be fairer than that, can I? But, but why? What have I done? Have you got an hour to spare? Look, I, I, I know I were late this morning. Yeah, but... and twice last week, and the week before that, and then there was a day that you didn't even bother to come in at all. And it's been the same story ever since I misguidedly took you on. But, but I've had morning sickness. <laughs> Several weeks before you became pregnant, I'd write to the Lancet. You must be a medical first. That's why you're doing this, isn't it? Because I'm pregnant, isn't it? That has got nothing to do. You're a liar. If you were a halfway decent worker, I couldn't care less if you were having octopolis. <sighs> okay. OK, well, say that was so. Why now, then, eh? Answer me that. OK. If you insist, I've taken more garbage off you than the whole of that lot out there put together, and I've just had enough. Now, you get income support for you and the kid, housing benefit will pay your rent, so we'll both be laughing, won't we? Ha! <laughs> I flame him what? Well, if you're worried about your mates out there, uh, tell them it's uh, early redundancy. We don't want you uh, having that baby on the factory floor, do we? Look, I'm not due till March. I could work till end of February at least. I'm as fit as a fiddle. I mean, some women bloom in pregnancy. I'm one of them. Well, that does rather conflict with all the time you've had off with your various symptoms, doesn't it? But then again, every cloud has a silver lining. You can lie in bed now to your heart's content. You can't do this! I think you'll find I can. Now, why don't you get your things like a good little girl and go home? We don't want you uh, getting upset. Not in your condition, do we? <laughs> He's just come in. You want to strike while the iron's hot? Do you know, I've never understood that phrase. I mean, does it refer to the old-fashioned flat iron where you had to put them in the fire? and they had to use them dead quickly before they cooled down. Because if that's the case, I mean, why strike? I mean, you don't strike with an iron, do you? Unless, of course, it's a branding iron. And then you would have to strike while it was hot, wouldn't you? Curly, if you're leaving, you're going to have to tell him. Unless, of course, you've changed your mind about the big adventure. <laughs> no way. Ah! Could I have a word? I can guess about what. I've just heard on the grapevine. Have you? Well, I wanted to tell you myself. Of course, it's not unexpected, but it's a bit of a shock, all the same. 
Yeah, well, it's, it's one of those life things, you know. Once you've got the urge, you've got to sort of go with the flow. And he certainly did. Who did? Reg Holdsworth. A daddy at his age. I wouldn't fancy going through all that again, I can tell you. Oh, you mean he's had the baby? I think she's had it, to be accurate. A little girl. I thought you knew. He won't be handing out the big cigars, though. Grapevine also tells me that his young lady's much-vaunted inheritance has failed to materialise. He's unemployed and putting out feelings for his old job back. Oh, I see. You're all right, Norman. You're in no jeopardy. Reg Holmes was yesterday's man. I gave him a damn good job and he let me down. I don't take kindly to folk who let me down. Now, what do you want to talk to me about? It's about the delivery of, uh, Arctic rolls. Sack you for having a baby. He never wanted me here in the first place. Baby's just an excuse. The flaming disgrace. He's always been a monster and he's getting worse. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm going to go and speak to him. Oh, don't bother. Don't bother. No, no, he won't listen to nobody. He thinks he's flaming God. I know, but what will you do, love? I'll go on social, like he says. He's got it all sorted. I'm going to be one of that lot that people with good jobs love to have a go at. Unemployed mums scrounging on state. I don't want to live on flaming social. I enjoyed working here, being with my me mates, learning a trade, being, being independent for once in my stupid life. I don't want to be a flaming statistic. There you are. What do you mean, there I am? I'm the one that's been looking for you. I've had Delaney's on the phone How and... How the... dare you sack a woman for being pregnant? You like something out the dark ages. Hold on, hold on. Am I allowed to speak? Good. I didn't sack her because she was pregnant. I sacked her because she was unreliable, lazy, insolent, a troublemaker, a terrible timekeeper, and an even lousy machinist. She is also a single mother with another child on the way. Ah, oh, she won't be any worse off financially. No, probably even better. She doesn't want to be a parasite. Well, she could have fooled me. I gave her a chance more than once. Not my fault if she blew it. You don't see people as people, do you? You just see them in terms of what they can do for you. That is a very nasty accusation. Yeah, well, then prove me wrong. Give Trisha a job back. Or? Or if she goes, I go. You blow a perfectly good job for a dummy like her. No. For me. For my own self-respect. The last person that threatened me was Josie Clark. But where she ended up... With a clear conscience that lets her sleep at night. That doesn't sound so bad to me. Well? No deal on this, Armstrong. But, I mean, you, <laughs> you're different. No, I'm not, Mr Baldwin. I'm just another name on the payroll. I'm just somebody else that you can hire or fire as the mood takes you. Or rather, well, I was. his fault he should have his legs smacked. He must have known it to get him into bother. Could get me into bother. Aye. Could lose my licence having drugs on premises. It wasn't drugs, it was a plant. Drug plant. She's in here. She were banging on the door, but you were too busy guessing to hear her. Trisha, oh. what's up? Oh, come on, make a fresh pot. That's a good girl, right. would you do? Come on, love. <laughs> The swine. Just wait while I see him. Oh, there's no point. I mean, he won't listen to me. Why should he listen to you? Well, he won't listen to anybody if he's one of them mooties as hard as nails. <laughs> what am I going to do? Look, don't worry, love. Me and our Jack won't let you starve. <laughs> I, I don't want charity. Well, it won't be charity. Look, you learn your keep. You can help out in here. Oh. <sighs> All that fuss you made about getting a job. All the arguments we had and now you go and chuck it for a dipstick like you. Have you forgot about all the grief she gave you? Yeah, well, it's the principle. 
You can't be allowed to treat people like dirt. Oh, it's funny how you took the notice when I tried to warn you about him. Well, yeah, I have to make my own decisions. Anyway, at least you'll be able to get Christmas sorted out now without being frazzled. Oh, no, no, no. Don't think I'm going to be little Mrs. Housewife, chained to a cooker. Mike Baldwin's not the only employer. Hang on, mate. I'll join you. You buy in. Another cruise? Well, I'm thinking about it. I enjoyed the last one. On your own? Well, I'm not thinking of inviting Fred Elliott to join me, or anyone else. Anyway, that's what cruises are for, aren't they? I mean, so middle-aged people can get off together. Oh, great! No! Terry, you didn't say you were coming home to lunch. No, no, last-minute change of plans, but don't worry, I'll make myself a bite. Oh, well, I'm glad to see you've calmed down. I was worried about your blood pressure. No need. Everything's under control. Oh, go on. What have you done? Nothing at all, oh. Rita. He's probably decided it was such a silly prank that the only adult thing to do is let it go. Oh, I'm not letting it go. You're not? No, most definitely not. I have a blueprint for revenge all drawn up. And a perfect little master stroke it is too. Ha! There you are. Now get that down, you. It'll warm your cockles. It's made out of real marrowbone. I'm not good to nobody, am I? Not Jamie, not, not this poor little kid. It's not even born yet and it's got a loser for a mother. Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> not now, Ali. Uh, well, I won't keep you a tick. I just wanted to fill you in on next week's agenda. Agenda? Yes, yeah, Christmas cabaret night. Yeah, I didn't tell you. You never did. <laughs> oh, didn't I? I must have slipped my memory. Anyway. Well, you've already had one. I can't cope with another. <laughs> Not what all I've got to go with is seen. Oh, you, you won't have to, dear lady. Just leave it with me. Couldn't be in more capable hands. <laughs> oh. Off now, Mr Furman. I wanted a word with Norman before I go, but I can't get to find him. Oh, we left earlier. He's done too late on the road. He looked in, but you were on the phone. Mr Furman, you know, when Raquel left him, he needed time off and I filled in. I had a very good fist you made of it too, as I recall. But I'm glad you think so. Because I wanted to ask you if you consider me as a replacement when he goes. When he goes where? On his trip. Oh, I thought he told you about it this morning. All right. Spend your brass on another flaming motorbike. And to hell with what I want. We can still go for a night out, only we don't have to go on one of them go him here efforts. I don't like me food, Mr. Bowman. No, you'd be as happy as a pig in muck at local chippy, wouldn't you? I will lose that. Now we're straight. I don't owe you a brass farthing. Ma'am, it's come to summit when your own daughter doesn't trust you. It's not that she doesn't trust... And you can keep out of it. He's got nothing to do with you. He's right, though. It's not the first time you've got yourself in a mess over money. And I got out of it without any assistance from you, madam. I don't interfere in your life, do I? So I'll thank you to keep out of mine. I'm right, Emma. Well, there's a startling first. And last. Your track record. I am worried about her. I know. I tell you what, blow the motorbike. Go and book us into the ritziest place in town, and I'll go and hire myself a monkey suit from Moss Boss, if it'll make you happy. You in a monkey suit? That'll make me hysterical. <laughs> I'll be calling you Carrie, not Gary. Carry you? Carrie Grant, you crate egg. Or his younger brother, Hugh. Mm. Another gorgeous, sophisticated smoothie. His girlfriend's a fake chick as well. And I bet she don't call Huey a crate egg. So, where is she now, then? She's gone home with instructions to have a good night's sleep. And will she be in tomorrow? <laughs> well, she will if she's up to it, poor lass. To do what, exactly? Whatever it is that needs doing. Look, she's a very capable girl, really. Mind. Yeah, I expect that's why Baldwin's booted her out. Any sign of Sean? To say what? Well, he's had second thoughts. Oh, no. He knows what he's doing. Anyway, I've got more important things to worry about. Like not feeling safe in my own bed. How to deal with the horrible feeling that I'm being controlled by some maniac that I don't even know. Don't let him get to you. That's just what he wants. Is it? What the hell does he want? Oh, I don't know, love. But... <laughs> At least he doesn't seem to mean you any harm. 
I mean, all he's done when you look at it is give you a few presents. So far. You haven't told Ken about it, have you? No, no. He's got his own problems. Oh, no. I'm sorry. And in a sense, he's a worse, and I'm not helping by dragging you away every five minutes for a moan. How is he? Has he uh, been up to Bonnie Scotland again? Yes, and got himself all churned up. I mean, he loves seeing Daniel, but it, it just makes him sick having to watch her and her boyfriend playing happy families. Oh. Well, it's a good job he's got you to unload on when he gets back. If that's a subtle way of asking for a progress report, madam, <laughs> the latest is he's given me a key to the house, whatever that signifies. Mm. Obvious, isn't it? Just to do a bit of cleaning for <laughs> So was Alaska. I've been cool. knocking on your door for five minutes. Small scotch, please, dear, and whatever this young man is having. Hi. Yes, please. Uh, there's nothing wrong at work, is there? In a manner of speaking, yes. When a senior employee hands in his notice, I would normally expect to be the first to be informed. Who's told you? Miss Malone. She was under the impression we'd spoken already. I was going to tell you this morning. Say no more. I shan't attempt to dissuade you. No? I know what you've been through, Norman. I was there myself for some of it. Remember the conference? I saw how devastated you were, and I fully understand that you need to be on your own to sort yourself out. All I ask is that you work through the Christmas period as a personal favour to me, and you can stride off into the wide blue yonder. Believe me, if I was 20 years younger, I'd be tempted to join you. So this young woman takes this parcel out of her shopping bag. Unwrapped, so it must have been a good dozen layers of tissue paper more. <laughs> She plunks this cracked old teapot on the stall. How much is this worth to your love? Sorry, I said. I sell pots. I don't buy them. The ground left it, miss, she says. Not taking a blind bit of notice. Who's telling this tale? Me or you? <laughs> Me ground left it, miss, she said. I was hoping it might be worth a bob or two. The name's Charlie Palmer, he says. Not half an eagles. Might have been, <laughs> though. Worth a bob or two. Could have been a valuable antique. Holiday souvenir a uh, grand must have brought back from Abba Gog 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 or somewhere. <laughs> I'm not stupid. He's not. Who's half an eager? <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Mum, what are you doing in there? Said I do the washing up. Uh, she'll be out in a minute, Bex. You told him about the boat. What boat? Oh, yeah. Des has bought this boat. He's brilliant. He'll have to come on a trip with us. Can they? Excuse me. Not now, Derek, okay? We've got visitors. Yes, I know. Uh, Derek, maybe it's not quite the right time. It's exactly the right time. This poor girl's grandparents are entitled to know what kind of depraved junkie she's living with. I expect it's news to you that he keeps drugs in the house. That's rubbish. So, why were the police here last night questioning you about possessing a certain cannabis plant? Drugs? Charlie? Is that true? Only very approximately. Look, you're supposed to be the gardener. You didn't know what it was. What makes you think I did? Of course he did. I'm sorry, Des, but you did put us in a very embarrassing situation. Don't you apologise, Mavis. He's the one who's in the wrong. Yes, I know, and I'm sorry we both are, but this is getting out of hand. Doesn't warrant spoiling Becky's party. Ha! That's a classic Barnes tactic, using a child as an excuse to wriggle out of your... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday... Right. right. I'll okay. see you later. Okay. Oh, and don't forget to ring Kelly. All oh, right. 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 Bye. Morning. 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 Hello. Hiya. Uh, just take a packet of those. Thanks, love. I would have thought you'd have been right down in the dumps this morning. Oh, who needs Baldwin? Knocking out a rovers. See ya. See ya. Ta-da, love. Oh, I don't think Betty and Samantha have much to worry about. She'll never make a barmaid. Never in a million years. She's been a cleaner, though, hasn't she? So where's that going to leave me? Hey, Curly! Hang on a minute. Hey, listen. About this motor of yours. Yeah, what about it? Well, it'll be up for grabs now, won't it? Now you're going globe trotting. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it will. Yeah. Right, well, I'll be interested in it then. Well, for the right price, of course. Uh, I've been looking for one for Gail. Very nice. Oh, yes. Thank God. You're not getting cold feet, are you? 
No, no, I'm just a bit disappointed in Eric Furman, actually. I mean, yeah. uh, glad to see the back of me. After the Christmas rush, of course. Mm. I mean, after all I've done for them, eh? Yeah, well, it's same as anyone else, Curly. They're only interested in it for what they can get out of it for themselves, eh? <laughs> so, anyway, stuff, Furman, you've got the brave new world to conquer, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Can't wait to go, mate. Ah, I bet you can't. Anyway, very nice, Curly. Uh, listen, just remember I mentioned it first, OK? Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, hiya. Not going to work today? Oh, no, Tricia, I'm not. I, uh, I haven't got a job to go to. Baldwin sacked you and all. I just told him what he could do with his job. Because of me? No, I, I had a row with him. I just felt I couldn't work for him anymore. I'm sorry, Tricia, I'm going to have to go and see to the children. But you can't work without a supervisor, I'm telling you. We don't need a supervisor on our backs all day. Oh, I know who you're going to go to when things go wrong. Who are you gonna, who's going to take your grievances to Baldwin? The supervisor's not on our side, is she? She's on his. Yeah, last one, well, that's for sure. But it's not supposed to be like that. Oi! What's going on here? Nothing, Mr Baldwin. Exactly, and that's not what I pay you for. Now, get on with it. But we haven't got a supervisor. So the whole factory grinds to a standstill, does it? We can't work without a supervisor, Mr Baldwin. Oh! Now, don't have to ask who put that little idea in your head. Ida, a word. And the rest of you, get on with it. It won't be just a supervisor we're short of. Now, what is all this nonsense? We haven't got a supervisor. They will have one as soon as I can find someone suitable. I thought you'd have took somebody off at shop floor. Either the person I appoint has to keep those girls in line, keep me happy, solve problems pronto, and make sure we keep to our delivery dates. There is no one that remotely fits that group. Oh, so all my experience counts for nothing then? <laughs> give me one good reason why I should give the job to you. Because you've got a rush job on, and you'll need somebody to keep them girls at it. Meaning if it's not you, they won't. I didn't say that, Mr. Baldwin. How dare he come marching in here? Well, he did have some justification. Justification? For showing me up in front of Carol and Charlie and spoiling Becky's party? For wanting to get back at you. Yeah, well, he's going to wish he hadn't. Oh, leave it, Des. Oh, and let him have his own way. He'll be laughing his socks off. No, he won't. He was as appalled as we were when he realised what he'd walked in on. What he did was evil. He obviously knew that your in-laws were here. Well, if he thinks that this is an end to it... Look, Des, right now, I'm more concerned with putting things right with Carol and Charlie, not making things worse between you and Derek Wilton. Alma has only gone to the dentist. Ma'am, if you want to go, go. I can manage. No, but you said just an hour, and I did say to Alf, I wouldn't be long. Ma'am, I only rang you so that you could get away from Alf. I mean, you've, you've been complaining you've done nothing but get under your feet for the last few weeks. Yes, I know, but it's not his fault he's stuck in, poor lamb. I did say he'd like to come out with me to get my Christmas present. And you thought it'd be a shame to disappoint him. Exactly. <laughs> Mr oh. Sugden, I don't know what's going on between Ken and Deirdre. It's none of my business. And it's certainly none of yours. I've no wish to pry, Mrs Bishop. I'm just telling you what I saw. And I thought you of all people would be delighted to know what's going on. We don't know that anything's going on. She had a bag with her. In that case, Mr. Sugden, there's obviously only one conclusion to be drawn. She has spent the night with him, probably slept in his bed. And it's still nobody's business but theirs. If you're expecting an apology from us for what happened last night, you're going to be disappointed, cos it's you who should be apologising to us. <laughs> well, I don't think that's likely. Des is very angry. Well, he's only got himself to blame. He, he was the one who landed us with that plant in the first place. We were mortified when we found out what it was. I mean, Derek and me were the, the last people in the world to have anything to do with drugs, and there we were, being accused of growing the stuff. Well, I mean, it, it was meant to be a joke. Oh, a joke? Derek could have been arrested for being in possession of that plant. It, 
It could have ended up having a criminal record. Well, that's way beyond a joke. Well, I mean, don't you think this whole thing is just best forgotten? Forgotten, Claire? After what he did to us? Well, I know, I know, but, I mean, it hasn't all been one-sided, has it? I mean, you have to admit that. And what are we supposed to do, then? Just pretend it never happened? Just wait until it comes with another stupid, childish prank. There won't be. Oh, of course there will be, because that's how Des Barnes gets his kicks. He's been doing that ever since he moved in here. One stupid prank after another, and all of them designed to make Derek and me look foolish. Well, this time he's gone too far. Right. There you oh, go. Now. Well, you seem all right in here, so I'll just go see if Betty needs a hand. Oh, thanks, Lo. Hiya. Oh, you're off then, are you? Yeah. Go on, then. I was just wondering, um... Oh, forget it. What? I was just going to ask you if I could have a sub on my wages. Uh, I've got that many bills to pay. But I won't. It it's not right. Let them wait. They cut me off. They cut me off. How much do you want? Will a tenner do? Mm. They've descended like vultures. Anne's after me job. Juliet work is after me locker. Martin's after me car. You don't want me coffee cup by any chance. Oh, do you? don't be like that. No one's indispensable. Anyway, you've got something to look forward to. It's not as if you didn't want to leave. Yeah, yeah, mm. you're right. Yeah. Listen, uh, I don't mm. know if you want to know about this, but uh, what? It's about Reg. <sighs> He's become a father. Well, I knew it was going to happen one day. Yeah, well, it has. And I thought you ought to know. Thanks. It's no concern of mine anyway. No. Nah. No. When? Three weeks ago. Right. Well, like I say. It's no concern of yours. Do you know what it was, a boy or a girl? A little girl. I didn't come in here to talk about me and Liz McDonald. Oh, come on, Sean. This is Desi you're talking to. When it comes to woman trouble, well, got a degree in it, mate. Leave it. Thought you cracked it there. So what went wrong? Don't ask. I'm well out of it. The kind of problem she brings with her, I don't need. Catch you later. See ya. Hello, Alan. Oh, so uh, yeah. this is what you get up to when I'm away. Uh, no, no, I'm just off, mate. Uh, hey, don't go on my account, what? No, it's time I was going anyway. See you later. I will yeah. see you, yeah. See you now. What? Do you know I've been to give you up? Where have you been? Sunliners. What? How'd you fancy going away Christmas? I've just got a cracking deal off Gilroy. You, you booked it? No, no, no. I've just put a hold on it. All I've got to do is give him the nod. Look, page 26. Bill, there's nothing I'd like more. But how can I... I can't go away and leave my mother on her own at Christmas, can I? Give us ten cards. Feeling lucky today. You must be feeling flush and all the money you're chucking away. Here's another fiver. Make it 15. In for a penny. Are you sure? Can you think of a quicker way of striking it, Rich? Joyce, you must have spent the best part of £40 on them scratch cards in here in the last couple of days. So? Well, you'd have been £40 better off for a start. <laughs> and what good's that to me to stay time in? If you don't want to serve me, I'll go to the garage down the road. Put your feet up, love. We can manage here. But I want to help, Vera. You've been so good to me. Look, if I need you, I'll give you the show. Well, if you're sure. Look, I'm positive. OK. <laughs> yeah, we're seeing a bit more of each other. We're 
enjoying each other's company, but as for anything else, it's your business entirely. But if you did get back together again, no one would be more delighted than me. Look, you know what me and Ken have gone through. I'll admit that right now we are closer than we've been for some time. But as for where it's all going to go, well, it's just too early to say. We're just taking it one step at a time, all right? I think she's genuinely sorry for what happened last night, and it's caused quite a rift between her and her in-laws. Oh, she's only got herself to blame, taking up with someone like Des Barnes. Well, it's Becky I feel sorry for. Well, what about me? Don't I get any sympathy? I felt terrible about what happened last night. I still do. Derek, don't you think the whole thing's getting out of hand? And whose fault is that? It's not mine, certainly. I'm sorry, Mavis, but Des Barnes has made me look a complete fool. And there's no way I'm going to let him get away with that. You're not off already, are you? Yeah, I'm afraid I am. I have a League of Friends meeting at two o'clock. All oh, right, see you later, yes, then. Yes, bye. Oh, and listen, if Percy Sugden's imagination carries on in overdrive, do us a favour, will you? Chuck a bucket of cold water over him. <laughs> right, I will. Bye. Uh, Hiya. Thought you were seeing your Steve. Uh, yeah, I was, but I asked Andy to go instead. What's happened? Oh, no, nothing. I just didn't want to be in the same room as Fraser Henderson. I couldn't handle it. Now, if you don't mind, I'd rather not talk about it. Just come in here for a quiet drink. No Sean, no Jerry, no Fraser. So can we change the subject? Do you want a drink? Yeah. What am I running here, a holiday camp? No, Mr Baldwin. Well, it looks like it to me. Hey, hang on, Mr Baldwin. I've got two machines down there. There's no time to do about it. So why do you think I employ a maintenance man? He's not in his room. No, he's in the loading bay, so you lot sit around here exercising your tonsils till he gets here, which can be any time between now and five o'clock. Go and get him. Yes, Mr Baldwin. And you're trying to convince me you can handle things. I had to see you. I feel really bad about you losing your job. Yeah, well, don't. It's never going to take me back on, is he? Now, where's the sense in both of us being out of work? Trisha, it wasn't just over you. Look, he's not the one that's hurting, is he? You're the one who's suffering no pay packet just before Christmas and all. Well, we'll not starve. I managed before I went to work there. But why should you get mucky and at stick, eh? Play Baldwin at his own game. Use him how he uses other folk. I'm not with you. Get your job back and then you dump him when it suits you. Oh, you could really land him in it. I don't want revenge. I don't want to use him. It was my decision to leave just as it was my decision to go and work there. I'm the one who's in control. That's worth more to me than any job with Mike Baldwin. How's Daniel? Oh, he's fine. Fine, as far as I know. I'm sorry, how things turned out? Uh, have you managed to get another job? Not yet. Well, it's, uh, it's about Daniel that I wanted to see you. Oh? Yeah, I've got the date for the preliminary hearing. It's next week. Now, if I'm going to stand any chance of getting Daniel back, I'm going to need all the support I can get. So, well, I wanted to ask you if you'd be prepared to give me a statement. Saying what? Well, just write down everything you did for him. Your relationship with him, my relationship with him. Anything you can think of that'll help convince the court that Daniel should be here and not in Scotland. Will you do that? Yeah, if it'll help. Yeah. So, what's going on between you and my mother? <laughs> Nothing. It's finished. And if you hear different, you put them right. So what happened? Forget it. Best day of your life, the day you got shove of him. Yes, I know. It doesn't stop me thinking, though, does it? Just been a bit younger. Forget about Reg Olsworth. He's past his trick. And from what I can see, Bill Webster's twice the man he'd ever be. Now, I've been thinking about Christmas. Christmas? Well, it's as good a time as any to see a bit more of each other, isn't it? And I take it that's what you want. Yeah, so yeah, I think, yeah. Well, I think he should come round to our place for each Christmas dinner. <sighs> I haven't heard the roar of a bike yet, Gary. They don't grow on trees, you know. And your missus doesn't go much on competition for your affections, does she? Of any kind. How would you's got no do with it? If I want a bike, I'll have a bike. I won't hold my breath. 
You do what you like. You show me an half decent 350 AGS, and I'll show you who's boss in our house. AGS 350, uh, lovingly restored by enthusiast. Fine example of classic bike, £1,200 O and O. Eh? <laughs> Last night's Gazette, motorcycles and three wheelers for sale. P page 34, third column, about two thirds down. I I've got it all, and we'll save it for you. Well, it's all right, I've got one in the back. I don't know, you keep your face straight, honest, I don't. I did cloth. Yeah, I know, she's useless. She proved that more than once a day. But I've got no choice, have I? Not if I want to get this order out. Well, you could try making your peace with Sally. No, if she wants her job back, she can come and ask for it. She was the one that quit. I don't know what went on between you two, but from what I can gather, we need each other. Really? Yes, Rita, she needs a job. You need a supervisor. Hey, 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 hey. And you can take that smile off your face, cos if you think she's going to come crawling back to you now... Oh, <laughs> give her time. She'll come round. Ah, yes, but that's the one thing you haven't got, isn't it, Mike? Time. I'm sorry also that my money's on right. Oh, come on. A tennis says I'm right. You're on. Well? There you go. Page 34, column 3. I don't believe it. I do. That's a tenny he me. If you put down the odd 200 and, uh, and borrow a 1,000 at an APR of, say, 18 and a half, 19%, well, you'd be looking at repayments of uh, £50 a month over two years. Give or take a couple of coppers. Have another tenner says he's right again, and he take it. How, how, how does he do it? Uh, you think that's impressive, Alec? You want to get him going on racing odds. He's like a calculator, is that right? And you don't have to replace the batteries. Um, can I have a word? What, well, well, now? Uh, yeah, what's up? You know how I cook for you? Do your washing, ironing, you know, cook your meal now and again. Oh, yeah, I'm very grateful I am too, Joyce. How do you fancy making it a more permanent arrangement? They're not suggesting that we should, uh, well, you know, what the quaint they used to call living shin. Would there be any point? No. No. So, how about I become your full-time housekeeper? Housekeeper? Live in like, you know. Um, then I'd be there to cook, clean, wash, cater for your every need. Uh, no, no, I, I, no, I don't think so, Joyce. No, it, uh, it's not convenient. No, you see, I've only got one bedroom for a start. Oh, I could bunk down in the lounge for now. No, I, I don't want a housekeeper. What's brought this on all of a sudden? Oh, I'm having a bit of bother with my landlord, you know, I'm looking for somewhere else to stay. Oh. Um, that's when I come up with this idea. Uh, yes, well, uh, yes, well, I'm very sorry, Joyce, yes. Uh, now, if that's all, I... Actually, there was some else. If you want to get your hands on some money, where would you go? Bank. If you could go to a bank, cos you haven't got a bank account. Well, not one of them loan sharks, that's for oh, sure. Oh, no, I know all about them. Where would you go? Well, if I couldn't go to a bank, I suppose I'd approach somebody I knew well, very well, you know, someone who I, I felt could perhaps be in a position to help me. Like a boss, for example? Uh, no. No, 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 definitely not a boss, no, no. I, I, I was thinking more of a, of a rel relative, relative. Is that the time? Good heavens, I'll have to go, Joyce. I'll, I'm sorry, I'll see you tomorrow. Are you sure you don't want one? No, thanks. Are you listening to me? I've heard every word. What happened last night was not my fault. Des, I'm not interested in whose fault it was. I'm just trying to make sure that it never happens again. I've just had the most horrendous afternoon with Carol and Charlie, trying to convince them that me and Becky aren't living with a man who's into drugs. It's ridiculous. No, not the way they saw it. I, I don't believe you. After all the effort that I've put in to get them to accept you, you just go and knock it all down for the sake of a cheap laugh at the expense of the Wiltons. Oh, why don't you just grow up? A character reference, you mean, about your suitability as a parent. If you would. Well, if you think it'll help, I'll be delighted. No one could have done more for Daniel than you have. Thank you, Emily. Right, Finn? I suppose so. Only the last thing I feel like doing right now is going home and cooking a meal. And the last thing I want to see is my wife slaving away in the kitchen. So, I booked us a table at Mario. I thought you said you had an hour day. Terrible. That's why I want to let my hair down tonight. I need something to cheer myself up. I couldn't help overhearing what you were just saying. Oh, come on, Mike. 
I want to wish you the best of luck. Losing a son is something I wouldn't wish on anyone. Not even you. Thanks. And that goes for me too. All right, there's no need to make a meal of it. Come on. Hiya. Right. Hello. Hi, Mum. Glass of red, we need a minute, please. Yeah, certainly. So, how was your brother? Hey, he was all right. That's where you were. What did you tell him? Well, I told him the truth. Said you were at work. That was the truth, wasn't it? Oh, thanks for going. Anyway, I'm glad he's all right. Yeah, he is. A lot better than I've seen him for a while now. Better? In what way? Nah, I don't know. Just uh, more relaxed, I suppose. Oh. Look, Mum, what's going on between you and Sean Skinner? Leave it, Andy. Well, that's what he said. Mum, what's gone wrong? One minute you're best friends, next minute you're at each other's throats. I'll see you. Well, where are you going now? I'm not stopping here. Liz, listen, you got it wrong. Yeah, I did. I thought you were a man. Liz. OK. I handled it badly. Hey, I'm surprised you want to be seen talking to me. Don't worry, I won't be a risk to your health anymore. I don't even want to be seen breathing the same air as you. Liz! I've told you! Leave me alone! Thought you were going to call for Lauren? I am. You better get a move on then. There's one for you here. Last score? Hmm. That'll be empty room. Yeah. It's a record token. Three quid. It's not her the cost of living. You can't get out for three quid. Oh, by the way, we're going to Marilyn's after. Her dog's had puppies. Forgotten anything? Oh, my PE things. Ah. Yeah. Can I pause down for one? What? One of Marilyn's puppies. Can we just talk about that some other time? See you then. See ya. They're going to prosecute. Doesn't say that. I knew this would happen. They want to discuss it. Yeah, then what? They know. They know this. Well, you're forgetting one thing. You don't live here. You live in the flat above the bookies, remember? Says who? Well, as far as the pensions people are concerned, you do. No, no, no. That's just it. As far as they're concerned, I live here. I mean, that's why would they write to me at this address? Someone's shocked us. Someone has been onto them. And one guess who it flaming well is. She's laughing at yourself. She's not. She is. You put your job in for her and she thinks you're balmy. She's grateful, honestly. Yeah. And you think she would have done the same for you? I'm flipping sure she wouldn't. And what about Baldwin? Do you think he's going to change his wicked ways? Is he? So what was it all for, Sal? Well, somebody's got to stand up to him. Yeah, maybe they have. But I worked for him for five years. And he always gets his own way in the end. Yeah, well, not this time. I wouldn't go back and work for him if he begged me. Oh, well, in that case, we'd better start cutting back on a few things. You what? Well, there won't be enough to go around, will there? Hey, hang on a minute. You were saying you didn't want me to go working full-time in the first place. Now you're saying we haven't got enough money. No, I'm not. Yes, you Look, are. Look, I'm just stating the facts, Sal. OK, the money came in very handy, but doesn't mean to say I'm not happy to go back to the way we were. And we won't have a child mind to pay for, either. Yeah, for a couple of days, maybe. But I've told you, I'm getting another job. Oh, yeah, right. That's what you all say, Sal. Unfortunately, there's just not enough to go round. See ya. You've gone too far this time. Uh, I don't know what you're on about. You know very well. No, I don't. Yes, you do, you flaming liar. What? Is it about spoiling Becky's party? Not that. This. What? This letter from the pensions. What's going on? As if you didn't know. Are you all right, Derek? Yes, I'm all right. It's him. He's lost his marbles. What did you say? Shall I come down? Shut the window. I'm coming down. Oh. Look, I don't know what's got into you, but why don't you just go back to your own house and cool Listen, off? Listen, Wilton, I know it was you, and I promise you, you're going to regret this. I always thought you were mad. Derek! 
Hey! <laughs> and I thought Gable Street were rough. What's going on? Well, Des has had a go at Derek, and Derek's had a go at Des. Now, Claire's come out and took Des back inside, and Derek's looking out the window. Well, what's it all about? No idea. It's none of my business. Ring your mother, she'll know. I'll be not to do with her. I didn't say it were, but there's any gossip flying about. She's at front of the queue. Well, even if I do ring her, she'll hang up on me. Oh, isn't it about time you two made it up? Well, it's up to her, not me. What am I supposed to do if I see her? We're digging her side of the street up today. What happens if she comes out with mugs of tea and bickies? Well, keep your hats on in case of low-flying pigs. There you go again. You're as bad as each other. Oh, do what you like, Gary. Just don't ask me. She's your mother. Well, you wouldn't believe it where she is with me. You're acting like kids. You want your heads banging together, the pair of you. Well, I've got work to do. Just calm down a minute. You won't do any good telling the whole world our business. I could kill him with my bare hands. Smug little runt. We've got no proof it's him. Of course it's him. You saw the way he charged over here the other night. He's turned the old thing into a vendetta. Hmm. And who's started it? What do you mean? That business with the plant was just a joke. What he's done's way over the top. But it's not just the plant, is it? You've been tormenting him ever since they moved in. Who says I have? Oh, well, tell me. Mavis, for one. Oh, well, if you listen to her. Oh, so it's not true? The boat? The magic tree? All right, all right. There's no excuse for what he did. He shouldn't have a go at you for what I've done. You're too right he shouldn't, but he has. Oh, I told you from the start I wasn't happy about it. But, oh, no, you had other ideas. We both agreed. No, I wanted to tell them you were the one who couldn't cope with me giving up my pension. Look, don't blame me for all this. I'm not the one who shopped you. What difference does it make if it were you, Derek Wilton, or Uncle Tom Copley? I'm the one who'll be prosecuted. Because, as usual, you had to have your own way. A bunch of flowers? A bottle of wine. A Delia Smith. I don't mind. Well, there must be something, Mum. Hey, I don't want you spending all your grant money on me. It just makes it a lot more difficult if I don't actually know what you want for Christmas. Right, well, I don't know. A bunch of flowers, a box of chocolates. Anyway, is that why you called? Well, yeah. I'm for a bacon butty on my way around to college. Except it's not on your way to college, is it? Look, Mum. What's going on between you and Sean Skinner? Nothing, why? Oh, come on. I'm not blind. I'm not deaf either. What was all that about the other night? Nothing. I just won't be going out with him again, that's all. I'm giving you our time? No, there was never really anything in the first place. So, there's no problem, then? No. Honest, don't worry about me. If you say so. Shepherd's pie and the pasty. Oh, there you go, love. Uh, what's happened to our sandwiches, love? Just coming. I've only got one pair of hands. How do you know it was Derek? Because it's just the sort of snide thing he'd do. And how's Claire taking it? As far as she's concerned, I'm to blame. Can't win. Don't tell me. What's happened with Liz? Well, between you and me, she's keeping rather dodgy company. Some bloke warned me off her. Never. Straight up. I can do without that kind of aggravation. I'm keeping well out of her way. Ah. Go, love. Thanks, so, love. Right. Did you not tell your mother that? Well, I was going to, you see, but she's got this idea in her head that she wants to invite you over for Christmas Day. Well, that's very nice of her, but we can't be in two places at once. I think that if I mentioned it, she'd just say, OK. So? Well, I wouldn't enjoy myself, would I? Thinking of her, there all on her own. I need to spoil it for you, then. Well, if we don't get it booked soon, it's going to be... They're too late. Oh. Yeah. Is that you working down our street? What are you doing? Laying cables. What for? Television, telephone. I've already got some. No, this is fibre-optic technology. It'd be brilliant. Lots more channels on your television. Movies, sports, home shopping. Home shopping? And perhaps that's not such a good idea. Judy all right? No. As soon as you ask, she's not. Oh. You might well or. It's making my life a misery, is this. What is? 
What? You know what? This game you're playing, not talking to her, ignoring her, it's giving me grief. Oh, I, I thought it were a want talking to me. Eh? No. No, it's not like that at all. Have you ever thought of getting an answering machine? Hang on a minute. Come here then, Sophie. Let me find you a book. Sit there, love. That's it. No, I found Kevin at the garage. You said he hadn't got a clue where you were. Yeah, well, there's no reason why you should. You're going to be a good girl for Mummy and read this book. That's all right. I won't keep you long. She's growing up, isn't she? How old is she now? Four? Two. Yes, we tell the biscuit. Mm, she's big for her age. So what did you want to ask me? Oh, uh, nothing important. The, uh, the bath file. Is that uh, overtime rates or timesheets? Uh, well, both of them. Well, aren't they in the bottom left-hand drawer? Yeah. Yeah, they probably are, I'll check. Yeah. You, uh, got another job lined up, have you? Ah, oh, yeah, give us a chance. Trisha, right? She fell on her feet. Mind you, don't know how long it's going to last. You're a very silly girl, you are, you know. I'd rather you didn't speak to me like that. I just hope you know what you're doing. Yeah, well, you left me with no option. I don't regret it. Don't you? You know your mistake. You didn't think I'd be able to replace you. Well, have I got news for you? Supervisors grow on trees. So, who have you got? Give us a chance. No one. Look, I hope you get a job. I hope you get a boss that lives up to your expectations. Now, unless you want me to lie, and I know a woman of your high principles wouldn't, I can't give you much of a reference. I mean, you let me down, didn't you? So, uh, I think it's best not to ask for one, don't you? You right, Titch? Oh, uh, just give us five minutes. Goes fine by me. I'm in no rush to face the Christmas hordes. Uh. Hey, listen, don't stop oh, on my account. You get off and do your shopping. No, no, I'll wait till Roy comes. He'll not be long. Ah, very, very tasty. <laughs> did, I, uh, did I hear you say that uh, Roy was coming? Would that be the fellow that carries the shopping basket? <laughs> I think I might uh, have another cup of tea. Uh, I hope you're not going to take advantage of our Roy. Me? Yeah, I'll try and sell him one of those dodgy holidays. Not dodgy holidays. I'm up to approved. I've got a sticky label to prove it. I'm sorry I'm late. My handle came off. <laughs> ah, we meet again. He's a very remarkable chap, this, you know. Now, before you go, just listen to this. I wonder where I might find a second-hand gas cooker. Well, isn't there a shop down Rosamond Street? No, they only do electric. I'm asking Roy. Oh. How should I know? Then let me be more specific. One with an eye level grill and a self cleaning oven for around £58. I I I'd look in the Gazette under uh, ki kitchen appliances. Yes, yeah. and uh, do you think there, uh, there might be such an item in this edition? Well, I, 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 I dare say. Uh, he knows more than he's letting on, of course. Huh? And what would the phone number be? Oh, 0161 uh, 715 3918. No, 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 try again. Uh, 3918, that's Sunliners Travel. I know, I'm sorry, I don't perform to order. Don't blame you, Roy. Besides, my powers of recall are strictly selective. Gas cookers, they're outside my field of interest. Uh, quite, quite. Nevertheless, in the light of what I observed last night, it might be to our mutual benefit if uh, you let me buy your coffee. You, you'll have to ask the proprietress. Five minutes. And don't sign anything. I have a confession to make. I don't know why I didn't mention it last night. <laughs> Go on. My sister rang from Bridlington. She's invited me to spend Christmas with her. Oh, that'll be nice. Are you sure you don't mind being all on your own? I never take anything for granted in this world, Mrs Bishop. That way, you can't be disappointed. I love that Jack. Oh, Curly, that sends a photo. Yeah, we see, but that's just a possibility, if I end up in Canada. How much are you asking for your house? 
Ah, well, you see, I don't think that's a very good idea, leaving it empty over the winter. I mean, it's a bad time to sell. I thought you were going to sever all ties with Weatherfield. Yeah, I am, I am, I am. I, I was just thinking, you know, I might rent it out, because then it'd be a constant source of income, wouldn't it? Wherever I was, if I couldn't get a job. Curly, you're not going to get to be a lumberjack talking like that. I think you should go for broke. Oh. Right. You let me handle yeah. it. Pines a bit, eh? Hey? Gin and tonic, please. Right, come in up. Joyce, over here. Jude's got something she wants to say. Sit yourselves down, a pair of you. Oh, so forceful, your husband. What's going on? Thank you. Thanks, much. We seem to be at cross purposes. Carry on like this, we'll never make it up. Yeah. Oh, so you're not still mad at me then? Of course not. Right. Can I go now? I've got work to do. Cheers. <laughs> He has his uses. Cheers, ma'am. Can I ask you something? I would you be frank. Oh, certainly, fire away. What are we treading on anybody's toes? Are inviting your mother to spend Christmas Day with me? I mean, if you've got some arrangements, I quite understand. Uh, well, we have and we haven't. No matter. No, we, but we will. I mean, we certainly will. I think it's a wonderful idea, Mr. Sutton. In fact, I tell you what. I'll even buy the bird for you and I'll buy you some champagne to wash it down That's with. very civil of you, but uh, I think we better ask her first, though. Oh, Audrey! Oh, how's Alf? I haven't seen him for ages. Oh, don't ask, he's hibernate. Oh, he's not poorly now. No, he's afraid to show his face because of that accident. He thinks he's a laughing stock. Mind you, wait till it gets to the court. Honestly, the papers are going to have a field there. <laughs> Mr. Minellium, do you not think I'll ever break? Audrey, come on. Oh, no, thanks. Oh, do you know I'd forget my head if it were loose? <laughs> I'll tell him you were asking, Emily. Ta -da, Emily. Yes, do. Bye -bye. Yes, bye. bye. Did Ken have a word with you about the statement? Yeah, yeah, and I'd be glad to. I mean, she said to me, I'm not cut out to be a mother. Daniel's better off with Ken. Those were the words that she used, so you'll be doing him a big favour. And Daniel. Bye. See you later. Apparently, he wants to turn our oil into a household name. I need a correction. He'd like to. He wants to put me in for Brain of Britain. And then, when I've won, he wants exclusive rights and all their t shirts and fridge magnets. <laughs> Is that what he said? Well, not specifically, but that was the gist. Mm. Anyway, he can whistle for it. Good mm. for you. Oh, how did your shopping go? Did you get everything done? Um... Oh, yeah, yeah, she got a pair of shoes. <laughs> I got a date. <laughs> Thanks anyway, Roy. Do you want to lift home? Oh, I'll stick to Shanks's pony. If it's all the same, I'll, I'll get car seat. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, okay. Good night. Good night. See ya. Bye. Right. Do you want the bad news first? Go on. I've got to work, mate. Good news, I've booked a meal for us later. Italiano. Oh, fine. I could get used to this. Uh, I'm afraid uh, there's some news for you too. Maggie rang. Mark won't be able to make it for Christmas. Sorry. Well, you were going to Merlin's. I went to Grand and Grandad's instead. Oh, for any particular reason? No. I mean, me tea. Right. They'd like to come and see the boat on Sunday. That's all right with you. Which it obviously isn't. How am I supposed to know what's the right thing to do when nobody tells me anything? I'm trying to get them to make up with you. Next time oh, I won't on, bother. No, Becky, it's honestly fine. Fine. Isn't it, Des? Yeah, it's fine. Gary? Sunday's no problem. Hang on a he's um, he's got you. something on his mind. We you both have. Oh, well, don't ask me to sigh it out. So I'll only do the Why wrong thing. I don't know. Maybe it's just not Becky gets up and he forgot. Scott, right, this is what we'll do. You and Becky move back across the road. I don't like this idea Where are you going? Well, Hang on, After just for the time it. being. As far as the pensions are concerned, well... It's say malicious gossip. They're used to that. It's true, Des. Listen, you rent your own flat, so officially you don't live with me. That's all they want to know. And in the meantime, I go on drawing money that I'm not entitled to. No, Des. It's not on. And I don't want any part of it. Where are you going? To put a stop to all the lies. Did your Maureen say anything? About what? Me and you on Christmas Day. I wanted you to come for your dinner. Well, I would have done, Percy, but I've other arrangements. Oh? What did our Maureen say? She thought it was a good idea. Oh. Did she now? Thanks, Gary. 
What for? You know, patching things up with me and my mum. Do you want another? No. I'd rather go home. Sounds promising. Mm. <laughs> Here, you. Have you been matchmaking, Percy and me? Uh, uh, let me, let me. Thing is, and it was me this Maud, I suggested that we go away for a few days over the Christmas holiday. Good idea. Well, that's what I thought you'd say. But Maureen here, well, she, she didn't like leaving you. She knows I can manage. I've got me help. I've got neighbours. Yes, but all the same. Oh, go away and enjoy yourselves. Percy, you're on. <laughs> Give us half a line, please, Andy. Certainly so. I you gave Baldwin a bit of your mind. Good on you. But can I tell you something? You are no use to anyone stood there feeling all holy. I don't feel holy. No, I know you don't, love. But as soon as he's got someone to fill your shoes, he'll forget why you left. The only way you'll change him is by chipping away day after day. You want my advice? Get back in there, behind enemy lines. You're the right stir, are you? Folk like Mike Baldwin need taking down a peg. I'm too old. But as long as there's young lasses like her, a bit of spirit and a conscience, well, then there's hope for us all. Only I don't agree with chucking in your job just to make your point. Well, it's too late, Mrs Grimes, cos I've done it. Ah, Sean, I'm, uh, I'm glad I've caught you. I've decided that I don't need the flat anymore. Here. Well, there's no hurry, is there? Well, I uh, I wanted to get it cleared up tonight, just for my own peace of mind. Well, you're lucky, cos I've uh, just dropped in on my way to the bank. Right. Well, I'll settle up what I owe you tomorrow. Watch as she bites. <laughs> What was going on? Sure it's all a mistake. I know I should have Hang asked, I think but I was desperate. I'll call you later. You've not Bye. flitted. Mark, I had to move out. Um, Mark, uh, what uh, are you come doing? on, Scamper, get off there. Mark. Gally might want to sit down. I've made myself something to eat. So just carry on as if I wasn't here. Oh, yeah. Fat chance. Give us the bag. <laughs> yes, I know I did, but I'm going to be at least another ooh, two, three hours. Hang on a minute. There's someone at the door. Um, I'll phone you back, all right? Yeah? Mr Baldwin, it's me, Sally. All oh, right. Well, just push the door. How did you know I'd still be here? I saw your car outside. Look, if you've had second thoughts about handing in your resignation, let me put you straight on something. I don't give in to blackmail. Blackmail? Yeah, all this Trisha Armstrong stuff. You know what I'm talking about. If you want me to reconsider your resignation, she's not part of the deal. And what makes you think that I want my job back? Oh. You just here for your P45, is that it? Stay there, I'll get it. Well, if I... I did decide to change my mind. Oh, well, could be too late. See, I've got someone coming in for an interview very early Monday morning with very, very good references. Well, it's depend on... Oh, hang on, it depends on nothing. I pay the wages, I call the shots. Right, well, there's nothing more to be said then. Oh, uh, just a, um, a, a matter of interest. Uh, what would it all depend on? Well, on whether you were a bit more considerate to um, women with young children. Do you mean provide a crash? Maybe. Not necessarily, but just to be a bit more understanding. Well, 
Maybe I could manage that. I'm not promising anything, man. See you Monday then. She was here. Oh, don't stop. Put the tea there for you. Toilet roll turned round the way she has hers. Toothpaste on toothbrushes ready for us. All my cans, bags up, waiting to be recycled. I did that. They were all over. Give milk in me tea. Overnight, it's as bad as when we lived with her. Yeah, when we didn't have anywhere else to go. But she's got somewhere else to go, hasn't she? Her place. The whole point being, when we moved in here, she was to stay there. No, the whole point was to get you two away from each other. I forever had my mum in one ear saying, Gary won't mind, will he? And you and other telling me that you did. Honestly, you did me head in. Jude, if it was for a couple of days, I wouldn't mind. But I overheard a mutter something about going and getting the rest of her stuff later. I don't know what her plans are. I don't even know what's gone wrong. Oh, don't we? Oh, go to the pub, Gary. Oh, that'd be right, that, wouldn't it? I'll get you two talking again. She moves in, and I'm the one that gets sent off. Just give me some room to get it sorted. Oh, I'm sorry I took so long in the bathroom. I gave it a good clean. Hey, did you realise? Did you realise that, that the taller of them shampoo bottles and the other bits actually fit inside the cabinet? Gary's just going to the pub. Yeah, Gary's just going to the pub. Tara, you don't you don't want to let him get into them habits, love. It's the beginning of the end when they start spending the weekends in the pub. I remember. He was always disappearing on us when he lived with me. Ma'am, hmm. I don't want to fall out with you. And I don't want any lies. Straight answer. What are you doing here? I'm telling you, if he comes in here this dinner, I'm not serving him or his girlfriend. Oh, all right. And that stands until I get a decent apology with the emphasis on the decent. I might be a female behind this bar, <laughs> but that cheeky grin of his, it doesn't help for me. Who? Uh, Des Barnes. He sort of implied that Betty and her husband uh, had uh, had an anonymous word to the RAF pension lot about his employers living around. Well, my Billy says whoever shopped them did the right thing. It certainly wasn't us. <laughs> Vera, what? is there any more hours going over Christmas? Oh, talk to me about it later, and... Uh, yes, girls? Hiya. Uh, you serve him. If I ask him what he wants, I have the risk of him telling me. Yes, young man. What can I get you? Uh, nothing. I I've changed my mind. Uh, no, Roy, wait, wait. Uh, did, you, uh, did you ever think about what we said, you know, about the radio? I have to say, I think you've got the face for it. It's a joke, Roy. J just a joke. Just. Are you having Christmas dinner with your mum this year? Mm, yep. I wouldn't even attempt to get out of it. Mm. On your own? Yeah. It's a bit too soon for introductions. I don't want to give her any more ammunition about spending another Christmas with a fella that's just not going to last. Oh, yeah. You were with Tony this time last year, weren't you? Yeah. Hey, you'll have a great time. Did his mum need the usual four months notice about you coming? They are so desperate to get him married off and settled down. Yeah, yeah, well, I suppose he's told her. You know what he's been like since he's been running the garage. He's been really busy. He ain't got time for anybody or anything. Right, yeah. Do you want to hear a mother in law joke? Always. She's come to stay. Yeah, it made me laugh about that much. Can he not cut the carrots lengthways? He likes little round circles. Of course he does. How about his parsnips? Stop going off on a tangent. Well, you mentioned carrots. This is my house. And I just want you to be honest with me. You got yourself in a right mess juggling all your other debts. How long since you paid your rent? Oh, that's a funny question. Don't avoid the issue. Have you paid the rent, yes or no? 
why do you let things get so out of control? <laughs> We'd have lent it to you. We've still got the money from selling the bag and the conservatory. <laughs> Look, <laughs> it's not about money. <laughs> what? It's about funny business. The landlord, he, he's been... It's not about money. <laughs> Old Bernard. Mm. Didn't strike me as capable. At least he didn't come across like that when we were living there. Well, you've got Gary. And it's all right when I had a boyfriend. <laughs> You know, I even conned Alec into showing his face around there every now and again. But, you know, that, that just triggered Bernard. It spurred him on. He got it into his head that I, I preferred older men. Oh, yuck. Has anything happened? Well, I've, I've, I've managed to avoid it. But, you know, he's got me that nervous, too. You know, I can't stay there. I mean, he's got keys to all his houses. Oh, well, he can't get away with that. Well, it's his word against mine. I... I couldn't stay with you and Gary for a while, could I? I can't go back there. I can't. Oh, <laughs> Is there something wrong at the flats? Have you locked yourself out? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Nothing like that. <laughs> oh, hello. I thought as you were not at home, you'd, uh, you'd probably be here. I I've come to ask your advice about a particular person. What, now? I I'm being pursued by an unwanted, and I have to say, totally uninvited party. I, I believe their interests to be quite unhealthy. I'll open the wine, let it breathe. Um. Is this a woman, Roy? No, a man. Oh. And as I understand it, you're the closest person to him that I know. It, it, it's through here, aren't we? Um. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, actually, Kev. Look, has, has, has Tony mentioned anything to you about taking Maxie into his house for Christmas? Uh, yeah. Mentioned something once or twice. Oh, so he is. He isn't. Something not quite right, is there? Look, do you, uh, do you want to come in? Your place? Yes. I suppose I'm talking image. Maxine just ain't a girl who's dead in places. So you wish you were still with Fiona, like? Well, she'd have her business, I'd have mine. It'd be more equal, you know. Yeah. Intellectually? Yeah, intellectually. Say, yeah. Uh, for example, you know, I've met one or two other girls recently who are more into their careers. Afternoon, all. Yeah. Just bumped into Fiona outside the shop. She was wondering if you're thinking of inviting Maxine for Christmas. No, feel free to make her a better offer. Hey, smells great, Sal. I'm starving. I don't want her. She's expecting to be with you. Hmm? Excuse us. Yeah. Why aren't you having her for Christmas? Can't spring another one on my mother, now. What do you mean another one? She's your girlfriend. She assumes that she's going. <laughs> she assumes everything. Well, have you thought of telling her otherwise? No, telling Maxine anything. It just don't get through. <sighs> You really don't want her for Christmas? I really don't want Maxine at all. The best Christmas present she could give me would be to dump me. Captain. <laughs> We're all going on the boat. You're keen. Grandad's here. There's his boss. Sean Skinner. Uh, Charlie Palmer, Claire's father-in-law. Where's Carol? Oh, I said I'd pick you up in the, and then go, go back for her. Uh, she's still doing the picnic. I, I told her we'd do the picnic. Yeah, we know what she's like. Oh, yeah. Well, we're nowhere near ready. We're not even showered. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait outside. Don't be stupid. Come through and have a cup of tea while you're waiting. Meanwhile, Des loses another ten points for the company he keeps. Sorry. Oh, I'll go. <sighs> By the way, you'll find no discrepancy in the takings. What, they weren't after money? If you see Liz MacDonald, tell her to keep well out of my way. We have got more important things to think about, you know, like the small matter of the custody hearing next week. Not to mention Mrs. Jeffers trying to push me into early retirement. Just give us five minutes. 
is talking about television and radio and our show business will, will, will bring me glamour and money and the attention of the opposite sex. <laughs> Just like it has for him. Well, it might have done, but I don't want that all over again. All over again? I was picked for a quiz team once at, at a hotel where I worked. They wanted to rig it, so they put me on the losing side. Trouble was, I knew it all. Every question. Well, it were one of my specialist subjects, you see. Disasters. Where they happen, what year, how many survivors, you know. Well, after that, they put me on the winning team. But then people got really funny with me, suspicious. Folk don't like a person to be right all the time, do they? They don't. They treated me like a, a freak when they thought I couldn't do it and a, and a freak when they found out I could. Well, knowledge is power, Roy. Tell Alec Gilroy you're not interested. Well, I thought I had. He seems to have ignored my request. <laughs> He's good at that. Y you couldn't have a word with him for me, could you? Well, I'll have a go, but I can't promise anything. Saying no to Alec is the easy part. Getting him to understand the meaning of the word is a different story. Hey, I'll lend you my dictionary to take to work with you tomorrow. <laughs> I've got one here, if you can borrow that. Oh, Vera, uh, have you got a moment? Do you know, for a minute I took over this place, I don't think I've stopped for more than two seconds at a time. Tell me about it. <laughs> Listen, I've had a few thoughts, you know, like I do, uh, so I thought I'd share them with you while they're still fresh. Well, look, can you share them with me a bit later, Alec? I mean, come to think of it, you can have something to yourself if you like, cos, well, we've got enough out front, you know, with Betty and Andy and Samantha. But if you want to take five... Oh, no! No, I've always got to keep an air to bar, you see. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Well, uh, shall I check with you tomorrow, then, see how you're placed? Yeah, you'll do that, yeah. well. <laughs> uh, no, uh, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a ring if I need you, eh? Oh, right, right. Well, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll wait to hear, then, shall I? See you, love. <sighs> Keep your fresh thoughts to yourself. Let me know what you want to do on the day, you know what I mean? I want to see you. It's like, right. I'll not be a fan of if it's just a quick drink, swap right. presents, or it's a full Morgan. work. Morgan! Fun right. with ferrets. Oh. <laughs> oh, naturally, Andrew, uh, I'm trying to avoid bumping into your mother and her boyfriend, you understand me? Oh, um, I think that's all off. No. Well, well, well. Here's me thinking it was all based on true love, eh? <laughs> Cheerio. See ya. See you, Jim. There you go. Hey, do you know, it's like I've never been away from the place. No. Did you ask him in here today? No, he just turned up. I think he's settled in for winter. You better tell him otherwise. Look, do you want to tell him? I don't think I can take hints. Ali? Oh, she's doing a marvellous job, you know, the landlady oh, here. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. I thought you were going home. Well, just while I was, but uh, yeah, I got chatted and serving, you know, like you do. <laughs> yeah, well, don't let anybody else hold you up there. Eh? Right, right, that's that's me off. Right, love. Other business to attend to, you know, yeah, frankly, okay. struggle on, you know. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, Vera. All right, love. You're going to spend all afternoon here, or what? I was just awaiting further instructions. She reckons the landlord's been sexually harassing her. She's really distressed, I think it's true. Right, I'll go round and thump him. Yeah. Come and have some right. dinner first. Right. right. Hey, right, Molly. Right. Right. Uh, another four cans, please, Betty, love. Okay. More for dinner than expected. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, Anna. Oh, lovely, thank you. Kev? Hiya. Have you got a sec? Er, uh, not really, no. It won't take a minute. It's just I can't decide what to get Tony for Christmas. I mean, I could get him some for the car, but anything I'd get would be wrong, wouldn't it? I'm sure it's a bit boring. I mean, I had thought about electronic organiser or an executive briefcase. A bit overboard. Why? I know he will for me, because he's gone quiet on the subject. I mean, what's he getting me? I don't know. You'll have to wait and see. Oh, I see. Big, small, edible, wearable. Edible and wearable. Look, we uh, don't discuss things like that. Right? Rubbish! He's told me he'd been thinking about what to get Sally, so I know he's been thinking about me. I've told him CDs and something to play them on. Oh. Brilliant. Look, I've, uh, I've got to go. What's wrong? He's out buying me a CD player, isn't he? I mean, he is getting me a present. Uh, I uh, couldn't sell you. 
Is Mum is expecting me for Christmas, isn't she? New Year? Oh. I see. Look, I, uh, I think you should talk to him, Maxie. <laughs> yeah, I was going to. But said he was going Christmas shopping in Leeds, and I thought... Well, I thought wrong, didn't I? Look, I've, uh, got to go. Yeah, sure. Sorry to have kept you. A woman do that to you? No. Well, yeah, on second thought, she could say that. Is it you that's weird, or Liz MacDonald, for going out with you? Thought she considered you trouble. I am an amateur, by comparison. Find yourself a flat? No, not yet. There was one still going above the bookies. I never got a chance to see that, did I? Feel free to bring a bodyguard. No, you were all right. Finish your drink. I'll just check with Vera. Pass us the salt and pepper shakers off the side, would you, Mr Palmer, please? Thank you. I've been saving this for a special occasion. <laughs> I'll go through and wait with Becky. You push your luck sometimes. What's he got that boat for anyway? Drug running? I don't know. I'm just the innocent child. Bookies. Very crafty when it comes to taking other people's money. How much did it cost? I don't know. A few thousand, I guess. He had another boat, but he went and burnt it, the nutter. He can afford to burn him in his position. I'm surprised you feel happy stepping foot on it. Why? What do you mean? Well, how do you think he'd pay for it if not with your dad's insurance? If that's what you think, then why did you accept our invitation? It was Becky who asked us, and I needed to see what you'd let him do to believe it. He takes on a woman and her child. Well, where does he get the money unless the package includes several thousand a year? He saves like everyone else. Look at this grubby backstreet, this dog box. Private income's very attractive to a chancer like him. He's not like that at all. Des is really good to us. Yeah, he is. It's wrong. He's not entitled to that money. I won't have him profiting from our Jeff's death. That pension is for you, his widow, because he's not here to take care of himself anymore. Grandad, you wrote that letter. Someone had to put things right. Get out of this house. If you had any sense, you'd do the same yourself. I was dealing with it in my own time. I was going to tell them myself. You say that now? You've changed since you took up with him? You're not the girl my son married. Didn't I hear the lady of the house tell you to leave? No, I'd just be as happy to come to you if you'd rather I did. You would not. You'd only end up telling me how it's done, so I might as well give in from the beginning and let you do the lot. Thanks, Vera. Oh, are you taking it then? Yeah, might as well. If it's not great, but it'll do for now. Hey, have you heard this, Betty? She's what? taking flat above bookies. Of course, it'll be free. <laughs> it's where Des were pretending that his girlfriend was living. They showed their face in here. I'm not serving. So he said. It'll be very nice, surely. No, it's not, but Sean says I can do what I like to it, so... I'm sure he does. You got something to say again? No. Why should I? Why, indeed? I'm looking for accommodation, not a love nest. These things have been straightforward with me. What's he been saying? He doesn't have to. His face says it all. Is that a rat kicking? Who from? Yeah. I think that's what he's wondering. Was it a robbery? I don't know what it was. Do you? Is, uh, is Mr Gilroy about? Look, this isn't his office, you know. Well, you shouldn't let him treat it like it is. I'll have a bit of lemon, thank you. I, uh, I'm just going to take my drink over here. OK. Sorry about that. She's your mother-in-law or something, isn't she? And his mum, yeah. Does he ever fantasise about being adopted? No, but I do on his behalf. <laughs> Don't say. Listen, I wouldn't rush into taking that flat till you looked at Curly's place, my boss. He's going backpacking around the world indefinitely. So he might be renting his house out? Well, he talked about selling it, but I don't think he's totally decided. I think I've just decided for him. So how did it go, then, eh? Shopping with my mum. Don't ever suggest that again. Noted. One of these people oh, always <laughs> buy things yes. turned up I now. Maxine. <clears throat> oh, hey, you come on. No, I couldn't! What are you doing here? <sighs> What are you doing here with Fiona? I'm not here with Fiona. 
Yeah, likely story. Look, I came here for my lunch on my own. Come on, let's not do this here. You told me you were Christmas shopping in Leeds. Well, I lied. I have to, just to get five minutes personal space from you. God, you don't let me go to Leeds because you thought it was to buy your present. Yeah, and did you? I haven't been to Leeds, Maxine. I've been here. A boyfriend it just for Christmas, you know. You talk shopping lists. I need to see other people sometimes just so I can get a normal conversation. Yeah, and actually be telling me you want to see other women. I do. I have done. No, you don't. You're just trying to make me jealous. He has, Max. Well, it's Christmas, so I'll forgive you. Well, I don't forgive myself. Look, Max, you've driven me to it. I'm not normally like this, but I've been trying to tell you ever since. So everyone knows? Everyone knows but me! Well? <laughs> oh. Well, I'd better go and... Uh... Yeah, I think you have, lad. Yeah, all right, thanks for having us round. Yeah, yeah, our pleasure. You see, me and my partner being equals, we don't have these problems. <laughs> Maxine! Come on. You've known all along, haven't you? I had an idea. Oh! Well, he, he saw one of my mates after my 21st, so... Maxine, come on, Max. Ma Fuck oh, off, you! Max! Max! <laughs> well, Father Christmas has come early for you, eh? Anything else you wanted? Becky, think of me. Becky? Oh, it's only her and Jackie are concerned with. I'm just piggy in the middle between son and granddaughter. I don't even rate. We love you too. Don't give me that. After what you've done to me. Carol's on the phone. She wants to know what's going on. Promise me that she didn't have anything to do with this. She didn't. Tell her Charlie's on his way home to explain. What can I say about Christmas? <laughs> Same as you told the RAF. Claire can't possibly be in two places at once. She'll have to make a moral choice. Avoiding me, aren't you? Uh, where's Scamper? Into with you? Is at work with Gary. Don't change the subject. I'll only be with you for a few days, Judy. A few days, just just till I get me hair together. Derek. A minute. I want to apologise. I found out who grassed up Claire to the RAF and it wasn't you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry too, Desmond. Do you know there's not a day goes by when I don't regret having you as a next door neighbour? <laughs> I hope Bill was joking about those Denham Bermudas. Not for his holiday. Mm. He said he was going to cut down an old pair of bib and braces. Well, I wouldn't put it past him. Rough diamond is Bill. <laughs> it makes me laugh though, and I've missed that. <laughs> <laughs> Something else will make you laugh. See your red salmon over there? It says on the label, it's wild, doesn't it? What, well, bound to be? Big fish like that squashed into a little tin. <laughs> uh, funny sense of humour, me. Just, just two packet soups then, Mrs. Grimes. I thought you'd see enough soup in that cafe. I guess, oh, you mean. And it's not very pleased. Yeah, <laughs> always makes me laugh. Right? <laughs> oh, the humour this time of the morning. Oh, it's Roy telling a joke. Go on, Roy, tell Alex. Uh, I'd rather not, thank you. Oh, don't push the lad because he's got a big decision to make. I've made it. Come on, Roy, you know it makes sense. A headpiece like yours, serving fried eggs to thickos. I regard work of any kind as a privilege, Mr Gilroy. Yes, but in a cafe. It's like being... Bodyguarded a mortuary. There's no job satisfaction. Can I pay for this before it goes stale? Are you all right, Roy? No, uh, can I browse a bit till he's gone? Of course you can, love. Have another laugh at the salmon. 
Mm. Worst thing about Christmas, isn't it? All the waste paper. Oh, well, thank you very much. I only bought these yesterday. I mean, after. Boxes, wrapping paper, decorations. There's always the one you forget to take down, isn't there? Then it has to go under your pancakes. Well, I've covered that. I've made a checklist. Um, eight streamers, six balloons, drawing pins, 24 sticking for the use of. Hmm, good idea. Well, I was only joking, really. Well, still, it's a good idea. You should do it. Oh, look at the time. I'm going to be late. Well, you better get off then, or you'll never get Curly's job. Oh, foregone conclusion, that, if and when he goes. What do you mean, if? Office search Raquel, isn't he? Well, I asked him that, not in so many words, but he reckons he's going in the other direction. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you about seven, OK? OK, yeah. Mm -hmm. See ya. If they want me, they've had it. Hiya. Hello. I am um, not disturbing you, I just wanted a quick word with Andy. No, no, no. Seven, OK? OK, yeah, yeah. See you Bye. later. Bye. Went quick, didn't she? Frightened I'm going to invite myself around for Christmas or what? Oh, don't get touchy. She's late, that sort. Right, sit yourself down. Ta. I'll, uh, I'll make a brew. Uh, no, not I have no time. I don't know why I'm here, really. I, I just had to get out of that flaming flat. Your decorations are nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But you've not come round here to tell me that, have you? No. So what is it, then? Sean Skinner? You know he got beat up? Yeah. Now, if you've come round here to tell me that my dad's done uh, no. it... No. No, I don't know who did it. But uh, I do know who set it up. Same person who sent me this. Love letter. I'm getting something every day. Presents, flowers. Look, Mum, I'm sorry, but if you know who set this up, then uh, I think you should tell the police, don't you? No, I can't, Andy. Because if I do that, I Steve will get what Sean got, but worse. Steve? This fella is in prison with Steve and he's seen me and he's, well, he's got this obsession. Oh, I don't know why I'm telling you, you can't help. Well, I did ask what was going on a while ago, Mum, but you just clammed up on me. Yeah, well, I thought I could handle it. Anyway, there was nothing you could do, there's nothing anybody could do. I can't make a move without he knows about it, Andy. He's got people watching me. Roy is an innocent Alec and you're upsetting him. How upset do you think I felt when someone has took me off the cruises and stuck me in here? Oh, what's that got to do with Roy? Well, he's my passport back, isn't he? The man's unique. Crooners. That's all you ever get on cruise ships now. Singing the same songs, wearing the same suit. Oh, so that's it. You want to get back to sea? True, true. Do Roy good and all. Get some colour in his cheeks. And if some miners turn their noses up, I'll cut a cue now. You told him it was for radio. Well, radio, television, whatever. Multimedia, whatever that means. This world's his lobster. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Have you any dinner? No, you're all right, son. I've had a one alma special, so I have. No, I should have come round to do a friend a favour. Oh, my mum? No, no, Willie. What do you mean, your mother? What do you mention your mother for? Uh, well, I mean, if anybody needs a friend at the moment, mate, she does. No, no, a suitcase for Willie. Eh? You remember the last time? Andrew, when you moved from my place, you used the suitcase. I need the suitcase for Willie. Oh, right, yeah, gotcha. Um, give me a minute, it's in the loft. Just, uh, hide your horses there, Andrew. Now, what's this about your mother? <coughs> Zoe, what are you doing here? I've come to see Mr Gilroy. Look. I've tried talking to him, but it's no use, he won't listen. If he sees you in here, you'll only upset you again. He's upset me already. Got me so I can't concentrate. Where is he? Well, he's in the back, but I'm not going to let you see him. You go I on. want to see him. Oh, well, as long as you know what you're doing. Alec, you've got a visitor. Huh? Roy Cropper. Roy? Here? Show him in. Do me a favour, will you, Alec? Take no for an answer. Roy, me old mate. Come in. Park yourself. That's it. I'll, uh, I'll order coffee, shall I? No, thanks. I'm, I'm not stopping. You, uh, you've been churning it over, have you? My little proposition. Brain of Britain. The man who makes Bamba Gascoigne look like Wurzel Gummidge. 
You give me no choice, Mr. Gilroy. Oh, that's where you're wrong, Roy. You play my way, you'll have every choice you've ever dreamed of. What are the two greatest aphrodisiacs in the world? Wealth and fame. Add intellect to them, too. Ooh, the women won't stand a chance. You do like women, do you? I get on very well with them. They're not top of my agenda at the moment. No, no, no. Well, I mean, when I say women, I'm talking loosely. Your private life's your own, of course it is. Fate will intervene there, Mr Gilroy. Ms Wright will come along one day. Oh, absolutely. No, 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 what I'm saying is... Uh, it'd be nice to keep your hand in while you're waiting. Perhaps you'd call on me this evening, Mr Gilroy, uh, to discuss other aspects in uh, greater detail. Oh, certainly, certainly. At your place, no problem. Uh, what time? Uh, seven o'clock, if that's convenient. Oh, oh yes, that's Crimea Flats. Uh, Deirdre will give you directions. Yes. Until this evening, then. Yes, right, I look forward to it. Bye, Roy. Yes, keep taking the vitamins. <laughs> well, he's gone out smiling. Have you called it off? Uh, yeah, well, I called it off. All this to and fro and it might have kidded you. It didn't give me. It's <laughs> after a better deal. One twenty. You said I'm sorry, Betty. What else can I do? Shoot myself? Knowing you, you get that wrong on all. This silly short of fivers again. I'll put some more in, but I've done it twice. It's still short, Betty. You're not accusing me, I hope. No, I'm here. Oh. Accusing you of what? She reckons the till's down. It is, about a tenner at least. Don't look at me. You can search me if you like. My bag's in the back. Look, don't be getting touchy, pair of you. I'm making an observation. That's <laughs> all. Oh. It's her. Uh, she can't add up. <laughs> It's not a formal court, it's a sort of conciliation session in front of a welfare officer. Is Denise going to be there? She's got to be. Oh, right. So come Wednesday you could have Daniel back? Uh, no, that's the next stage when the judge orders her to hand him over. Oh, by the way, did I tell you uh, Sally Webster made a statement? Oh, brilliant, that's good. Flattering in the extreme and coming from a registered childminder should carry some weight. Yeah, more than mine. Oh, no, 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 Fiona, your statement's very important. You were party to Denise's duplicity. Yeah, I just wrote the truth. Exactly, exactly. And if Kelly does the same, fingers crossed, it's bye-bye Denise, hello, Daniel. Don't have to worry about Kelly. She's got honesty written all over her face. Yeah, broke her heart, isn't Daniel? When he does come back, I don't know who's going to be more pleased, Kelly or me. Can I buy you a drink? Sorry, I'm just off. Please. Listen, I, I beg you. Please. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I didn't pay a lot for it either. It was only 20. What's he doing here? Bought me a drink over the road. He's come to apologise. Ah, oh, well, you can tell him he's not welcome and he can stick his apology. I know what you think of me, Claire, but I don't want you taking it out on the missus. It's Becky. I want to see her at Christmas. Becky feels the same way I do. If she never sees him again, it'll be soon but enough. Let's just think about it, eh? Charlie's groveling. Grovel a bit more, Charlie. This is harder than I thought. It's not funny, Des. It's never funny apologising. I know that from experience. I shouldn't have come. Hold on. Done a bit of apologising myself lately, haven't I, Claire? Yeah, and you can blame him for that. And each time I've apologised, I've had it chucked back in my face. I'm walking around this street like a bad smell. I've done untold damage, and I'm sorry. But I can't accept you two together. But as the wife says, I've got to live with it. <laughs> You've got a lot more than that to live with. And what's changed you, anyway? Season of goodwill and all that. Ah, well, you're very, uh, charitable with other people's feelings. And I just, eh? Wanted me to play Father Christmas, but I couldn't grow a beard in time. So what now, Claire? Do I put the kettle on or thump him? I'll put the kettle on. Apology accepted, I think, Charlie. You never know, someone might accept one of mine one of these days. Here we go. Oh, thanks, Mr Barlow. I have tried, honest, but each time I start, I just get stuck on what to say. 
Well, all they want is a brief history of your day-to-day -day dealings with Daniel, like uh, how healthy he was, how happy. But I've never been that good at spelling. Oh, no, spelling isn't important. But I don't want to show you up, not with it being for a court. Sincerity, Kelly. That's all that counts. What? It looked bad, though, you being a school teacher. No, they just want to know about my abilities as a father, you know, how much I made up for Daniel's mother absconding with a boyfriend. Tell you what, you write it and I'll sign it. No, oh, sorry, Kelly, it's got to be in your own words. I can't be seen to have influenced you. It's the words I'm having bother with, Mr Barlow. OK. Um, did I care for Daniel? Oh, of course you did. Then say it. And uh, why did I bring you in here as a nanny? So I could look after him while you were out at work. Ensuring what? Continuity of care. Exactly, we'll say it. Oh, it's vital, is that? Better than dumping him with strangers. Exactly, which demonstrates that Daniel's welfare is my top priority. Well, I think I've got it now. And you say it doesn't matter if it's all over the place? Not one jot. Just so long as it comes from the heart. Right. See you now. Cheerio for now. Bad Just these uh, indigestion pills, please. <laughs> I've just been knocking on your door. Oh, yeah. When's a good time to view? View what? Your house. And his girlfriend said you might be renting it out while you go away. Oh, yeah, yeah, good idea. Knock any time. Well, have you had your tea? Uh, yes, at work. That's why I've got these. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. You're See welcome, you now. Love. Yeah. His wife did go abroad, didn't she? She did that. As far away as you can get. Why do you ask? No reason. Don't you, don't you have any place, Matt? No, ma'am, just plates. I've got them warming in the oven. Oh, hello, oh, fella. Have you been up in Gary dig holes? Oh, hello. Uh -oh. Yeah. Something smells good. Yeah, cottage pie, my mum's made it. Hey, did you give him something to eat, Gary? Who's scamper? Yeah. He's had two Cornish pasties and a pair of pliers. Pliers? I didn't eat all the pliers, just the rubber grips off the end. Oh, you naughty dog. We'll have to buy Gary a new pair, won't we? I'd forget about that, Joyce. You're in enough lumber as it is. Uh, what do you mean by that? I mean, like, back rent. Judy only went round to hear Bernard's side of it. You've been to see Bernard? Bernard, your landlord, yeah. What did he say? Well, he denies sexual harassment. It was your money he was after, Joyce, not your body. She owes three months' rent. Ha! <laughs> well, he's a liar. It's never three months. Anyway, I... You had no right going round there, Gary. I'm going to bed. I don't want any tea. Ma'am? Three months. Well, we had to know, Jude. So we're stuck with her then, aren't we? Cottage pie for you, scamper. <laughs> Your mum's off her feet. Oh, uh, come in, Mr Gilroy. Oh, uh, thank you. Make yourself at home. <laughs> Oh, I've, uh, I've brought you a bottle of scotch. Oh, never touch spirits, Mr Gilroy. Dulls the senses. Shall we sit at the table? Hi. Where is it? You're not leaving anything else behind, are you? Apart from the washing machine? Yeah. Tables, chairs, cups, saucers. Your wife? Oh, sorry, but... Well, she is abroad, isn't she? Well, where do you think she is? Under the floorboard? Oh, come on, Samantha. You didn't think that, did you? No, 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 no. Just covering me back, you know. I mean, if I did decide to rent this place and she turns up out the blue... She won't. And it's my home. I can do what I want with it. OK. Well, if the price is right, I'll move in as soon as you're gone, if that's all right with you. Great. Well, when are you going, then? Ah, well, you see, I haven't uh, quite formulated all me, me plans yet. I mean, that there's routes to sort out and uh, equipment to buy at the this last minute. This side of Christmas? Yeah, yeah. Soon, soon. I could go tomorrow. Soon, soon. Well, don't mess me about, though, Curly. I want this place, and I want it now. So soon, or the deal's off. I'll let myself out. Bye-bye, Samantha. <laughs> Where the hell are you? Looking for something. Oh. Wouldn't you find it better with the lights on? Ah, here it is. <laughs> Uh, you did say, uh, if I agreed to do it, that there'd be uh, the odd perk, um, uh, trips abroad, lecture tours on liners. Oh, yes. Oh, they'll be queuing up at your front door. 
maybe not this front door, but uh, money you'll be earning, you'll be able to, you know, buy. The definitive history of the Titanic, including passenger list and crew list. I, I, I can name them all. Right, yes. Well, hardly the ideal material for cruise liners, mind you, but uh, still. Well, all that remains is my Auntie Margaret. She's worried I, I, I get exploited. Oh, well, I'll, I'll have to meet her. Put her mind at rest. She wants to meet you, Mr Gilroy. In fact, she's determined to. Oh, right, well, if you'll, uh, if you'll give me the address, I'll pop round and... Uh... Oh, she's here. Here? I, th I, th I thought you lived on your own. Well, I, I do and I don't, if you see what I mean. I don't know. My Auntie Margaret moved in in uh, 1987, just after she died. Shall we get in touch? Uh, look, I, I, th I think I, I think we'd just better forget this. I'll uh, I'll make other arrangements. M Mr. Gilroy, where are you going? Mr. Gilroy! Mr. Gilroy! If I pack tonight, I'll have notes away for work in the morning. Yeah. What's up, are we? What's up? You're sharing this place with a ghoul. Do you know that? <laughs> Has he gone? Mr. Gilroy's left his whiskey. Do you fancy a drop? Yes, well, it's a rotten job if you can't make arrangements for Christmas. Somebody's got to do it. And you at work? Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's like Fiona says, it's a rotten job. Have you not got anywhere to go, like, anywhere? <gasps> Public has. Public can use it. So this split's permanent, is it, between you and that uh, mechanic? Yeah, until he comes crawling back on his hands and knees. Oh, mm. <laughs> <Dead> kinky. <laughs> <laughs> I found myself round at Andy's this morning. Now I'm here. Anything rather than stopping. Listen, what time are you at work? I uh, should be there now. Well, I said I'd call in on Ken, so why don't you come with me and I'll get him to give you a lift? No, no, you're all right. You go. I'm going to finish this and then I'll ring a cab. All right. You sure you're going to be OK? Oh, I'll be OK, won't I? It's just them as gets too close to me getting hurt. Oh, well, in that case, I'm definitely going. <laughs> but you take care, do you hear? I will. Thanks, dear. Bye. In a way, it's a blessing. I mean, things will never be the same with the Palmers. They'll still be Becky's grandparents. No, well, between them and me, I mean. There's a... Well, there's a degree of separation now. That's your doing. St. Des of Weatherfield. Oh, Des. This morning. Most impolite of me not to accept your apology. Good of you to offer, crass of me to turn it down. Season of goodwill, etc. Thanks, mate. Okay. Thanks, Terry. See? Mm. Cast your bread on the waters, it comes back buttered. <laughs> Did you find that missing money? No. Betty reckons it's because you can't add up. What? Oh, Elizabeth, who are you on the phone to? The SAS? Mate, you, according to Andrew, you're going to need them, aren't you? Orange juice, please, V. Right, love. What's Andy been telling you? Nothing, no. He just mentioned, uh, talking about your fancy man, you know. One with the fatal attraction fancies you. Fraser. Fraser Nash or someone, is that it? I told Andy in confidence. Oh, well, don't worry, he's just keeping it in the family. Mind you, it's not family anymore, is it? I mean, we're not related, are we? Shame that, isn't it? Because uh, otherwise your trick might have worked. What trick? What trick? Oh, the one when the buck stupid big Irishman intervenes on your behalf, that one. I mean, that is why you're going public with us, isn't it? It never entered my head. Jim, the last person I would ask for help is you. 65p, love. It's all there, Vera. Right. Well, just so long as we understand each other. That'll be a first, won't it? Though my own involvement was only as an observer, I can state categorically that Kenneth Barlow was a loving father to his son and did all in his power to compensate for the child's mother deserting him. Yours sincerely, Sally Webster, registered childminder. So what do you think? Very good. I don't think Denise has a leg to stand on. I mean, any mother who can turn her back on a child once is quite capable of doing it again. Surely the tribunal will be able to see that. And I've got another, even better one, from Fiona. I'll read that to you in a minute. Mm. 
Oh, hello, Kelly. Come in. No more problems, I hope. Don't know yet, Mr Barlow. Hello, Mrs Rashid. Hi, Kelly. And uh, Kelly's helping me with a statement as well, only we're having a bit of trouble over the words, aren't we, Kelly? Wait, sit down, sit down. No, I can't stop, Mr Barlow. Oh. Oh, speak up. Deirdre's on our side. Well, I had a phone call about tea time. It was from, um... Well, you did say continuity of care were important, didn't you? Vital was the word you used, I think. Good. Well, anyway, I've said yes. I'm sorry. Well, Mrs Osborne rung me this afternoon from Scotland and offered me my old job back looking after Daniel. It's a start, isn't it? What? Well, even if he can't have you back right away, he'll have me. So, you see, I can't really do this statement cos it wouldn't be fair, would it? Fair? What's fair about stabbing me in the back, Kelly? Ken. I'm doing it for Daniel! I thought you'd be pleased! Well, a bit anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> Scamper around the block before I start my labours. Okay. Scamper. Come here. Come on. Um, Gary. What? Um, I'm sorry I misled you about my rent and everything. It's okay. Forget it. I know you must think I'm hopeless, but uh, honestly, I don't know where my money goes to. <sighs> You're not the only one. No, I, I know I'm not. Uh, uh, there are folk who owe a fortune on them credit cards, aren't there? And mortgages. Well, I don't have a mortgage, do I? I mean, what are mortgages if they're not debts? And I don't have any credit cards, neither. You have a few debts, though, don't you, Joyce? Oh, yes, yes, I'm not denying that. But what I'm saying is, uh, I'm not the only one. See you later. See you later. Scamper? You know, you are a lovely man. You are the best husband anyone's ever had. What's brought this on? The way you are with me, Mum. Oh. I mean, after all the lying she's done and sending you on a wild goose chase after a landlord, you'd have been well within your rights to have thrown her out. I would. Nobody told me. But you didn't. And you ain't gone on the turf. You've been really, really nice. I don't give up. You're going to have me in tears. You will. So it's all judges and lawyers and all the courtroom stuff now, then, is it? Well, not today, no. Apparently it's all very informal. They just sit us down and try to get us to sort it out between us. Oh, well... Which is a nice idea, unless you happen to be up against a woman like Denise, who goes through life taking what she wants and then throwing it away when she's tired of it. Like she's now taking Kelly. Exactly. Well, she did love Daniel. I'm sure she wouldn't do anything to harm him. Ah, well, you see, I think she's doing that already. Well, anyway, both Kevin and I hope it all works out for you. Well, it's very kind of you, and I appreciate it. Oh, go on, yeah. you get that, because okay, I'm going thanks. now. All right. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Tally. Bye. Hello? It's me. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you feeling? Aggressive. Oh, work. No, I'll tell you something. I'm just dreading seeing that woman again. I don't want to come within a mile of her. Well, you're going to have to. Yeah, I know. Hey, listen, I'll be in this evening, if you fancy hearing all about it. I most certainly do. I'll see you about seven o'clock. Is that OK? Morning. 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 Morning oh, just try and stay calm. And I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yeah. See you later. Bye. You do know you've got a certifiable lunatic living in them flats, do you? Oh, with a few. I'm talking about Roy Cropper. I thought you were a fan of his. Oh, not anymore. Do you know, he does nothing without first consulting his Auntie Margaret. Well, nothing wrong with that, of course. Except she's been dead and in her grave these past ten years. Morning, Bill. Morning, love. Um, I've just had a letter from you telling me I've got some tickets to collect. Has Zan gone to work? No, no, not yet. Oh, we've 30 seconds yet. Do you want a drink? No, no, thank you. But I do want to know what you thought you were doing, inviting your dad to involve himself in my affairs. Because you did, didn't you? Well, I uh, told him what was going on, yes. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have. Hello. Hi. You'll be getting sick of the sight of me. No, no, we won't. But you'll have to excuse me, because I've got to get going. Oh, yeah, yeah. You just carry on. Fifteen seconds. What? 
And nothing? So you have to dry clean to pick up on a Christmas tree, but not too large, and make sure it's one of those ones that doesn't shed its needles. Oh, it won't dare. OK? okay. See you later. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bang on. To the second, every day. Cassette chronometer by her. Yeah, well, that's Anne, isn't it? You knew she were like that before you moved in. I suppose I did, yeah. Anyway, you'd no right to tell him, and please, Andy, don't ever do anything like that again. Well, what was I supposed to do, Mum? Nothing. It's my problem. I'll sort it out. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Ingredients for the Christmas pudding, is this? I thought it might be. It should have been mixed a month ago, but I'll do what I can. Well, do as little as you can, will you? Gives me heart burned as Christmas pudding. I've already been used to shop bought. You won't get out of my mind. Hello. Hiya. Uh, I've just been in and picked our tickets up. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. There's some leaflets inside as well. You might want to read them. Oh, I will. Oh, look, my friends are wonderful. <laughs> Are you? Yes. <laughs> anyway, look, I'm going to shoot off. I'll see you tonight, OK? Yeah, right, right. So, yeah. <laughs> so, where is it you're going then? Oh, we're going to Spain, the Costa del Sol. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose you know what you're doing. Look, I know he's been very good helping us out, but I don't want him thinking if he can come round this bar whenever he feels like it. Just tell him. Yeah, but he might, he, he might take offence. So what are you going to do then? Well, look, I think if we keep his eyes open, and if it looks as if he's going to come through, mm. nearest one to flat wedges itself in, you know, something like this, look. Like that. And then he can't get it through. Only don't make it obvious, you know, just look as if you've not noticed him. I don't think I'm as good fit as you. You might squeeze past me. Well, stick your chest out. I've noticed you can do that when you've a man, sir. Um, I'm off now, Vera. Um, I've washed my cloth, so I'll hang them on the line when I go. Oh, thanks, love. Ta-ra, then. See ya. Ta-ra. Here. Yeah. You see, I have told our Jack about Alec. We're not fellas alike. They don't want anybody on their patch, do they? Mm. But I've got to get Alec away from this bar before our Jack comes out of hospital. Different welfare officers have their own way of doing things. I don't know this one. So, if he wants an opening statement, do, do you want me to make that, or do you...? Yeah, I'm quite happy to. Obviously the right place. Uh, hello, I'm Stuart Boswell, representing Miss Osborne. Margaret Dunbar, representing Mr Barlow. How are you? Fine. And Daniel? Very well. But he's not with you? I wasn't going to drag him all this way, no. He's at home with Brian. Morning, everybody. Sorry to keep you waiting. It's, um, Mr Barlow? Yes. And Mrs Osborne? Yes. Good. I'm Mr Phelps and I'm the court welfare officer. So if you'd like to sit down, we'll, uh, we'll make a start, shall we? Mm. Now, I'm sure your solicitors have told you what's involved. All I'd like to add, we're not here to rake up old arguments or to apportion blame. We are here for one reason only, and that's to safeguard the welfare of little... Um, Daniel. Daniel. You have the chance today to sort out Daniel's future between you. If you can't, well then, the court will have to step in. But we hope it won't come to that. So then, Mr Barlow. Yes. You made the initial application for a residence order. Would you like to tell us why? <clears throat> well, yes, yes, it's quite simple. Daniel is my son, and I've been bringing him up on my own for the past year. His mother left in January, and up until a few weeks ago, she'd shown not the slightest interest in whether he was alive or dead. Can I just say... You'll have your opportunity, Mrs Osborne. Do you, uh, you want me to explain what happened? Anything you think is relevant. Well, his mother moved in with me shortly after Daniel was born, and we had what I thought was a good relationship. So good that we were on the verge of getting married. you agree with that? We're not disputing any of that. And then I discovered that she'd been having a long-standing affair with her sister's husband, her brother-in-law. As a result of which? Well, the wedding was off, as you'd expect. She left with her brother-in-law, leaving Daniel with me. And I must stress here that she made not the slightest effort to keep hold of Daniel. She left him. She left me, she just took off. Since when you've been bringing Daniel up on your own? 
Yeah. No, not really. I beg your pardon. What? You've been there every day? Oh, I see, I see. You've I, given up your job? I, uh, I employed a young woman to look after, a woman suitably qualified to look after Daniel while I was at work. Mr. Barlow is a teacher. In fact, a head of department, I think. Yes. And I should point out that we're not talking about him employing a child minder. This young woman was employed solely to care for Daniel on a live-in basis. Which was necessary so that I could earn a living. But this doesn't alter the fact that for one year, I was the only parent that Daniel had, and my home was the only home that he'd had. And then, one evening, when I wasn't there, she suddenly turns up out of the blue and snatches Oh, him. no. I understand you were present. Uh, not to begin with, no. Oh, but shortly afterwards. Well, I got there before they got away, yes, but only because someone phoned to warn me. There was no intention to remove the child of Mr. Barlow's absence. No. Well, it certainly didn't look like that. Anyway, never mind how he was taken or whether or not I was there. You were. I can't think of anything more barbaric than for somebody to turn up after nearly a year of no contact, bundle a small child into a car and drive off with him. Why don't you tell the prison authorities? Well, I don't know how that'll affect Steve, do oh, I? Of course. No, my new policy is to stop panicking and make some inquiries about this fella because, well, all I know up to now is in prison. Right. Which my husband was and my son still is, so I shouldn't take that as a guide to anything, should I? Anyway, I'd best be going or you'll be getting the sack. Oh, I'm more likely to sack him. <laughs> <laughs> Alec, can I have a word with you? Have you got a minute? Uh, yes, certainly. How are you, Liz? I'm fine, thanks, Alec. Just going, actually. Bye. 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 What, too? Uh, what hairstyle do you call that? I'm not right sure. Well, it's easy, I suppose. All she needs to do is stick her fingers in the electric socket of a morning. <laughs> Alec. Do you know anything about this petty cash? Know about it. Where's it gone? Well, how much should there be? We're thirty-five pounds short. Do you keep that drawer locked? Well, not when I'm in the shop. Oh, dear. Well, look, let me sort this out, and then we'll have a think to see if there's not some item of expenditure we haven't forgotten about. Whatever I've done, it's always been for Daniel's benefit. Well, you might not choose to see it that way, but it's true, yes. When I left, I didn't know where I was going, I didn't have a home to go to, so it was for Daniel's sake to protect him from further upset that I left him with you. Was that also why you stayed away for ten months? I stayed away until I had got a home together and until I felt that I could offer Daniel the secure family life that he deserves. Secure for how long? Please. And believe me, it was not easy staying away. It's one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do, and I'm just so relieved that it's over, and now Daniel's with me. And can I say one other thing? Certainly. Well, there's something that Ken conveniently seems to have forgotten. What? You always knew that I'd come back for him. When I left, we both agreed that it would only be temporary. What? We both agreed. But this is a lie. I'm sorry, but this is a bare-faced yes. lie. Yes, all right. We listen to you now, please. I would never have agreed to anything like that. Mrs Osborne is giving us her point of view. That is the only reason that I left Daniel, because you agreed that I could come back for him when I was ready to. And then there's the young woman, Kelly Thompson. Oh, yes. That's the person that Mr Barlow referred to that was employed to look after Daniel. Well, I'm pleased to say that Kelly has now agreed to come and work for me. Because I thought, well, I'm sure that Kelly must have spent more time with Daniel over the past few months than anyone else, so it'll be nice for him if she'll still be there. But uh, can I ask, Miss Thompson's new post is conditional upon you being granted residence? Well, yes. Yes, uh, in that there wouldn't be anybody to look after otherwise. So if Mr Barlow's granted residence, there's no reason why Kelly Thompson can't go back to working for him. Well, that's uh, hypothetical. The fact remains that she is now working for Mrs Osborne. Yes. Until the court reaches its decision, and then I suspect she'll be out on her ear. Oh. Anyway, regardless of uh, Kelly's position, I'm now in a new relationship. Well, actually, it's a revival of a, an old relationship, since I used to be married to this person. Deirdre? Oh, yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Oh, no. So that amuses you, does it? Well, OK, OK, but the point is, I can now reasonably expect to have two people to look after Daniel, whether Kelly's around or not. Oh, so that's your plan, is it? 
You're shacking up with your ex-wife so that you want to bring up my son between you. Well, I would have thought it was a step out from shacking up with your brother-in-law. Please. Please. We're here to consider what's best for Daniel. <laughs> Deirdre. Let me ask each of you, starting with Mr Barlow, what do you believe is the best solution to all this? And I mean, best for Daniel. Well, I think he should be returned to me. And, uh, yes, all right, his mother can see him. I would never have denied her that. But his home is with me. And I think that any child of his age needs his mother, which he now has, and so I'm not asking for any change. Just leave things as they are. What in the name of God do you think, Elizabeth, and say, if I went up there and say, hey, come here, I have a problem here. If a man woman chase me around, won't take no for an answer. Would you mind going to have a wee word with her? I mean, what do you think you should think of that? Not a lot. Come on. <laughs> you haven't been listening to a word I've been saying, William, have you? I have. You have not, so. Hey, your head's cut. You're away in Spain already with Maureen Holdsworth, so we are. We are. All right, that's All right, yeah. Hi, uh, Hello, yeah. Sammy. A couple of pints, please, when you're ready. Our things. Oh, should go round the twist if Jack's not back soon. Really? You've heard the latest, haven't you? No. She wants to know which one of her staff's been nicking from the till. No. Never work for a woman, cos they always give you grief. Just something I heard. Don't believe a word of it myself. Here. I'm glad I've seen you. I want a word. There you go. Your turn for the third degree. Well, I'm not having it. Don't drink that. Why not? Cos we might be leaving. I'll drink it fast. You know I've got that job in the arcade, where I'm up to my ears in money. Well, I have never been a penny out, ever. Here, now, Judy. Yes, Vera. Listen, uh, can you help us out by doing a few hours tonight? Could do. Hey, great. Because I don't want to be short-staffed. don't want to give Alec an excuse to get behind bar again. <laughs> Carry on drinking now, can Since you have failed to come to an agreement, there will have to be a full hearing. In the interim, Daniel shall continue to reside with his mother, while the father shall, of course, be granted reasonable contact. I got a letter from him. What I suppose you might call a love letter. Yeah, well, he fancies you, you know that anyway. I know, I've been scared to death. Steve, we've got to find a way of stopping this. Mum, you hardly even know him. I don't want to know him. I don't want his letters, I don't want his presents, I don't want anything to do with him. What? Look, before you go on, he's been very good to me, his phrase. He's got a lot of influence in here, and he's used that influence to make my life easier. So much easier, in fact, I'm really enjoying it, isn't he? Well, it's... It's all right. You've not got anything to decorate it with. Oh, you didn't tell me that. What, and you got no initiative? Not got a mind of your own? Yeah, because I haven't got any money of my own. <sighs> By the way, what did your mum want this morning? Um. oh, she's still getting aggro off this weirdo that's inside with our Steve. Well, she's always been nice to me, so I'm not saying anything. Yeah, she's always been nice to me. Not really. But really what? The way she dresses. Yeah? No, that's all I'm saying. I think the way she dresses is up to her around, don't you? Yeah, but it's going to get her into trouble, isn't it? Like it has. It's got nothing to do with the way she dresses. It's visiting Steve in prison that's got her into trouble. Anyway, shut up. I don't want to talk about it. OK, Andy, just answer me one question. Would you want me to dress like that when I get to her age? Andy? I'm going for a walk. Well, whilst you're out, would you get some decorations for the tree? Just some tints... ..things. You were the one warning me about him. No, I didn't know him then, did I? But Steve, in looking after you like this, it's so that you'll be on his side, so that you will help him to get to me. Surely you can see that. Yeah, well, that might be one of the reasons, but so what? So what? Well, it might have made your life easier, but think what it's doing to mine. <coughs> no, no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I'm going to have to talk to him, aren't I? Yeah, it's exactly what you should do. You might be surprised to know, you know, he's not just some sort of fuck. No. No. Talk to him. So how do I do that? Can I arrange a visiting order? Or does he have to do it? Well, he's already done it, actually. Well, he knew you were going to come and see him anyway, so... to make things easier, he's put your name down and all you have to do is just say when. Has she said any more about the missing money? No. 
happened, it were never there. You know, like she thought she put it in the till, but she never did. And now she's realised. Yeah, but too embarrassed to admit it. Yes, love. Are you sure you don't mind spending Christmas with Mr. Sugden? Will you stop asking me that? Well, I'm very fond of Percy and I enjoy his company. Whether I'll enjoy his Christmas pudding, well, that's a different matter. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. What can I get you, ladies? Get her what she wants. Hiya. 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 So, how is he? Hey. They've promised to be out for Christmas. Oh, great. Oh, I bet you'd be relieved at that. Oh, I will. But like I said, they didn't say which Christmas. Uh. Oh! Good evening. Hiya. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've just been saying our Jack will be out any day. Oh, I'm very glad to hear it. Yes, very nice. But I've got two strong girls behind the bar. So, I mean, you can see everything's under control. Yes, I suppose it is. A uh, large average. Am I so stupid that I went out with a woman then I lived with her, and I never realised what she was like. You're bound to see her differently now. I mean, she sat there, lying through her teeth. She'd say anything to get Daniel. Anything. And is that what happened? Did she get Daniel? No, the judge ruled that she should keep him for now, until the full hearing. Oh, so there's still a chance, then? Well, I hope so, yeah. And, uh, was it all as you expected? <sighs> oh, pretty much, yeah. We all sat around this table, then I said my piece, she said hers, and then... Would you believe? She actually said that we had agreed between us that she would have Daniel back as soon as she got a new home ready. No. A complete and utter lie, and I'm sure it's a lie she's going to repeat in court. Well, you must find people who definitely heard her say that she was giving Daniel up for good. Yeah, like who? Well, I don't know, Fiona or Kelly, even. Yeah, well, Kelly, certainly, if I could persuade her, but she's changed size, hasn't she? Yeah, I bet Denise made a great play of that, didn't oh, she? Oh, you're not kidding. But I did mention that we were seeing each other and there would be a female influence in his life even without Kelly. But when she said that we had actually agreed between us... I'm sorry, she... um... Do you mean you actually mentioned me by name? Well, not to start with, no, but then, uh, the least guessed who it was, so I thought it didn't matter, you know. But, honestly, to have her sitting there, looking me in the face and lying like that, I mean, it really made me wonder, did I ever know this woman? Hey, what's Gary up to? Uh, watching telly. He says he'll be down later. Oh, he always says that. And if all's asleep, I have to wake him up when I get in. Three eights, please. Ten. Can you collect some glasses, please, Judy? Yeah, in a minute. Now listen, cos uh, there's something I want to tell you. Oh, right. When I got home tonight, I found out a letter. Now that's not going to alter anything. From your wife? It's not going to interfere with our holiday in any way. It is from her, though, is it? Well, look. I wouldn't bother telling you, except I think she might have written to Percy and I wouldn't want you hearing it from him. Hearing what? Come on, tell me. He's dead. Uh, yes, love. All right, yeah. Dear. yeah. Tell me. Well, she's coming over to England at Christmas to stay with her sister, her and Carl. And she wonders if I'd like to take the opportunity to see him again. Well, you must. Except I can't, can I? Because I'm not going to be here. Here's your son, Bill. No, I'm wishing I hadn't told you. Very glad you did. Maureen, we are going to spare. I'll arrange to see Carl some other time. But this Christmas, we are going to spare. I'm not exactly right. sure, really. Oh, oh, excuse me a minute, I think uh, Samantha could do with a hand. Samantha. Yes, sir. Samantha. I'll, I'll do some of them, please. No, 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 no. It's all right, Alec. Um, I don't really think Vera wants you to. Huh? I beg your pardon? Well, it's just something she said, you know. What? Oh, Vera. What? Mr Gilroy was going to give us a hand. Oh! Oh, no. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Alec. I can't do with anybody else behind this bar. This is a change of tune, isn't it? Yeah, but it's I'm responsible, I'm telling People are coming and going, Alan was track, and we've had money missing in the bar from our house. You suspect me? Is that what you're saying? Look, I don't know what to suspect, do I? There's more people this side than there is at other. Right, well, I'll make it easier for you, then. No longer will I never again set foot on that side of the bar. I'll never again set foot inside this public house. going for? Who cares? When are you thinking of coming back? I'm just thinking about going, that's all, just going. Do you know, it's something I always wished I'd done myself. Well, have you a yen for globetrotting then, Derek? Oh, I drive around the world every year, more than. 
and never leave Lancashire. <laughs> Bit of Yorkshire, but Yorkshire's not the world, is it? No matter what they think over there. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. No, uh, send us a card from Pago Pago. Eh? All right, not a bad idea. All Listen, right. will you make me up a Red Cross parcel? See you now. Hello, mate. How you doing, Ronald? I need a word. Well, here I am. About Christmas. Oh, don't tell me. Alex's gone and double booked us. Oh, no, it's uh, bought and paid for. It's booked all right. Oh, well. <sighs> Hang about on this. I don't know how they managed in Alaska. I don't. I don't think they'll ever see it light. <laughs> I've had a card here from your Elaine. It's all right if I mention it. Well, it looks like you have done. Oh, well, uh, I've been bed and slipping out later and you think I've been hiding it from you because she'll be over here for Christmas, you see, staying with her sister in uh, Bristol. Yeah, I know. She, uh, she wrote to me. Oh, there was no need for me to go treading carefully then. Oh, yes, tact was wasted, Percy. She's a right funny ossity, you know, that one in Bristol. Well, I suppose every family has one. Oh, you can say that again. Well, I shan't be going down to see him. I suppose you will, though. You're supposing a lot? You know, she did mention he'll be coming with her. Your, your Carl. She did tell you that, I hope. She also mentioned that Queen Anne was dead. So if you don't mind, I'll tell you what, look. Um, I'll see you in the Rovers at dinner time, eh? Yeah, if you like. About one o'clock, be all right. Okay. Mm. See you, Percy. And thanks a lot. What for? There's another funny oddity. And after all I've put myself through... You've took her the wrong way. I can't have you behind this bar, she said, with money being on me then. Well, I'm just amazed. I mean, to be called a thief like that... She's is. under strain. She's under strain and growing broke, if you ask me. I mean, the two of them together, they've no idea. Him in hospital, she hasn't got a clue. The answer's yes, if the question is, are you confirmed? If the question was, how are we fixed for unconfirming, so we couldn't go for any reason? Uh, the answer's probably no. Only down to anyway. Well, have you got a problem? Well, if we had it. Well, you had the insurance, didn't you? Oh, why? Well, sudden illness requiring hospitalisation, you might have a claim, or if you were to die, well, even that's not cast iron. Well, if uh, one of us couldn't go, could somebody else go? You see, once the airlines issue these tickets, they're what they call untransferable. That means they're not transferable, you see. But it's only somewhat on computer, isn't it? I mean, they could change that, surely. Oh, I mean, no, once you're confirmed. <laughs> I mean, it's written on a tablet of stone, never mind a computer. <laughs> In other words, either I go or I can get nutted. What are you doing here? Is he finally giving you the sign? No, he's uh, giving me the time. If you want me to go with you? Oh, well, uh, there's no point. Well, somebody ought to be with you when they cart you off to the tower, even if it's only to wave goodbye. It shouldn't come to that. Well, if they're out like the benefits mob, are you, um, clear what you're going to tell them? The truth. Well, just make sure I've got the same hymn sheet, won't you? In case they come around asking for me to sing and all. I moved here because things got awkward with the in-laws and I never got round to moving out. I just forgot to mention it to them. Because that's the way things happen. Oops. Mm. Well, I hope they buy it. I don't fancy standing in their dock facing a fraud charge. Well, it's me they'll do, just me. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Make it convincing. Is your mascara waterproof? No, I'd have just said, Ta, very much for all your help, but we don't need any more. Yeah, but you're different. I mean, you always were. Why am I? Well, you're not known for being diplomatic, are you? I'm not. <laughs> Betsy. Look, I speak as I find, that's all. Yeah, well, I wish I were more like mm. you. You see, I try too hard to be diplomatic with mm. people. I beat around the bush. Like telling him you don't want him behind the bar because there's money missing. Look, I didn't say I were good at it. Uh -huh. But I had to say something. It were all but writing his name above door. I was thinking. <laughs> Jack could see him loading it. Oh, don't, Betsy. I've got to think. <laughs> Look, are you sure there's money missing, love? <laughs> Now, listen, I thought the till were down. Yeah. But then I remembered I'd put some money aside. Huh. You know, for Draymond, for Christmas box. Two fivers. But if I did, where is it? Because it weren't there when Draymond came. You're not looking funny ways at me, are you? Don't be daft. Mm. But do you know I go all cold thinking who it could be? What do you mean? <sighs> well, I don't know what I'd do if it were... Trisha and young Jamie. Oh, no, it's never Jamie. Oh, no, no. Oh, aye, so you've said some, have you? No, I never meant that. I'm just pointing finger at nobody. Oh, Betsy, I don't know what I'd do if it were them. 
I do it honestly. That would be me and the human race finished. Do you think I dress tarty? Let's see. And uh, can I rummage through your wardrobe, please? Yeah, what sort of thing are you after? Something to wear to meet a man who I don't want to encourage. And bear in mind where I'm going. Hey, this isn't the fella, is it? <sighs> I've got to face it and I've got to tell him. I'm going. Good for you. To his face. Well, I thought if I could borrow that blue suit you lent me before, you know, nice and business-like. You're in luck. I've just got it back from the cleaners. So can I nip round? I've still got your key. Ah, uh, no, actually, it's a Ken's. Is it? Are you going to chat all day? Uh, well, no, I'll tell you what, I'll chat through my dinner hour instead. Who says it's your dinner hour? Me! Come on, I'll take you round. All right. I'm a cipher in this place. Nothing but a cipher. Dinner time. Oh, no, Mike's given me an hour off for my dinner. It's like workers' liberation. <laughs> Must be Christmas, eh? Oh, hey, you never said. Said what, man? Elaine's over. You'll be looking forward to seeing Carl, won't you? Did anybody say I was going to see him? No, but if he's over, I thought that'd be the idea. Well, one week before Christmas, she deigns to tell me that she's going to be in Bristol. Yeah, but he'll be in Bristol. And he's your son. Well, I don't need reminding. What? You in two minds? I've made other arrangements, Kev. Oh, well, suppose it's up to you. Yeah, Kevin, it is. All the same, I know what I think. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, morning, eh? Uh, 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 do you want some sauce for that? Uh, no, if it's not tasty enough as it is, I'll complain to Betty. Oh, there's not many brave enough to do that. Fearless, you know me. You thought about the flat? Still there? Still empty? I don't know about fearless. Shameless, I grant you. What do you mean? I'm offering you a very nice flat. Oh, why? We both get a bit of accommodation. You have been prejudiced against me. And we all know who by. I think it was something my mother said. Something about sweets and strange men. Oh, you know, I understand. I mean, anybody would. He is your son. If only she'd written sooner. But she wouldn't. That's her all over. Well, maybe it's a last-minute thing, you know, with the sister. Oh, no. She's hoping that I won't be able to make it. Like, I'll have to say, well, I'm sorry, but I've already made arrangements. Which you have? Well, it suits her book entirely. She doesn't really want me to see him. Oh, I don't know. Is he coming over? What's his name? Uh, Wolfgang. Mm. Well, she said we, so I assume he's... Maybe she meant her and Carl. Well, what does it matter? Well, anyway, no Spain. I've got to duck out. But you could still go. Oh, God. Well, you could go with your mother. Or you could go with a friend. People have made plans now, Bill. Including us. Until she chucked this in. <sighs> oh, well. I'm sorry. Now, that really suits you. <laughs> totally off-putting, very drab. Hey, lay off. I just don't look tarty. Oh, practically not at all. Hey, so does this mean that you and Ken... Don't read too much into it. Yeah, but when you're leaving clothes here, you must have at least shared a toothbrush. Once or twice. Well, I've got to read something into that. Oh, I think it was Tracy's wedding. What is it about weddings? It was suddenly like... You knew an awful lot of water had gone under the bridge, but... There you were, the two of you, still standing on that there bridge, and, well, it just... Well, by Ekin, was it? Uh, I suppose it was. It was... <laughs> oh, I don't know. It, it was like something totally new. I mean, I still don't know what to make of it all, but at least it's all right. Well, lucky you. No, I don't mean lucky. Whatever do I Anyway, mean? we're here to sort your problems out. Hey, do you want to borrow a pair of glasses? Don't mind if I'm not laughing. I don't want to see this man.
Now, when we're busy, I don't want to see you chatting to the fellas. Who? That bookie. It wasn't me chatting him. Well, whoever. He's only asked me to move into that flat over there. He didn't like that, one, he? Yeah, well, we'll discuss it another time. I don't need to discuss it. I'm moving into Norman's place. Anyway, he's having an affair with Liz MacDonald. He's not, you know, he's ditched that one. Has he? Well, she's not but trouble, is she? He happen he's noticed. And he has. Mind you, I'd have thought that was what they had in common. It's nice you're not going to jail, any road. Lad, I'm not passing go and collecting £200, either. Yeah. They give you a hard time. Well, uh, civilised. Officers and gentlemen. Didn't Charlie tell him that you'd come down in the world? Yeah, we never even mentioned Charlie. <laughs> I would have. So can we still afford a drink on it, then? Samantha, love when you're ready, please. We're really decorating this Christmas. I hate that loo. Mm. But I've got my mother on my hands, haven't I? Going, like, you know, out of her mind. Well, I can manage on my own if you want to look after your mum. I know you think she exaggerates. She is slightly unstable, Andy. Yeah, well, I think she's got a problem this time, a real problem. But she should go to the authorities, then. She doesn't have a lot of faith in authorities. Well, if she is being threatened, is she putting her faith in us? Cheers, Dan. I just return the balance. That's the way they phrase it. And, uh, yeah, we agreed a date to go back to. Can you do it? Oh, yeah. I can write the cheque. Then we'll be upright, honest and uh, sort of broke. <laughs> back to normal life, then. Mm. That's great we've got a date to go back to. Officially, it's an anniversary. One thing you ought to know. If I were to close my eyes mm. and you disappeared, just say, then what would happen? You'd starve. No, I'd get my pension back. So any time I look less attractive than about 16 grand a year, you're going to walk out on me? Oh, I hadn't looked at it that way, right? It's got to stop, all this nonsense. It's got to stop. You're having me followed, you're having people done over, you're writing me crazy letters. One letter. Long enough for <coughs> ten. People breaking into my home. It's got to stop. How did you know? Sent one. Must have torn up ten. It's hard to say things. Oh, you're saying plenty. And I don't like what you're saying, and I don't like the way you say it. This breaking into your home, what was that about? You know perfectly well. Your friend. He left me a present. He broke in? He got in somehow. Oh, that's bad. And I'm upset if he broke anything. That's not the point. Well, he doesn't mean an ounce of harm. He's only trying to please. I asked him to be there because I know your husband's violent. What's the old thing on the tombstone? He meant well. And what about Sean? Beating him up? Mugging him. <laughs> Meant well then, did it? Well, I'm sorry you think of me when bad things happen. But they do happen when they're nothing to do with me. A case of getting off on the wrong foot, I'm sorry. Look, can we start again? We haven't started at all. Right. Introductions. I'm Fraser. May I call you Liz? You might as well. I don't much care for Mrs. MacDonald. Thank you very much for coming. It means a lot. You don't know. Because I think about you. You don't know me. From the minute I saw you, I knew that was my misfortune. And I'm trying to put it right. Why me? You shine out. And I see it. Away. I hope it never comes, really. Is this for Glasgow? What? Glasgow? You best ask over there. This is Edinburgh. Ah, I keep changing everything around. I 
wish you weren't going. I'll write to you. I've got you a present. Oh, it's lovely. You can stick things on it. I know. I'll send you loads of little charms and you can stick them on. Get away, it's running end. I don't mind telling you, I thought... Well, I thought you were probably a lunatic. What, axe man or something? I don't know. Yeah. Axe man, something like that. Even the judge was nicer than that to me. He called me the perpetrator of an ingenious financial misappropriation. <coughs> My mother cut it out and kept it, like a good review or something. When I apply for a job, I won't know whether to quote him or you. I'll be torn there. <laughs> I never wanted you to be frightened. And I'd love to see you laugh. I'll have to get on. Jimmy, is this your bus for Glasgow? Hey, he's going to Glasgow, eh? For Edinburgh. Is somebody not on? Ah, I know what you mean, son. I'll write to you. Funny girl. You know her, do you? You can see this little Carl another time. I don't want to hear another word about little Carl in case I start seeing Christmas through King Herod's point of view. Well, she's doing to mess us all about, the wife. Some folk are like that. It doesn't matter. We're just a couple of loose ends, and I know you wanted it to be a big romance. No use talking to you. And this loose end is playing second fiddle to an even bigger loose end, and it doesn't matter. Um, you've a card in the window about a job. Oh, yes. Are you interested? Yeah. Well, yeah. I uh, find myself at a loose end. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You're fitting perfectly. The shortest interview in history. Don't mind me, Joyce. I just had to pop out for a minute. Oh, it don't matter. Uh, I'm just getting on. Have you nearly done? Uh, very near. Right. Right. I've got a job. It doesn't pay a lot, but it's a bit of money. And uh, there's no trouble getting there. All oh, right. Where's that, then? Over the road. Only in the shop. Oh, well. At least it's handy. Yeah. Till something better turns up. A shop? I mean, that's a bit of a come down, in it? Oh, it's a bit of a come down, is it? Well, this for an officer's wife. I'm not an officer's wife, I'm an officer's widow. Still a come down. You're a bit of a snob, you, really, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, you never gave a, a word when I helped your granddad out on the market. You know, that's because none of my friends went there. Everyone I know goes in that shop. Didn't know you were a cut above the rest of us. You're either a cut above in this world or you're just one of the plebs. God knows where she gets it. Have you got any objections? No. But then again, why should I? I'm just one of the plebs. You don't? You don't have creme de mint? Well, for once, love, I can say that we don't get much go for it. Oh, it's lovely with brandy. Ugh. No, honest. Our Judy loves it. Ooh. Yeah. Bye. Oh, as if we don't see enough of each other. <laughs> oh, do you know, I wish I could just put a hatch in that wall. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's good to put in there, Sally. Uh, could you split me a 20? Uh, five as if you can. Oh, I think we can, can't we, Mother? Oh. Yeah, there we are. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. Oh, they're a bit crisp as these. Uh, you haven't any old uh, crumpled ones, have you? Are you serious? 
Well, yeah, yeah, if you can. Oh, you're not paying a blackmailer, are you? They like well-used notes, don't they? <laughs> no, no, yeah. I, no. I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> practicing uh, some uh, conjuring tricks, you know, just for fun. <laughs> and the, the, the older ones are better for the uh, ledger domain. <laughs> well, that should do the trick then. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. This will do nicely, thank you. Magic. Ta. <laughs> Hiya. Hey, come in. Is it because I never came to see you all that time? When you had yours? I thought you wasn't showing much interest at the time. Well, you, you never let me know, you... Dad, we're not like that, are we? Those Websters. I thought you would like to see the back of me, to be Let's honest. I'll go through it all, Dad. No. Yeah, yeah. Are you stopping? I'd love a cup of tea. Oh. Why are you stopping? We go. Well, you're stopping for your tea, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm stopping, Kev. Good. Good evening, Joyce. Evening. Are you following me? Oh, I am, Joyce. Oh, well, that makes a change. <laughs> I may be forgetting to pay you this week. <laughs> Why would you do that? Do you uh, recognise that? I'm not playing games. I recognise it. My initials, you see, where I put them this afternoon. <laughs> I told you. If you want to talk to the police about it, I can always get Vera to phone them from the rovers, have They've just come out of the till in that shop, Joyce. What does that prove? Oh, enough. I thought she'll, she'll not have them in her purse five minutes. She'll want to be sure to the feeling. Not a bad psychologist, am I? I've given it back. Spare me that. I've had terrible trouble. You, you don't know. I would have given it back. I, I, I was going... Put it back in the Rovers too, would you? And who knows where else? You had them accusing me, Joyce. People will have to know. Can't do otherwise. But it's a disappointment. Get them curly. Time's running out, you know. Too busy working. Right. Mum said you must be desperate. Sarah. <laughs> so, uh, what, what do you reckon? Four? Five hundred? I'm not that desperate. Two grand, minimum. Two grand? Mum said you must... Uh, do you mind? Two grand? One grand, maximum. All right, and I'm doing you a favour, because you can't take it with you. I can always leave it with Kev. He can flog it for me and send the money on. Oh, listen, if you want all that confusion in your life, Curly, fair enough. Come on, kids. Yeah, not I won't tell you again. I've got to talk to you. We've said it all, Joyce. If you say anything about me, I'll tell them about you. When I clean your flat, you pay me out of Sunliner's money. And you compare that to what you've done to me, do you? You're a thief, Joyce. Now you're trying blackmail. I don't think I got round to sacking you, did I? Well, I'm doing it now. And when your family want to know why you're not working for me anymore, you'll have to tell them, won't you? Or I will. And as I said to me mother, this is the one chance you've got to see Carl. And if you don't, then Carl's going to think that you don't want to see him. Did he wash? Not really. <laughs> So I'm not any mum's good books then, eh? Well, she's disappointed, not annoyed. Blaming Elaine for spoiling our holiday. She's done that all right. Mm. Instead of Malaga, I'm going to Bristol, and you're going nowhere. You wouldn't be seeing your son in Malaga. Of course you would. Never stop shining, even in winter. Mm? Son? Sven? Mm? Why, who's going? 
<laughs> we were, but we had complications. Oh, flights. Christmas is a bad time, isn't it? No, we got the flights, didn't we, Bill? Yeah. Tickets, everything. Oh, give them me, I'll go. <laughs> I'd flog them to you if I could, lad. <laughs> Are you serious? I, I don't know, but I fancy it. Oh, uh, it's £2.90. I thought you got your Judy's mother for Christmas. I have. That's why I fancy it. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, then. You talk to Judy and I'll have another go at Alec Gilroy. That's if you're serious. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I can't promise, cos Judy might bite my head off. Who knows? Uh, Look! Yeah, but Jack but fell off Nicky, the horse, didn't he? Here, so Vera's water. done this as a joke. Although I don't think Jack Man, will see the funny side of it, do you? I don't get it. Oh, you know, look, Jack gets plastered Christmas. most of the time, doesn't he? Hey? Eh? So, well, I don't mean yeah, plastered like this. I, I mean, I think you two are a bit too young to understand. Mum, he's harmless and he's no, not as weird as you make out. I don't think even Vera would send us a room card. He Christmas. probably won't even no, speak. Is that much you know her about? You know, I wish I'd not started any of this. Anyway, can't you go and find I thought that's what Christmas Jesus was all about. No. Oh. No, Mum. Look. I'll when people have a drink at Christmas, they get plastered like this, don't they, right? Bye. Then when you go to hospital with a broken leg or something, then you get plastered like this, don't you? Oh. Mm -hmm. You got it? That was me, ma'am. Objecting to the guest list. She thinks I shouldn't be inviting Roy for Christmas dinner. Oh, it's too late now, it's hard luck. Will Roy get plastered? <laughs> no! <laughs> at least she's glad I'm not inviting Don. Oh, well, I don't think I can face that again. Oh, me neither. Oh. At least there won't be any fighting this year. <laughs> hey, so what was uh, Roy like when he asked him? Oh, he was thrilled. Mm -hmm. Wanted to know what to bring these two for oh Christmas. My. I told him to bring nothing. Ah! <laughs> you're getting nothing for <laughs> Christmas? Enough that he brings himself. <laughs> you're getting nothing. Well, you're getting a car. I might be getting a car. Your dad's still negotiating with Curly. Yeah, and your dad might have negotiated just a little bit better if you'd have kept that little mouth closed, wouldn't it? Do you know? What are you doing? What are you doing? I oh. don't know why we don't all go away oh. for Christmas. Leave me man to row with an empty sure. house. Can someone scratch this? Is anybody listening to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like it an organic, but it's a bit short notice. Why is it? Give us the chance, I'll be off like a shot. Me and you will go then, Joyce. What's got into you? Didn't have two words to say to anyone before he mentioned spit. Oh, do you good, both of you. Yeah, sure. Get away from all that backstabbing that goes on around here. And how are you going to go on on your own? Shut that door and bolt it. Oh, you're having his off. We can't go away on holiday and leave you here. I'm not starved, Judy. The sooner I get Christmas out of the way, the better. No, oh, it's been a lousy year, right enough. Has it? Now you tell me. I meant for your mum. You've not gone and made plans on your own with Alec. He's the last person I'd make plans with. Things I could tell you about that man. He's been ripping sunliners off left, right and centre. He knows I know. That's why he's worried. Well, I hope he's worried enough to give us a deal on the holiday. What's he got to do with him? Well, Bill's seen him to see if he can arrange a transfer. Oh, he's a liar and a cheat. And anyone that gives him the time of day. <laughs> he's a liar, Judy. Vicious and malicious. Have naught to do with him. No surprises, is it? You know what it is. Uh, I'm grateful, Ashley, but you shouldn't have bothered us, mate. Well, do you want me to get you some crackers while I'm out? There's no point of wanting anybody here to pull them. Kind of attitude, is that? Well, you're having Christmas dinner at your mum's and me, well... I'll probably be working. Where will you have your dinner, then? Gail and Martin's? Yeah. The invitation's a long time coming, though. I don't ever feel chuffed or jealous. Kelly going Scotland. I mean, in one way, I don't want to get tied down, but then I think, well, she chose, didn't she? You know, Daniel over me. All women are selfish, Ashley. Kelly reckons this Denise is a bit of a cow. Well, Ken Barlow's bound to tell her that, isn't he? Did you know her? Denise? Yeah. Did you like her? I suppose it took a lot of guts accepting that job far from home, especially working for someone you don't even get on with. Do you mind for ringing New Year's Eve? What? Scotland. No, no, Ashley, I don't want to hear ringing Scotland on that phone. I'm sick of hearing about Denise, OK? Merry Christmas. 2.20, Gary, love. Right, I didn't come in here to bum a drink, you know. Oh, shut it and get it down your neck. Do as the man says. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, Betty, I'm going to go see our chat this afternoon, so will you hang on till I get back? As long as you're not too late, cos I've got shopping to do. Hey, has Alec Gilmore not been in? <laughs> I don't think you'll be seeing Alec not after what you said. No, I never accused him, Betty. Look, Alec's a robber. He's not a thief. There is a difference. 
Callum. Yes, Andrew. Fine was the very word your mother used to me. And did you believe her? Well, she sounded fine on the phone. She sounded dead on. Not a worry in the world. Well, apart from me, that is. Well, it's good of you to call. Cheers, mate. Look, I did it to ease my own conscience. You know, before I go across the water. Hey, Judy says uh, you're on, eh? If we can swing it. Yeah, we are. Come on then, I've got Alec to open up special. Superb. See you, Trish. Where are you off? Spin. Andy, this isn't hanging curtains, is it? Hi, Jim. All right. Uh, no, this is lunchtime. And what are you doing here, anyway? I want a word with Vera. See you, Jim. See you, Annie. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Two of our usuals, please, Samantha. And whatever you're having. Oh, thanks. You're in a very good mood today. Oh, well, he would be, wouldn't he? He's off to a party with his cronies. Business associates, Alma. It's all right for some. Well, you can't be skint if you're in here. All right, just shut up. Mm -hmm. I had this bought for me, if you must know. It's a bit late for all this, isn't it? <laughs> no, girl's right. We can't let Curly go without giving him a do. Yeah, if you could put some food on as well, let me know how much it'll cost. Now, don't worry about the money. I'll do it. <laughs> oh, no, Vera. I wouldn't have asked if I thought that you... you know, I've told you I'll do it. All right, thanks. <laughs> it's not to know about it. It's a surprise. Well, I can keep my trap shut, love. In fact, there's a few secrets we've got to keep to ourselves, isn't there, Betsy? Like what? I mean, apart from the stuff you don't want your Jack to know. No, it's a surprise party for, for Curly. What ah. is it, love? I'll have to let you know, actually. Um, anyway, I've got to go back to work. Uh, yes, and uh, I'm hanging curtains, apparently, so I'll go as well. Oh. See ya. Bye. Bye, love. Hey, it just struck me. You'll be on your own for Christmas, won't you? Yeah, well, yeah, unless somebody invites me for the dinner. Yeah. Mm. What are you looking at? Well, I was just waiting. Oh, it's all right. I would have thought you'd have invited Tricia. Invited me where? Well, here for Christmas, because Vera's going to be on her own. Oh, no, no, you'll have plans. Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, it'd be lovely. Do you mean it? Hey, hey, there's nothing hard and fast about it. It was just a suggestion. Well, you could have fooled me. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, you and Jamie. Oh, ta! You landed on your feet, didn't you? Free drinks, free Christmas dinner. Well, you're invited and all on if you like. I'd be obliged if you didn't bring him with you, though, Scrooge. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Look, you just go off to your party. I'm going to see Audrey. <laughs> You're getting nowhere insulting your customers, Vera. <laughs> Scrooge, I like that. Uh, anyway, listen, love, put the past behind you. We'll have a good Christmas. Oh, I will now. Hey, um, and while you're busy in here, I'll make us lunches. Oh, no. No, you go through it back and put your feet up. But I tell you what, them pigeons could do with a clean out. You know, Jamie doesn't. Oh, of course he will. <laughs> I've had to pull a lot of strings, you know, to make these changes. See, what you've got is your cancellation charge, your transfer charge, and your handling charge. Handling charge? Yes, for handling, the cancellation and the transfer. And, of course, there's the admin, the, the rebooking, the re-accommodating, reprinting. Well, ain't they re-accommodating in with the rebooking? No, well, one's flight and the other's hotel. Do you want bed and breakfast on the aircraft? No. No, oh, well, then shut your trap and let me get on with it. What's the bottom line, Alec? Uh, how much do I get back and how much does Gary have to pay? Yeah, well, that's what I'm trying to work out, isn't it? It's not my fault you're on the last minute. <clears throat> you see, what I'm trying to get after is a reduction in your PPPs, your peak period penalty payments. What's that? Christmas. Very busy time, Christmas. Oh, yes. Bureaucracy can cost you double if you let it. Keep your traveller's cheques in a safe place till you go in. What do you mean? Oh, has she, has she not told you? Uh, Joyce? Oh, have a word with her. Tell her you've been talking to me. What are you saying, Alec? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just, uh, just ask Joyce. <laughs> Stuff, yeah. All right then, here you go. Don't spend it all at once, eh? Thanks, Mr. Brennan. Hi. How much? 50p. Good idea, bringing little Sarah with us. I know. Can't sing, but she gets a sympathy vote. <laughs> Mum said it's because Nana Raji's coming. Nana Raji don't want you. Oh, so that's why I'm not invited, eh? 
Oh, she's having this, uh, this stranger from Calf, though, eh? Yeah. My mum said at least no one will be fighting this year. I wish you were coming. Away. I didn't take anything, Judy. I swear. Alec planted it on me. He had no proof. If he'd have had proof, he would have gone to the police instead of... Start again. He said at first he'd marked the money. Had he or hadn't he? <coughs> no. Well, there's an easy way to find out. Ask him sure, must No, he? no. He, he'd have marked him after, wouldn't he? Well, why would he do that? There's a law against this, you know. Blackening someone's character. You could take him to court. Now, <coughs> what do you want me to do? Do you want me to go around there and have it out with him? No, no. <laughs> He'd only swear black was white, wouldn't he? And say that I was in the wrong. What am I going to do with you? I got myself in a mess. That's all. In a mess. You see, when your back's to the wall, you do daft things. I know that I'm doing it, and I know that I shouldn't, but... He was right about one thing, though. I had to get rid of it. It was dirty money. <laughs> ah, well, I wouldn't worry too much about Alec. What he loses on swings, he always gets back on roundabouts. He screwed me and Bill on that holiday. P, P, P. Was he making it up or what? <laughs> Bill? Um, Donzy wants a word. Well, uh, sit down. No, thanks. Huh? So you go out. I waited for you to come back. I don't believe in taking advantage. Uh, sorry, I was baking. Oh, cooking someone up with you. You're good at that, aren't you? Well, come on, Don. Spit it out, whatever it is. I hey? got your message. Off Sarah. Oh, Sarah? Well, where is she? She's round at Desi's camp in the profits. It's all right. I'll go and get it later. The way in the manger, you want it? Well, how's about dogging the manger, eh? Sending a kiddie because you haven't got the guts yourself. Don, I, I don't know what you're on about. Christmas! Here! Did I say I wanted to come? Hey, past year, past years, I've come because you've asked me, because it's family, because it's expected. What she said? But I'll tell you truthful, girl. It was more of a duty than a pleasure. Sitting here, waiting for your mother to get her digs in. Oh, well, you won't be disappointed then, will you, Don? Hey? At least there won't be any fighting. That's what you said, isn't it, girl? Oh. Well, when did I fight? Hey, go on, tell me. Look, Don. Please understand. Me mum's got to be here. She's me mother. Look, we've got to have it peaceful for the kids' sake. Oh, does your mother? Of course she is. Roy Cropper. What relation is he then, eh? Another long lost brother all the way from Canada? Ah, stick it! I won't come near even if you beg me. Do you know, is it me or have we jumped a generation, eh? Sarah's big gob, and she's got that from your mother, you know. Right, I've just finished so I can pop over, yeah. Not changed your mind, have you? Yeah, Betty's still here, then, is she? Yeah, she's just brewed up. No, no, no. I was talking to Vera. Hiya. Hello, oh, how is he? Hey, it's coming okay. out of Christmas. Oh, oh that's good luck, Bye. isn't it? Yeah, well, it is if folk keep the trap shut. You know about Alec Gilroy? What bit your money, you mean? Look less of it, Betty. We've got to keep Alec away from him somehow. Well, he could always drop some on Alec's head, put him into hospital as Jack comes out. Yeah, that's hilarious, that <laughs> is. Yeah, and you can keep it buttoned and all. Yeah, Jack's coming out for Christmas. Oh. So there's got to be no mention of Alec Gilroy behind that bar. Who's Alec Gilroy? You see, Betty, that's the kind of loyalty I expect. Mm. Right, I'm off to see Curly. Right. He's uh, not backed out of renting, has he? No. Why? Hmm. Yeah, you were open here. Had. You love to see folk in lumber. Oh, I resent that, Vera. Yeah, now listen, don't let on about the do. It's a surprise. All right, I won't. I'll see you later. True, the secrets I've had to keep while working here. I could get into MR5 with my qualifications. So, another one won't come amiss, will it? Look, 
Jack's still got to lie flat, has he? You know, like a board. Yeah, for now, yeah. Oh, well. Problem solved, eh? Just slide him under the bed. Eleven hundred. Thirteen fifty. Eleven fifty. Oh, come on, Martin. You're supposed to be a mate. Yeah, and so are you, Curly. It's not very mate to keep upping the price, is it, eh? You keep upping it, I keep lowering it. Well, can't you just lower it a bit further for a mate, eh? Hang on a minute. Eh? <clears throat> Hiya, Hi. coming. What's the panic? I'm on my lunch break. I've got to get back. There's loads of loose ends that need tying up, and I'm running out of time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, i got stuff to pack up as well, you know. Well, me and my alleged friend here have got to try to tie up a loose end. Alleged friend. Now, where friend. were we? 1100. You never even take away the first number you think of you, do you? You just stick with it. Mm. Sorry, but I've got things to do. 1200. Done. What? Well, go on, you've done me, but I'll cough up. Put it there. You, you know how you can leave here with a clear conscience, I'll never know. Hey, Cash, don't All forget. Right. Sit down, Samantha. This won't take long. Mm, better not. Do I look frazzled to you? Mm, no more than usual. You know, the sooner I get away from this place, the better. I could not stand another Christmas in that supermarket. Lemmings! That's what they are. Lemmings! All going over a cliff with trolleys full of grub. Curly, is that what you brought them round to tell me? And they say the same things to each other. Have you done it all yet? No, I've still got to get the veg. I don't know why they don't just tape last Christmas and play it back. Like I said, I've still got the lemming run to do. You know my assistant, I'm alone. Yeah, she called in earlier. What, she called in the Rovers? No, sorry, I've made a mistake. Um, Anne, yeah, I know her. Yeah, well, it was her idea to put this, uh, this renting thing on a proper basis. You know, contracts, uh, legal tenancy, etc., etc., etc. Oh, et cetera. this Anne's certainly looking after you, isn't she? Uh, both of us. Not only does it protect me, it protects you as well. I mean, I would have thought of it eventually. I mean, you've got to have a bit of a business brain, haven't you, in the job I do? Oh, I know. I mean, that deal you just made with Martin, that was brilliant. Exactly. Now, this is what I propose. And he's getting the uh, appropriate paperwork together, and he should be able to sign it uh, tomorrow at the latest. I'm asking £400 a month. Three. I'm telling you, it was that long. <laughs> <laughs> Were you waffling to me dad earlier, or did you mean it? About this Anderson bloke who told him everything was all right, didn't you? It is. All the same to him if it hadn't been. Well, you see, now I'm confused, Mum. One minute, well, you're scared out your wits, and the next minute you're as chirpy as I've ever seen you. Fear of the unknown. Once I'd had a chat with Fraser, I felt better. Oh, Fraser, is it? Buzzing buddies. They had nothing to do with it, did they, beating up Sean Skinner? No, he didn't. He told me, and I believe him. <laughs> Uh, look, Andy, I'm really busy. I've got to get on. I'll ring you later. All right. That was my son, in case you're curious. Good-looking lad. Runs in the family. What are you giving me this time? Round-the-world trip on Concord? An apology. If you'll accept it. If you don't. I'm cat's meat. So there's this house station laying on the kitchen floor right where the vet had left it. The only thing was they hadn't left the neighbours a key. And the kitchen window was only open that far. <laughs> so I squeezed through it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I could in those days. <laughs> now the problem was to get this dog out so that nobody could bury it, right? It's as stiff as a ball by this time. So I started threading through the window, feet first. <laughs> Seems I've been upsetting you and uh, words got back to me that I've got to make amends. You were more than upsetting me. I've been terrified. Yeah, well, that was never the intention. I meant well. And I'm apologising. Apology accepted. Now get out of my bar. Thanks. Because uh, you need to go slack. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh right, sir. <laughs> Gotta go, Jets. Have a happy Christmas, Monk. Oh, good luck with the mistletoe. <laughs> Oh, it's you, is it? Yeah. I don't want to go straight home. I'm going to go to Alps. Big well, Alps. have you asked the artist's permission? What? Mrs. OBE controls my movements, didn't you know? Some places I'm not welcome. Oh, look, just, just drive your car. You're not listening to me, are you? 
I'm saying that I'm not popular where you're going. You're not popular anywhere, Dom, but you've got a living to make. Yeah, and that's pretty tough after what you did to me. Oh, so all you're going to be a ganging up on you, are we? Why don't you write to your three? Yeah, you're not going to move now. You get a little Look, you won't even see all you wait outside, don't you? Outside, yeah. I'm outside with my grandkids because of her. Have you gone raving mad or yeah. what? Not half as mad as I can be, mate. For two pins, I'd stuff that big fat cigar down your big fat gob. Excuse me, sir. You having trouble with this fella? You wouldn't chuck him. Uh, he's just driving me home now. Come on, Don. Chop, chop. Hold on, sir. Someone stinks like a brewery. Well, it's me, innit? That's why I'm getting a cab if you're me. Not in my cab, you're not. And you're a favourite in my book, pal. Get a bag, tough. I think our friend here has won something. You got to have a reason. For stopping me. Suspected breach of the peace. Arguing with Rockefeller here. Will that do for starters? Now come on. Well, I, I, come on. I, I, come and sit in the back of our car. What? I'll look after you. Yeah, Where did I put the camera? It's around your neck. Well, what if you get stuck in the airport? You're not going to want to pay airport prices. I'll go and get a couple of pies. I won't be in it. Come on, Skip. I've been thinking. So have I. What's she going to pinch while we're away? It's not going to help talking like that. I think we ought to lend her some money. And you buy. To pay off her debt, so she'll end up in court. Well, I'll teach her a lesson. That's what she deserves. Yeah, maybe. But she'll still have to pay off what she owes. And while ever she's in debt, the temptation will always be there. And I don't want her stealing again. I think we ought to give her a chance. How much are we talking about here? 450 back rent for starters. 450 quid? It'd be a loan. She'll pay us back. What, with her for him? We have got it in building society. Oh, we have, have we? You mean I have? That's what I got for me bike. Please, Gary. All right. On two conditions. One, I pay a landlord direct. She doesn't see it. And what's the other? As soon as we get back, she finds herself another billet. A friend of my uncle Fred's here was well over. He was on a scooter, but he fell off. He said he was six times over at limit and he got off. He can't have done. He did. He said he was a fire eater on the way home from rehearsal. Well, I'm not a fire eater, am I? Neither was he. He just said he was. There was someone else that got off because cop weren't wearing that. You see, when they stop you, you've got to be in full uniform. Anyway, he forgot to put his hat on it, fella got off. Well, this one was in full uniform. I tested positive both times. They've got me. Bang to rights. It's bad luck, is that? It's more than bad luck. I've lost my job. Oh, aye. It's tough, though, losing your job. My mum says I've got to stop at hers tonight. I was fancying going for a drink, but she's not that on head. Glass of tonic wine, that'll be my lot. Aunt Telly's got to be off by 12, even if it's halfway through film. She says neighbours will complain. I'm in two minds about the old business. Well, at least I'm my old man here. We could have a card school. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, uh, don't change your plans on my account. I'll probably be working. They're not taking your licence off you? Well, not to go, go to court, no. Uh, I might as well work flat out, eh? Uh, well, I've still got a job. Right, then. Well, I wish you all your wish yourself. Oh. I'll see you Boxing Day. Uh. When's your Jack coming home? Uh, as soon as Doctor's done his rounds. Mm. Oh, is he better, then? Well, he's better than he was, but they've told him he's got to sleep on a board. Ma said all like that for six months, you know, after his accident. I never got any sleep. He finished up on the floor in the spare room. Well, he's not sleeping with me. He can't get up the stairs. Where's he <laughs> going, then? In here. I borrowed one of them put me up beds, you know, from Sally Webster. Oh, and by the way, our Jack and Alec Gilroy, they've never got on, you know, have the better. Oh, I used to treat him like a dog's body. <clears throat> not just Jack. Well, he said you were like old Mother Hubbard. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> he used to call your Jack worse. So anyway, it was the best day of our Jack's life, you know, when Alec Gilroy found out we'd took the pub and he was just a customer. And that's the way our Jack wants it to stay. So it best not say otherwise, right? Do you get my meaning? What are you on about? Well, uh, Alec helping out while he's been in hospital. I'd rather it weren't mentioned. And no wild parties. Hey, no parties at all. At all, at all. Oh. Oh, hey. What are you looking at? Checking out. Listen, any more denser scratches, we renegotiate. I'm practically giving it to you. What with a month's MOT? It'll sail through. Yeah, well, let's see what Kev says, eh? Oi! 
And while I think on it, he says if you can get it to him by four o'clock, he'll start on it straight away. All right. Yeah. So, drive carefully. Oh, yeah. See you later. So what happened then? You know very well what happened. Oh, down the cop shop. You can guess, can't you? That's hard, that. Like. Still, I know one thing, they won't get me. I'm going to be extra careful from now on. Oh, well, so long as some good's come out of it. Mind you, I always am. That's why I take a taxi. Oh, the lake's the same place we went last year. <laughs> Missy wants the knee. Oh, well, we just have to see you, won't we? <laughs> there is, I can see my knee. Go oh. <laughs> on, then, go and put them under the tree. Whoa, be careful with them, they're so heavy. <laughs> Did you hear about Don? Any problems with the holidays, just let me know. What kind of problems? Oh, well, there won't be, but if there are... It has been built, this hotel. You've nothing to worry about. Hasta la vista. Ma'am, passes me coat. Ma'am. Is it true you've been breathalyzed? Ask Baldwin. He's down to tell everybody. Was it positive? Ooh, tough. What's that? When was this? Last night. How do we always get to drive? He said it was last night. Yeah, but it stays in your blood, doesn't it? Well, the police don't let you go until you're sober. How do you know he had a drink this morning? I am not getting in this cab with him. Are you kidding? No, I am not. I don't care whether we miss the plane. No way. What is going on? I don't believe her. I... I'm going inside while you two sort this out. Sorry about this, Dom, but... Change, love. Oh, Ali! Can I have a word? Hey, listen, I feel dreadful about other day, you know what I mean? I hope we didn't get into your head that I thought it were you. Look, I don't want to discuss the matter, really. Oh, thanks, love. Because there's something else that I hope we don't have to discuss, you know. Oh, what a good do. Are you booked, mate? No, mate. Can you take us to the airport? Yeah, I'll be Superb. Hang on there, will you? Someone will say something. I mean, they're sure to. Oh, well, I'm praying they don't. Well, as you wish. You'll not hear it from my lips. Though what I'm supposed to have done, heaven knows. Don't blame me. You should have more sense. You can't be dead embarrassing. You know how touchy he is. Yeah, I shouldn't go drinking and driving then, should I? Cheers, mate. Well, I'm stopping the hotel. I don't want to show myself up. Hope everything goes all right. Yeah. Well, look, uh, I'll be back Christmas night, and I'll make it up to you, Maureen. Mm. And, well, you know I'd rather be here, don't you? If you've got a chance to see Carl, then that's what you must do. I'll tell you what. We'll blow the holiday money on a really good night, are we? If you like, but there's no need. You just get yourself back here in one piece and come here. <laughs> Oh. Hey, steady on. Oh. It's hard enough getting away as it is. You'll enjoy seeing Carl. Yeah. It's Elaine I'm worried about. I'll see you. See you. Yeah. yeah, but I don't get it. Oh, it goes back years, love. I mean, Jack was a cellar man. Alec Gilroy was a landlord. So? So the tables are turned. Alec Gilroy's not the cellar man. And, and no, but, well, we haven't got one now in any case. No, not as such. We all have to muck in. <laughs> all them years, Jack made out that he was the only one who understood the cellar work. <laughs> it makes you laugh, doesn't it? <laughs> Mind you, Gilroy did sort out the gas last week. Yeah, and that trouble we had with the bitter. Yes, well, if you want a nice, quiet Christmas, you should keep that thought to yourself. <laughs> And don't mention the Irish night. Yeah, yes, love. Can you open your up somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy, yeah, easy, yeah. Where do you want to be, Phil? Hey, probably oh, this oh, flaming oh, bar oh, up oh, with a pint to be on. Yeah. Oh. Do you think you should be having a lie down in bar? Do you realise how long I've waited for this? Trisha, moment? get this man a pint, double quick. Bitter, is it? Right. On me. What's she doing behind the bar? I oh, didn't Vera tell you. I'm working here now. Since when? Uh, well, it's a long story. I'll tell you later. Yeah, and guess what? 
We're stopping here for Christmas, me and Jamie. <laughs> what? Yeah, I think somebody should get him a large brandy. <laughs> Trisha Love, when you go and help Betty in the kitchen. Alright. So Baldwin gives her the elbow. Before she can say P45, you've give her a job. A free board and lodging. Look, it were only for Christmas. Then we have fancy company. You got company me. Well, I didn't know, did ya? About you coming out, they sprung it on me. Oh, do you know, I'm so sorry for spoiling your plans, aren't I? But I didn't say that. Why do you twist everything? Anyway, I'm setting on full time, just a few hours, just to tidy it over. How long for? Since she's had the baby. What then? You know, you're soft in the head. This is not a charity, we can't afford it. I suppose I'm lucky having a business to come back to, isn't it? Right, what else have you been up to? Nothing. And if you must know, the takings were up last week. Oh, aye. Right. Well, look at the books. Ask Andy. I suppose the ale's been tasting better while I've been away and all, has it? And what's that supposed to mean? Martin, lad. Oh, over here. Now, yeah. be honest. Now, you're a man who knows his ale and speaks his mind. Tell me, have you noticed any difference in the ale while I've been away? Nope. No, no, no. Come on, come on, think. I mean, has, has, has it sometimes been a bit, been a bit flat? Has it sometimes been a bit cloudy? Have you, have you noticed any floaters in it? You know. No, it's been fine. Oh, no, come on, you're being loyal to her, aren't you? Now, be honest. Straight up, Jack. It's been fine. You've just sucked two pints and said no. Oh, I'm just going to be taste bud back. I've, I've only just been dehospitalised, haven't I? Musty. You well, see. I can honestly tell you, while you've been away, I've not had a bad pint. All right. Would it amaze you if I told you my mum had been talking to Fraser Henderson? Is he out? No. She went to see him in prison. She's mad. Anyway, it turns out he had nothing to do with you being beat up. <laughs> and you know that because uh, that's what you told her? Ah, it's not his thing, apparently. Fraud, that's what he's in for. Some sort of little fiddle. Oh, I see. Well, it couldn't have been him. It must have been uh, someone else. I don't know the guy, Sean. I don't know anything about him, but my mum's been to see him. And she reckons he's being straight with her. Come on, sit down a minute. I'm a bookie, Andy. That's my job. I keep my nose clean, I pay my taxes, and despite Frankie de Tory, I manage to earn a living. I stay on the right side of the law. But occasionally, punters, they try and get out of paying what they owe me. If I let them get away with that, I'll be out of a business. Now, I know people that can persuade them to pay up. I know people, right? The sort of people that know Fraser Henderson. Forget what he's in for. That's immaterial. It was him that set the gorillas on me the other night, no question. Ah, these muggings every night of the week. Not the sort we're talking about. Oh, yeah? Why? What was so special about yours? Well, I had nearly two grand in cash on me. So how come they didn't take it? Oh, you ducky. Put it through and then lick it. Oh, all right. We're doing well, aren't we? Hey, that's very good. Right across the road. Hey. I'll get it. Oh, yeah, I wonder who it is. Santa! <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a bit early for Santa, sweetheart. It's only just been leaving Iceland. Mind you, I hope he's a more careful driver than Grandad Alf, otherwise he'll lose his licence. Yeah, very all. funny. Yeah, very funny. So you've heard, then, eh? Oh, d I was actually talking about Father Christmas stuff. I was, wasn't I? Actually, she was, yes. yes. Yeah, yes, well, she was. I've just come to deliver these, that's all. Is he one for me? Is he one for Aye. me? He's one for you, oh. definitely. <laughs> I know what it is. Yeah, well, I bet you don't, do you? <laughs> I, yeah. I do. And, uh, check the neck. Oh, thanks, Don. Yeah, if you're following him, give him my best, will you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cheers. Listen, uh, by the way, uh, well, we were sorry to hear about what happened last night. Ah, oh, well, it's just one of them things, isn't it? Can't be helped, eh? Hi. Listen, Sarah, why don't you show Brandad that calendar you made, eh? Calendar? Oh. Oh, yeah, it's calendar. Calendar? No, I don't. 
awful now. What are we supposed to do then? Well, is one more for Christmas dinner going to make that oh. much difference? You know, yeah, all right, if it makes you happy. No, I didn't say it make me happy. Oh, less guilty, maybe. Hmm? <laughs> uh, Don, can we clear up this bad feeling about tomorrow? Yeah, can we not start from square one again? Hmm? We'd like you to come for your Christmas dinner. Please, say you'll come. You must be joking. I'd rather starve. Hey, Don! You knew I'd say that, didn't you? That's why you asked me, cos you knew I wouldn't come. That... That is, is not fair, that ain't. I've come here with presents for the kids, and I wasn't going to talk about Christmas dinner, but you have to provoke me, don't you? Right in front of the kids. Well, I think that is a dirty trick, and I will not forgive you. Merry Christmas to you and all. No, leave it. Hey, who wants a chocolate furry? Me! I think I do, Ash. Can you give me one, please? Don! Go on. Oh, I give up, I do! Um, I've given Kevin the car keys and there's no dents, all scratches. To be quite honest with you, Curly, I couldn't give a toss. All right, here you are. You'll find it's all there. Thanks. Yeah. Peace on Earth and mercy miles. You can tell your daddy about the car today. Look good, won't it? Hi, Curly. Hey, you've sold your car. Hi, Dan. She was so mine, I know. Why's that? If you didn't know. Oh, by the way, Jack, thanks for the card. It's all right, son, I'll be here, son. Get plastered with Jack and Vera this Christmas. The look on your face, brilliant. You what? Have you not seen it? Thanks. <clears throat> I gather you didn't say out to Vera. You know she accused me. It won't happen again. No, well, it better not. Otherwise, the world will know, and that's a promise. Let me make it up to you. What are you doing tomorrow? Zilch. Well, you're on your own. I could come and cook your dinner. Thanks, but no. I'm on my own by choice. That's not right. Oh, don't you believe it. Unlike millions of other folk, I shall not be obliged to force a smile when some tiresome idiot comes up and tells me what's black and white and red all over. A newspaper? Exactly. Nor will I be told I've drunk too much or too little. In fact, I shall have a wonderful time. Sound a right misery. How do they work? Is it, um, oh. hey, is it all right if I go and get Jim from his pals? He's really looking forward to Christmas. We both are. It's going to be brilliant. Come on. Oh, ta. Fear! I'm coming! I'll see to it, V. Right, well, these pants go under mattress and bedding's in airing cupboard. Fear! Oh, shut up! What? Tricia, she made any attempt to sign on. What you about? Down the social. She should be claiming off them, not us. Well, I don't know. Look, and why can't she not stay at her own place over Christmas? Well, instead of... Because she's family. She is not family. Look, that bump in her belly is our grandchild. There is still no reason why we should keep her. First thing in the morning, down the social and get some money off them. We shall have a job, though. It's not open. <laughs> Look, he knows what he's talking about. But it's only hearsay. He got his head kicked in. And they didn't take any money? No. Well, Fraser swears blind he knows nothing about it. Well, what else is he going to say, Mum? I don't know what to believe. You know he's trouble. So stop fooling yourself. He's dangerous, Mum. You want to stay well away from him. Oh, well, that's easy for you to say. I feel like he's watching me all the time, even though he's inside. Well, how much more proof do you need, then? Excuse me.
Our friend wants me to do something for him. <laughs> He'd uh, do it himself, but uh, he won't understand. What? Take you shopping on Boxing Day. Choose yourself a present. No, I can't accept anything like that. Whatever you want. A piece of jewellery, some dresses. No. Tell him I'm very flattered, but I don't want to get involved. I'm just getting over a divorce. He understands all that. Well, will you please pass that on to him? I don't want any presents, not even a bar of chocolate. What about the thousand pounds? You accepted that? No, I did not. That money is in a building society account and I have not touched one penny of it. You'll be disappointed. Please, for my sake, please make him understand. I'll try. But he doesn't like to take no for an answer. You've had a bit of a run on Guinness, see ya? Oh, have we? Ah, you've ordered extra keg, look there. Oh, ah, some Irish fellas come in. You know, they've been laying cables. Anyway, you should be pleased. I'm pleased. Well, you don't sound it. Just a bit surprised, that's all. You know your trouble? You underestimate yourself. The only reason this pub's done so well is because you left it in such good shape when you went in hospital. It's true, that's true enough, I. <laughs> and another thing, you've trained the bar staff that well, but well, they can manage without us, or else I don't know what I'd have done. Ah, we're forgetting that. Are you happy now? Oh, welcome home. I've missed you. Samantha, ring for time, will you, love? Drink up, please. Hey, are you going to sign this or what? Oh, Curly, it just seems so legal. It's for your benefit as well as mine, you know. Can't we just trust each other? Leave off. I'll be on the other side of the world. So you don't trust me? Of course I do. Oh, if it makes you any happier. Cheers, bud. Yeah, go on in. <laughs> uh, sorry, son, she just rang time. Is the landlord in? Who's asking? Mick, one of the musicians, tell him. I am listening, Mick. No, it's, it's Alec Gilroy I wanted. Ah, oh, you, you're a bit out of date. Last time Alec Gilroy was landlord here was about four years ago. Who are you, trying to kid? You should have been here a fortnight ago for his Irish night. <laughs> What a hell of a night that was. Vera! I won't be a minute. Does Jack want to go to bed? Yeah. Right. Wait a sec. There we go. Night night. Good night, night love. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Right. What's been going on? Nothing. A bloke walks in here and tells me I'm not the landlord, that Gilroy's been running the place, and you tell me there's no been going on. Look, it's not been running place. Look, that fella must have been drunk. Yeah, well, he must have sucked enough at Alec Gilroy's Irish night, mustn't he? Best night he had in years, he reckoned. You never mentioned it. No, because... So what else are you keeping quiet Nothing. about? Nothing. I don't believe you. Same when we start putting the kids' presents out. <laughs> 
I start to get excited. <laughs> oh, so do I. Don't get me wrong. But... Now, I love it Christmas morning. The kids tearing all the presents open. Uh, hang on. What's that? It's a car horn. Well, who's playing silly beggars this time and I? They're going to have the kids up. Oh. If they wake up and come down now, we'll never get them back to bed again. You can forget bed tonight. Right. I'm going to go and sort it out, whoever it is. What the...? Kev? Is that you? Yeah. It's all that noise. Oh, no. It's coming from your garage. Yeah. I think you've been dumped. I think they're still in there, mate. You going for the bed back up? Yeah, yeah. Full stop. Back call, lads! Oh, God almighty! Hey, 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 hey. Come on, let's get him out! Get him out! <coughs> I don't know! Get all of his feet! Get him out! Come on! Come on, lads! Come on! Come on, lads! Speak! Get out! Come on! Get get him on the Get him on the Get him on the Get him on the Get him Get him on the 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 Get on the Get him on the Get him Get him on Get Get him on Right, look, we'll walk him as long as we're there. Yeah. Just to get that air inside him. But we've got to get him out of this cold. Otherwise, he's going to freeze to death. Yeah, it's all the flaming round. Do you know what time it is? Uh, yeah, sorry about that, Ali. Uh, is that Don Brennan? Yeah, we just found him yeah, in the garage. Yeah, he's, he's just had uh, one or two drinks, you know, with being Christmas. Yeah. Go look after him, it's all right. Disgusting. If he couldn't hold it, he shouldn't <laughs> suffer it. That's a public nuisance. <laughs> yeah, right. And Merry yeah. Christmas to you all. Alec Gilroy. Of all the people you could have had behind my bar, Alec Gilroy. Oh, give it a rest. Give it a rest. I've done now about resting that flaming hospital. Alec Gilroy, why, Alec Gilroy, why? Because he knows the trade. Anyway, he was the only one that offered. Oh, I bet he did, Gilroy. I. He liked now better than to get his fat, scheming little body in behind my bar and his fat, scheming, sticky little fingers in my till. Look, I don't know why you're getting all worked up. I needed help to run the bar. And he offered, so I took him up on it, just for the time being. You never mentioned it, did you? Whenever you come up to the hospital, you just sat there eating me grapes. You didn't... You never mentioned out about Alec Gilroy doing you a kindness. No, because I knew you'd get naughty, that's why. This was his little empire, this. By the gods, he like it back. Do you not understand? Do you know all this palaver? And all the fella did was pull a few pints. All oh, right, what else did he try and pull it? What do you mean? You know what I mean. As soon as I'm out of the way, he's round here like a rat up a drain pipe. And a wheedle his way round you, eh? And he did try it on, didn't he? Now, come on, tell me. I want to know what happened. I want to know what was going on between you two. Come on, come on, we're here, we're here, we're here. What's happened? Gail, just go get a coat, will you? Has he had an accident? No, there's been no accident about it. He's only tried killing himself, oh. Annie. In Kevin's garage. Just go and get the coat. That was the car home we could hear. He's passed out and he's fallen on it. Come on, come on, come on, oh. come on. I mean, if he hadn't. Oh, go, don't. go on, just get it round here. Well, come on, then. Just get it round You don't need me anymore, I'll get, get back. Sally will be worried. There you go. Uh, yeah, 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 okay, you get on, mate, sir. We'll look oh. after this fella. See you then. See you, Don. There you go. There you go. See you. Right, uh, ring an ambulance, Gail. No, I'm not going to. Don! Don! Look, look, you've got to go to hospital. All right. What for? Don, because I say you've got to go. Okay. And when the ambulance guys get here, they'll have some oxygen. And oxygen's what you need right now. It's up to okay. me, Nicky. It's my life. Oh, Come on, Don, get a grip, eh? Hey? We just want to help you. But you should have left me. <laughs> What the hell did you stop me for? If you really want to know, we didn't want to wake the kids, all right. And come to mention it, we still don't. Because you don't want to upset the kids, do you, Don? Hey? Oh, gee. I don't believe this. All right, OK. If you won't go to hospital, we'll just have to sit down and talk about things. Hey? 
Let's just talk about things. When I went in hospital lying in my sick bed, where was Gilroy lying, eh? What are you getting at? Chucking out time. I bet you didn't chuck him out, did you? Hey, I bet we were in here chatting you up, working his fluence on you. You know something, I love it when you're jealous. Jealous? I'm not jealous, woman. I'm trying to stop you making a damn fool of yourself. You are jealous. You hear any man fancy me. It's not you he fancies, it's the pub. He's got born for it. That's why he was chasing Bet Lynch. That's why he's snipping round you. He wouldn't look at you twice if you were stood the wrong side of the bar. Yeah, well, that's all you know. I'll tell you something, there's a lot of fellas coming here fancy me. They fancy a free pint. Well, they don't. They fancy me. Well, the next time one comes in, point him out to me, will you? Why? What will you do? Kick his guide, Doug. So tell me why, Doug. I just don't understand how you could do such a thing. Still here. Yeah. Well, I do, that's all that matters. Look, I know you've had a tough time lately, really Doug. That's what you call it, is it? I've lost the garage. I've lost what money I had. I've lost Josie. And now I'm going to lose my driving licence, so that's my livelihood gone. What? What's the point, eh? What's left? I mean, nothing, only living. And I've had a belly full of that. Oh, Tom. Tom, you. You'll feel different in the morning. You will. You'll wake up. You'll be glad that Martin and Kevin saved your life. No, I won't. You shouldn't have bothered. Especially Kevin Webster. So, uh, that's why you chose the garage. So Kevin would find you in the morning. Hmm? I'd teach him. You'd be sorry then. It matter. I'm going home. You're going nowhere, Don. You try and stop me. You can't. You can't stop me. You can't make me stop here any more than you could make me go to hospital. I will, Don. If I have to. I'll ring the police. They'll put you in a cell for the night. They'll take your belt off you and your shoelaces. Oh, come on, Don. I know things are bad. I know your life's in a mess. But I thought you had guts. Well, I've got something for you to wear. Uh, now, close your eyes. Who do you think my name is, Arthur? Oh, come on. I won't do anything honest. Come on, do you want your Christmas present or not? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's a parrot for your clutch. Not John Silver. Short Jack Duckworth. <laughs> Ha 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 ha! Ha them dice will be the lucky ones! Ah, Jack! Happy Christmas! You're alright, Alf. Happy Christmas! Well, what's all the fuss? Why do we have to meet you here before coming to your house? Well, uh, Don Brennan's over at our house. Oh, well, that's Christmas Day. Well, no, no, 
I thought I'd better warn you. Um, well, last night he tried doing himself in, didn't he? Oh, not. Yeah, yeah, me and Kevin found him, just in time, mate. So we took him back to our house. Uh, well, we kept him there, obviously. Well, we can't let him out of our sight, can we? I've been over to his house, I've got a change of clothes, and he's back at our house. Oh, I see. That's one way of getting yourself a Christmas invite, I suppose. Audrey, don't start. So anyway, I just thought I'd tell you so we don't end up saying something we shouldn't. You yeah, know. right, love. Yeah, we won't. Right. Will we, love? Right. Come on. Hi. Do you want to have a gin and tonic? Can we have a gin and tonic? Well, this is very nice, Percy. Isn't it nice, Maureen's? It's lovely. Yes, well, you have to know what you're doing with a goose, you know. Aye, uh, they're a very fatty bird. Full of flavour, though. Mmm, that's where the flavour comes from. No fat, no flavour. Well, I bet the Queen herself is not sat down to a nicer Christmas dinner. I know one thing, Mrs Bishop won't be doing so well at her sister's. Would you like some more of the bird, Mrs Oldsworth? Go on, have some. Uh, oh, I've got plenty here, thanks. It, it's not what I said about the fat, is it? Not put you off, have I? Because it's, uh, you know, it's drained off. A lot of it. My mother used to swear by goose grease. Yeah, until he was just the same, just put it in a big jar in the scullery. She used to spread it on a piece of red flannel. That's Ooh. it. You put it on your chest, under your vest. Uh, we should save some of the breast meat for Bill, eh, Percy? Why not, yeah. You'll be glad when he gets back, I dare say. Oh, yes, I will. They tell me you're in charge of celebrating the millennium round here, Al. <laughs> oh, that's right, aye. Roll on the year 2000, mate. Of course, by yeah. rights, we should be celebrating the millennium this very day. I beg yeah. your pardon. It's still 1996. Ah, ah yeah, nice. but, but that's a miscalculation, you see. We now know that Jesus was born no later than the year 4 BC. Well, you may know that, Roy, but nobody else does. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I can assure you it is an historic fact. Now, look, we start counting from Jesus, don't we? I mean, you can't say he came BC before himself. <laughs> The, the point is, Mrs. Roberts, uh, King Herod, uh, who the wise men went to when they were looking for the newborn king, well, you'll know all about the three wise men expect, Sarah Louise. Yes, he was in the nativity play. Yeah, well, king Herod died in 4 BC. So, uh, assuming that he did order the slaughtering of the innocent, etc., etc., uh, we've all been at least four years out. Your pudding's going cold, Roy. Hmm? Grandad, you haven't put your hat on. Go on, Grandad, please. Oh, anyway, cheers, Dom. Hi. Oh. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> this is the life, eh? That's his orange. Trishy, love, when I were in hospital... Yeah? You'd be round here a time or two, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, you know. I'll be better out than that, yeah? Were you here when Gilroy were here? Yeah, a couple of times when he was helping out behind the bar. What about in here? Were, were he in here? Um, I can't remember. Well, I saw him in here. He took some crates out of the backyard. Yeah, that were it. And then he came back in here. Yeah, go on, Jamie. What happened then, eh? And, and then he went up to be Ah, go on, go on, go on. And he said that Pigeon laughed at there and Mucky had flea trap. Flaming diddy. He, he said it was a fish thing he'd get rid of if it were up to him. Here you are, now. Who fancies a mince pie? It's a flaming choke me. What, what's that with you? I'm going to get the pub ready for opening, and I'll tell you something else. If Gilroy thinks he's going to get this pub, or you, it'll be over my dead body. <gasps> Do you know it is nice of Rita to let us get out for an hour? As much oh. as I love the kids, it is so nice to get away. We're going to have a drink. Don't let now, but Dan Brennan has just walked in. Uh, right, are we uh, all on pints? Uh, orange juice for me, please. Oh, right. Uh, three pints, Vera, and an orange juice. Do you know that's twice you've been in here to see us today? Yeah, well, Gail's chucked us out. Ah, yeah, sick of sight of us. <laughs> Well, never mind, love. We're always pleased to see you. Very good. So what do you reckon then? Game of darts might cheer him up a bit. Oh, aye. Right. Yeah. yeah. Done. Me and you. Game of darts against these two. Give him uh, a thrashing. Why? Give all the slaughter you. Get out of here. Do you, uh, do you play? Oh, come on, that's right. Well, on occasion, I, I know something about the aerodynamics of the game. Yes, I rather thought you might. <coughs> Evening. Evening. Uh, I'll take a small Irish. Be had a nice Christmas. Very quiet, very, very nice. Good evening, Jack. You're back, then. You have pulled some diabolical strokes in your time, but you have surpassed yourself. 
What? What are you on about? What am I on about? Me in my hospital bed and you swarming round a sick man's wife. Below the belt in my boot, that. I don't know where you've got this from or how. I came in here out of the goodness of my heart. Goodness of your heart? You've got a pocket calculator where your flaming heart should be. Oh, good evening, Alec. Nice to see you. Nobody yeah. meddles with my pub. Or my pigeons. Or the wife, either. Ah, oh, don't have to listen to this. You're bad. Hey, you. It's my name above that door. And I saw who's bad or not. Alex, a valued customer. Uh, then I'm going anyway. Uh, and don't expect me to help you out in the future because I won't. Uh, I'd, 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 I'd sooner bag or smoke and sell it door to door. Aye. But I've given him no encouragement. I can't help it if he fancies me. <laughs> Still spent you, if you see. Don't forget the other Two, four, six. <laughs> Aye, all right. Any chance of a word? Yeah. Have you said anything to anyone about, uh, about Don? Only oh, Sally. Right, well, maybe we should keep it to ourselves, eh? It might be best. Yeah, Kevin seems to think it's his fault. Oh. Yeah, well, in it, though. I've got a garage and he hasn't. Kev, it's not down to you, and he knows that when he's thinking straight. That's what I said. Martin, you're on. Yeah, right, be with you. So what we're going to do about him, then? I'm the clue. But uh, I'll tell you something, I'm not letting him out of my sight. You know, you've seen a bit. Right, um, this is for People take advantage. What are you saying, ma'am? What I'm saying is... Well, it all seems too convenient to me. Suspiciously convenient. I mean, he's got himself a nice little Christmas laid on, hasn't he? Hmm? I mean, ask yourself, are you sure he's not having you on? You didn't see him last night, ma'am. I did. If Martin hadn't got to him when he did... Oh. You have to admit, that was very convenient for getting rescued, hmm? And all this business about falling on the car hooter. Well, I mean, just down the street where somebody was bound to hear him and investigate. I'm sure it's not like that, ma'am. And so is Martin. We can't just look the other way. The man's desperate. Oh, yes. Yes. He's desperate to get a bit of sympathy. For somebody to make a big fuss of him. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, my God. Hello! Hello, oh, Maury. <laughs> I saw the light on. It's just passing by. Yeah, we're coming in. You know, Merry Christmas, Maury. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on through. Okay. Is uh, Bill not with you? Oh, well, you know, he went to Bristol to see his son. Hmm? We're supposed to come back today, and he's just rang. And he's had too much to drink, you know, for driving. So he's stopping over another night. Well, take your coat off. Yeah. Bill's just being sensible, isn't he? Oh, that's just what Percy Sugden's... I know he's being sensible. Of course he is. But on the other hand, who wants to spend a sensible Christmas? Not me. <laughs> Listen, have a glass of red. Right. I mean, we're not driving anywhere, are we? No, thank you, Curly. You're welcome. Hey, have you, you been go. on your own today? Yeah, well, sort of. I mean, I had a couple of pints in the Rovers at lunchtime, and then, well, oh. apart from that... You shouldn't be on your own, you know. Not at Christmas. Well, that depends, doesn't it? Depends on what company you have to put up with. Oh, I know. Do you know what? I'm sure Percy Sugden means well. But he's been driving me daft today. He keeps calling me Mrs Holsworth. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I must admit... I've been thinking myself, you know, about Reg today and, well, wondering where he is and if he's happy. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've been thinking about Raquel too. Thinking about where she is and who with. Mm. I'll tell you what. Mm. I'll open another bottle. Oh, yeah. Without the elephant. Night, Vera. Night, love. Sleep tight. <laughs> Is this any good? No. Well, what are you watching it for then? Oh, we don't have to watch telly, you know. We can make his own enjoyment. You can get that right out of your mind. Look, I know why you're grumpy. You're frustrated, aren't you? No, I'm not. 
Of course she has. Stands to reason. Been away from me. You're all tense too. Look, before there's any thought about like that, that there, there's a few things me and you've got to clear up. Oh, Jack, there were no between me and Alec Gilroy. Would I go for a tab end like him when I've got a big hunk like you? Well, I suppose there is that. Uh, I mean, I've been frustrated and all, you know, being away from you. In fact, I think it's mad me ill. I mean, there's only you can turn me on. Now, now look, I'm, I'm an invalid. I've, I've got a bad leg, haven't I? I know, but we've got this big soft bed here, haven't we? And I, I won't hurt your leg, love. I, I'll be gentle with you. You? Gentle? Look! You're having your Christmas box. When you think, you know, how your life can change in just one year. Do you know, a year ago, I'd got no idea that I'd end up divorced from Reg. Yes, but who would want to know in advance? I mean, why do people get their fortunes told? Hmm? I mean, if there was someone who could tell my fortune in advance, mm. well, I'd rather not know. People, people just think that they want to be happy, don't they? Uh, and you can understand that, because we all want that, don't we? Oh. Mm. Well, uh, I don't know where I'm going to be next week. Oh. Never mind next year. Mm. Probably France. Oh. Or maybe Italia. Oh. That must be wonderful doing what you're doing. Just taking off. Going where your fancy leads you. I'm going to really miss you, you know, Curly. You've been a terrific friend to me. And you've been the same to me. Oh, um, I, I, I think um, I'd better get back to Percy because I have to prize my mother away from me, you know, really. You might not be welcome. They might want to be um, alone. Why don't you stay here? You talked me into it. I mean that curly, you know. I really will miss you. I'll miss you too. I've always liked you. Well, I've always liked you. And you don't like to say goodbye to somebody you like, do you? Well, we don't have to say goodbye. We could just say, um, farewell. Could be um, a farewell performance. I take it you had a nice time with Norman. It was four o'clock before I heard that front door go. We were just chatting, that's all. I, I just lost track of time. I don't know why you didn't say where you were going in the first place. Because I didn't know until I saw the light. I, anyway, I, I phoned and told you where I was. Or am I not supposed to leave your side for a second? I don't know why you're being so touchy. I was only asking if you had a nice time. And I'm sure Norman's more stimulating company than Percy. Oh, you must have put your foot down to get back that quick. Well, I tried to get back as quick as I could. Not on my account, I hope. I'll go and put the kettle on. I'm probably not in your good books. Oh, really? Does it show? Oh, I couldn't help what happened, Maureen. Me and Elaine, we had to talk, like... Talk, yes. But did you have to drink? <laughs> Elaine would drive anyone to drink. Oh, so you thought, oh, it's only Maureen I'm letting down. She won't mind. Oh, that's not fair. No. Well, I'm tired of being fair, Bill. Being fair leaves you at the bottom of the pile. Look, all I can say is I'm sorry. Look, I've got the eye card outside. Why don't we shoot off someone and grab a bite to eat, eh? We've opened the shop now. I've got new stock to price. But, but it's Boxing Day. Can't it wait? No. I've made my plans for today, Bill. I'm sticking to them. Hi. 
I've uh, just been talking about you. Yeah, I thought my ears were burning. Mm. Yeah, well, we're just saying um, that uh, after breakfast, I could take you down to the, the general, you know. Well, I don't think that would be necessary. Yeah. Thanks, I'll say. Well, just a quick once over in casualty. We'll be there and back in an hour. Please, John. It'll put our minds at rest. I'm still standing. Oh, the pity. I don't need a doctor. Oh, come on, Doc. You've been breathing carbon monoxide fumes. Have you any idea what harm they can do to you? Not as much as I'd hoped. Oh, Don! Look, all right, if you won't go and see a doctor for your own good, then go and see him for mine. Because if anything should happen to you, and it turns out I've not taken you to the hospital, I'd be in big trouble, do you know that? You shouldn't have interfered then, should you? <gasps> Thanks for the bed. I'll, uh, be on my way now. On your way where? Back home, where do you think? We'll do no such thing. Look, Don, we're trying to help you here. You're not being very helpful, are you? Don, you're not well. You need to be with people. Please stay. Two days ago, you didn't want me anywhere near. I'm gone, I'm gone. Hey, listen, that's not fair, Don, it's is it? It's true, though, isn't it? OK, then, Don. All right, you go home, eh? See you later, oh, pal. See you now. Don, wait! Hey, that's gratitude for you. <gasps> well, well done, Martin. You handled that brilliantly. I hope you don't treat all your patients that way. Well, what we're supposed to do, Gail, eh? Tie him up. Listen, if he's hell-bent on going over there, there's nothing we can do about and it. what if he's hell-bent on doing away with himself, Martin? Is there nothing we can do about that either? Are you going to be long? Because I thought we could go for a nice walk. I'll be five minutes. Just want to check it all over. Make sure he's not done any damage or out. Why would he do any damage? He was trying to... Well, he was trying to kill himself, wasn't he? Yeah, well, why didn't he swallow a bottle of pills, Sal? Why did he have to break into our garage? Or shall I say his garage, what we nicked off him? Hey, nobody nicked anything off anybody. Kevin, you've got to stop blaming yourself for what Don did. Yeah, well, we are to blame, aren't we? Partly. Me and Tony both. No, you're not. I won't allow you to say that. It wasn't your fault Don lost this place. Didn't do anything to help him, no, did we? Just waited for him to go bust and then cast in. It wasn't like that. You're twisting everything. Look, I just feel really lousy about it all, Sam. Yeah, well, you mustn't. Now, come on, there's no use maudling all day here, is there? Come on, let's go for a walk. Into milk in the fridge, and uh, there's a loaf defrosting. Ah. Won't you at least come across the road for your dinner, Don? I'll get some here if I'm hungry. <sighs> okay. But uh, if there's anything you want, Don, I, if you just want to talk. All I want is to be left on my own, girl. Promise me. You won't do anything silly, Don. Promise me. I promise. Will you be careful with that, will you? You'll have me back in flaming hospital. Take it outside and play with it. All right, I'm going. Right, I'll go and play in the alley, not in the yard. You'll be frightening the pigeons, son. Vera. Oh, this afternoon, will you nip over to Bookies and put us a bet on, will you? No, I won't. I'll go for you, Jack. No, you won't. Listening ever wins him. Look, it's Boxing Day racing on the telly. 
Well, you've had that, I know, cos we're watching a video. Oh, charming. Look, we'll pass us them chocolates, will you, love? Where's all the chocolates gone? There's only... There's only caramels and they stick to me plate. Oh, that'll be Jamie. He's at a two-pound tin. He's going to be sick, the lad. Actually, Jack, it were me. Eh? I can't stop eating. Sometimes I don't even know I'm doing it. I was exactly the same when I was carrying our Jamie. Do you know you just broke my dream? Have I? Yeah, I dreamt she had a baby and a little girl called it Zoe. Did it have a sweet tooth? Zoe? No. Nope. I don't know if I like that name. Luke, Vera, how long are these two going to be stopping? I mean, Christmas, fair enough, like, you know. What do you want me to do? Throw the mother of my grandchild out onto the street? Oh, here we go again. Do you know you're as bad as Baldwin? Mind you, I've never known anybody be that hard faced. You cannot come round to his way of thinking. Martin Platt's here. He says he wants to worry. Shall I let him in? Aye, yeah. bring him in, aye. aye. You can come in. Right, come in, so. love. Come in, Mark. Hiya. Hiya. Um, I just wanted a quick word. Right, That's sit all right. down, sit down. Right, well, um, well in private, really. Uh, Jamie, go play, love. Aye. aye. Um, I don't know whether you noticed. Uh, Don was down in the dumps when he came in yesterday. I just put it down to being Christmas. Hi. Liz. Sean, wait. I was hoping I might bump into you. Oh, that's funny, because uh, I was hoping you wouldn't. I just wanted you to know I'm sorry for what happened to you. And it wasn't anything to do with me. Is that a fact? Well, actually, no. It might have been to do with me. The truth is, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I didn't mean for anybody to get hurt. It all sounds a bit complicated for a simple man like me, Liz. Best if me and you just keep our distance. Besides, I can't stand here chatting. You never know who might be watching. So... You know, I was just hoping that maybe he could pop round, see if he's all right, you know, cheer him up a bit. Well, don't worry, Martin, we'll, we'll go around when we lock up this aft, won't we? All oh, right. Take him some Christmas cake, edge out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Anyway, I'll be off. Thanks, Jack. Right, tell her, Martin, lad. Tell her, Tell her. Hey, I tell you what, they might have had the differences when she were alive, but she's certainly watching over him now, isn't she? Who? Um, I'll tell you what, uh, I'll knit round on my own this afternoon and have a word with him, man to man like. Santa buy your new jogging suit then, did he? Always like to do a couple of miles a day. <laughs> 17 minutes. Must be the Christmas pud. Bye, then. I've got a message for you. From Fraser. He'd like to see you again. Sorry, I'm busy. It's about your Steve. Apparently he's in a bit of trouble. What do you mean? What kind of trouble? I'm just passing on the message. Jerry! <laughs> A uh, pint, please, Jack, and uh, what would you like, Anne? Grapefruit juice, please. Oh, come on, you can have something stronger. It's my last day of work. All the more reason for me to keep a clear head. I've got the staff rotor to work out. Um, half a lager isn't going to do you any harm, is it? No, thank you. Of course, strictly speaking, it isn't the assistant manager's job to make out the staff rotor. But seeing as we've not heard any more about who the new manager's going to be, mm. I dare say the task will fall to me. That's old chestnut, eh? Hey? That's all right, Jack. All right. Well, it's all right for you heading off into the big blue yonder, Norman. It's me will be left to pick up the pieces. Well, by the way, could you at least make out a memo to wages about Denise Forster before you go? Apparently, they've not been paying her maternity benefit. Denise Forster? Does she still work for us? No, but she's still entitled to maternity pay. Oh, all right, all right. Leave it to me. I'll do it this afternoon. Uh, listen, will you keep an eye on me pipe for a couple of minutes? I was going to have a word with Maury. All right? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, love. Is that, is that right? You, you still have to pay out maternity benefits to someone, even if they've stopped working for you? Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, what happens if they stop working for you because you fired them? Well, it makes no odds, really, as long as they work for you for more than um, 26 weeks, I think it is. Six Why? Weeks. Trisha, love, come over here and have a word, will you? I just feel disgusted with myself. Disgusted and ashamed. Cheap? Yes. Well, don't worry. Most women feel like that after they've slept with me. It'll soon pass. Oh, I didn't... Curly, you're a lovely, considerate, sweet man. That... Lovely, considerate, sweet men do not take advantage of other men's girlfriends the moment their backs are turned. I knew exactly what I was doing, Curly. And that's what's so awful. Because all Bill wanted to do was spend some more time with his son who he hadn't seen for a year. Yes, me, I jump straight into bed with somebody else. Well, what does that make me? Vulnerable, insecure. Then first thing this morning, he's breaking the Landspeak record to get back to me to beg my forgiveness. Well, that's a joke, isn't it? Because I should be begging his forgiveness. <laughs> Look, Maureen, there's no point in punishing yourself. I'm not. I'm punishing Bill. I've been horrible to him. I don't know whether I was covering my tracks, but when he came into the shop, I absolutely felt really angry with him. You know, like it was his fault. And if he hadn't let me down, then I wouldn't have let him down. <laughs> Maureen, last night was very, very special. Do you think so? Mm. But it's not going to happen again. We both know you're attached. I'm off out round the world, aren't I? For me and you, there isn't a future. No. But for you and Bill, there is a future. I'm sure of it. So don't wreck it for the sake of one night, eh? Yeah. Whoa, what do you want? Refuge, mate. Yeah, it starts in a few minutes. What does? Sexfield races. You know, I feel like a flaming lodger in my own house, I do. Here, all of them. <laughs> Get this flaming telly on. Uh, now, look, to, to be honest, oh. look, uh, I'm, I'm not in the mood, not today. Boxing Day races? What's up with you, man? I brought the cans, haven't I? Yeah, well, like I said, I mean, I'm not in the mood. Yeah, well, I am. Can't get near our tell since Jamie and Swish are invaded. <laughs> Do you know they're treating my place like a flaming hotel, if you know what I mean? Like, come on, get sat down. Racing starts in a few minutes and I've got a fiver on. Right. How's your memory? Red pesto. Ring a bell. Red pesto, no, I can't say that. Six-year-old. Six-year-old, push lot shot in the fourth place, market raisin in March. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, well, it's raising today. Eight to one. Going soft, and I reckon it's a dead cert. And you've just about got time to nip over and put yourself a bet on. No, no, I'll, ju I'll just watch it. Oh, no, right, no, please yourself. Yeah, get that down here. Yeah. All right. Right, sir. Uh, did you get invited over the road yesterday or what? Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Uh. Merry Christmas, Don. Merry Christmas. You wanted to see me, Norman? And yes, I did. Uh, come in, please, take a seat. Uh, no, not that one. This one. But that's your chair. Was my chair, and was. After six o'clock, I'm no longer an employee of Furman's Freezers, am I? No. Which means Eric will be looking for a replacement manager. You mean it's me? I'm taking over as manager. Acting manager, Anne. Acting. Eric's just come off the phone to confirm it. And naturally, he wants to see you do the job before he makes the position permanent. But if you're as half as good as I've told him you are, well then it should be a formality. A month, two at the most. I don't know what to say. Oh, come on, Anne. Don't get coy on me. You know this is what you've been angling for. I hope I might be in the running. Made sure you were way ahead of the race, more like, and why not? You're the ideal choice. Come on. It's no less than you deserve. Come on. <laughs> ah, yes. You and that desk were made for each other. Six. But it left hot shot standing. It's <laughs> real. It leave hot shot standing. Give over. He's still got his best years in him. He'll make us rich yet. You see. Do you remember, Don, the day we bought him? Who was it who suggested that I ride him home? <laughs> That's when I bought uh, garage, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That was another 
Millstone. Yeah, well, you were unlucky there, weren't unlucky. you? Unlucky. Yeah. I was sold a pup. Baldwin conned me. You've got to put it all behind you, Don. No, I haven't got any choice, have I? All I can do now is watch Kevin and Tony raking it in. I don't, what I'm saying is there's no sense in being bitter. You, you've got to move on. Look to the future. What future? I haven't even got a job. That was Baldwin and all. What do you mean? Oh, stop for drunk driving, won't I? So if you're thinking of telling me to look on the bright side, Jack, forget it. Because there isn't one. Of course, it's all your fault that I'm like this. You do know that. How do you mean? I don't know what you call it, really. Ambitious, go-getting, power-crazed. You've created a monster, Norman. Managing a small freezer shop is hardly power-crazed. When I first started working here, I was just drifting along, stacking shelves. I'm like a different person now. Different outlook. Well, that's hardly down to me. It's completely down to you, Curly. You encouraged me, nurtured me, opened up new horizons. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but I've always thought you were sort of different in a way. Have you? Yeah, you, you ooze a sort of wisdom and self-knowledge. Do I? It's like you're on a slightly higher plane to the rest of us. Ah, you see, that's down to me glasses. Uh, sometimes the way I look through them makes, makes me look like I'm not really concentrating all the time. That's typical of you. What is? The way you put yourself down, pretend you're just an ordinary bloke, but you're not, are you? Very special. Thank you very much. If you stayed on here, within 12 months you'd be area manager, regional manager. And now that is power crazed. But what you do, you chuck it all in and head off on a journey of self-discovery. Do you think I'm doing the right thing? I think you're doing something the rest of us just haven't got the guts to do. And I admire you for it. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, which reminds me. I um, had an ulterior motive for uh, <clears throat> informing you about the job early. Oh, yeah? Would you mind uh, locking up for me? No, not at all. Why, do you have to be somewhere? Yeah, camping shop. Rosamond Street. It's a sale, half price for thermal vests. <laughs> well, you've got to wrap up warm if you're going off on a voyage of self-discovery. <laughs> Excuse me. You uh, rang the prison? That was the first thing I did. And what did they say? They weren't aware of any problems, just what you'd expect. Well, there you go then. At least you know he hasn't come to any physical harm. All I know is whatever trouble Steve is in, it's something the prison authorities don't know about. Could just be Chinese whispers, Mum. How do you mean? Well, you know, daft little incident. And by the time the word's been passed around from Fraser to Jerry and everybody else, suddenly Steve's in big trouble, isn't he? How was he when you last went to see him? Well, fine, I suppose. In fact, you were quite contented. And have you spoke to him since? He ran Christmas Day. What, and he was all right then? I don't know. I'm, it were only on for a minute. There were a queue. Andy, what if it's drugs? <coughs> I think there's another explanation before that. I think it's a ploy on Fraser's part to get you to go and visit him. Yeah, and that occurred to me too. Trouble is, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? I don't think that's a very good idea. He's a dangerous bloke with a very healthy interest in you. You want to stay well away from him. I can't, Andy. If Steve's in some kind of trouble, I've got to get to the bottom of it. And if Fraser really is just using Steve to get to you? That's a risk I've just got to take. Look, you've had a lousy year, Don, I know that. That's putting it mildly. Who's to say your luck won't change next year, though? Oh, that when I win the lottery, eh? Something will turn up. It always well, does. I don't think so, Jack. We have all hit rock bottom at some time or another, but the main thing is not to give up. You've been talking to Gail and Martin, haven't you? Aye. Yeah, I thought so. And they told you to come round here, didn't they? Make sure I haven't got me head it up. I... But we're worried about you, Don. We all are. Well, we all are. The old street knows, does no. it? No! Look, I did not do it for sympathy, Jack. That is not why I did it. Why did you do it, then? And what do you think that that will solve? Everything, Jack. In one fell swoop. Uh, two packets of cheese Hey, he's too young to be working behind that bar, him, isn't he? Oh, he's only passing me crisps. Save me legs. Turn a blind eye, love. Right, yeah. love. 
Um, look, I didn't want to say anything earlier in front of Norman, but are we all set for his farewell do tomorrow night? Oh, yeah, of course. I'm looking forward to it. Right. Emily Bishop's acting as decoy. He thinks he's going round there for tea. Oh. Right, so you want everybody there by what? 6.37. Oh. Okay. Right here, all love. Right. Andy, I thought maybe we could go for pizza after these, celebrate my promotion. Yeah, sure, no problem. Oh, as long as we're popping on my mum on the way home. She was a bit worried about Steve earlier, I just want to know how she is. You're fascinated by those keys, aren't you? You know, I bet you know what every single one of these is for, don't you? Most of them, why? No, I bet you know what they all do, even that one. Oh, God, that's the key for the old petty cash. Things shouldn't even be on there, really. <laughs> I told you, I knew it. What? What's the joke, Andy? Come on. Pat like it, please, Betty. Okay, well. So you're right. going to say anything to Tony about Don? Oh, I suppose I'm going to have to, aren't I? I mean, technically, it was a break-in. Yeah, but nothing got stolen, did it? I mean, you know, who did the break-in and why? You don't want me to say out, do you? Well, I think Martin's right. I think the fewer people who know about it, the better. <sighs> All right, you two. Yeah, fine, thanks. Nice Christmas. Yeah. Quiet. Yeah. Just how I like it. It was great seeing Carl. Hmm. But his mother... What do you mean? Oh, dragging it all up again. Making it out like it's all my fault that I don't see Carl. Well, now that you have seen Carl again, you mustn't leave it all up in the air, eh? Well, the trouble is, Elaine wants it all on her terms. Doesn't want Carl upset by unexpected visits, she says. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you were angry with me this morning. Oh. It occurred to me that maybe you were thinking that me and Elaine had got on well. And the reason that I didn't come back last night was because me and her had... Well, you know. No, no, nothing was further from my mind. Well, nothing was further from mine either. Oh, good. You know, I'll get us another drink. Eh? Sure, you were in. Yeah, well, upstairs. I'm not always that quick getting down. No. So, uh, you all right then? Yeah, as you can see. No, I'm not getting any dizziness, no vomiting. I'm not even feeling nauseous. Good, good. So, how are you otherwise? Well, you tell me. I mean, it's no change as far as I'm concerned. So that I've probably got a court appearance to look forward to now. Oh, yeah. Uh, listen. Uh, Sarah Louise has been asking for you. She's got this electric present that uh, Alf and Audrey got for Christmas. Now, I've had a good look at it, but... Well, I was just wondering if you could have a look at it. Mm. Amateur psychology now, eh? Yeah, remind the bloke that he's got little grandchildren to live for. <laughs> well, now you come to point it out, Don, no. And I don't think it's particularly fair that you lay that on the door of a nine-year-old and a six-year-old. Hmm? Look, Don. I think we're all a bit close to be of any real help here. Close? Mm. Meaning, I think you should speak to somebody else. They'll still be around. Yeah, banging on the door every day to check that I'm still breathing. <laughs> well, you think it's any fun for us? Mm, breathing's about all that it is. Look, just think about it, eh? When you feel right, maybe... You should go and speak to somebody more qualified and less involved than me. Hmm? No, no. Anybody here? Hiya. Hi, Martin. Hi, all right. So, how was Christmas to Aunt Will done? Busy. Hey, you made right choice not coming hours. Now, see, Ashley. I won't have you calling your mother. I say, I won't have you calling your mother. And what did she do to your lovely Aunt Pick Turkey? Oh, I think we're fortunate it were already dead, Elsa. I've had to call in the RSPCA. As for meat, if I hadn't bring it myself, I'd have sworn she'd put a shot out of its misery. As for the vegetables, I'm not commenting about them, not my department. But I'll tell you this, I'm glad I've still got all my own teeth. So you've made a fair old impression on that. I know I'll get you next year. Oh, sorry, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't buy... Uh, uh, didn't you leave a few uh, parcels under our tree, Don? Uh, oh, you went over the road after all? Oh, great. Only wasn't sure if he was in... Right, uh, listen, I'm sure one of your presents is under there. Um, I'll just go and get it. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, remember our Ashley? Shop's open first thing tomorrow morning. Yes, Uncle Fred. I'll see you at Rovers. Uh, Early night, you. Oh, nightmare. 
The whole thing was a complete nightmare. It's good be home, I can tell you. Hey, wait till I show you what my mum parted with the money for this year. Curly went home. That's what I had to do, make sure Curly went home, and that's where he went. <laughs> right. <laughs> Come on, troops. Oh, Coast is clear. Go and tell the girls. They might not have heard you. All right, mate. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, Come on. Right, now, sign that and then pass it round, will you? All right, thank you. Eric Furman had a uh, farewell bash for Curly. Ah, uh, yes. Have you heard anything from Steve? Uh, no, I haven't, no. And you obviously haven't either. Oh, well, no news is... Uh... Good news? Yeah. No, I worry when things go quiet. Can you think of anybody else he might contact apart from your dad? Mm. Just wish he'd ring. Put my mind at rest, and then I won't have to go through with this damn visit to Fraser Henderson tomorrow. I don't know how we got roped into this. I hardly know Curly. I mean, people just presume because you're a single girl you've got nothing better to do. <laughs> you single? Yeah, it's been 15 days now. Oh, we don't often miss it when it's gone. Well, there was a time I thought that till I realised what trouble it causes. What about money? I mean, having to pay for everything yourself again. Oh, yeah, right. See you later. All right, see you, Mum, yeah. Bye. 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 What are you doing here? It's still my local, you know, until I take off. Only one one for the road. Look, it's gone three. We've stopped serving. All right, all right. Leave off, Vera. People are still drinking. I don't care. I'm closing. I'm going to church. I haven't been for ages. Jacko, come on. Uh, Jack's I, going I, with I... me. And Trisha. Yeah. If we're going to have a christening, she's going to have to start putting in an appearance. Right. Uh, come on, everybody, everybody out. Oh, that's everybody very out nice, out. is that? Very nice. Thank you, Sorry, sir. mate. Thank you very much. Look, uh, maybe you need some help packing. And Curly needs some help organising his uh, packing. Anyone but Anne. She's Organise? I can do that. Of course she can, like no one on earth. Right, go on, off you go. See you later. I bet you don't need half the stuff you're taking. Right, hey. Right, panic over. Let's do right. it. Come on. Trisha. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see. Hello. Oh, oh, gone by Edge. Curly. Is that very nice? Get hold of it. Yeah, do you know? I can't oh, believe it's, it's going after now. all he's been through. Oh, no, now, come on now. I don't know why. Hey, come on, we never collected enough for that, V. Well, no, no, I put rest to it. Look, it's worth it, Jack. I think you're right, really. You better go to church and pray for another windfall. <laughs> Somebody's been sleeping in here. Yeah, me. Last night I was just trying it out. It looks really cosy. Coffee, I think. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> we forgot. Uh, Ashley. Ashley? Yeah, he's just arrived back over the road. Is that the smelly stuff where my Roger got you? Uh, yeah, it's funnily enough, it's something similar. He's, uh, he's bought something for Don. It's nice. What, bottle of whiskey? Oh. Um, I thought you two were going to play this video. Yeah! Oh! Yeah! yeah. You're too young to work it. Mum, can I work Yes, it? you can do it. He's just going to make the worst gaff over there, Annie. Out of all innocence. I mean, the poor guy, don't know what's going on, does he? So anyway, I left Don to explain. Well, I doubt he'll do that. He'll have to, won't he? The guy lives there. He has a lodger. It's none of his business. Well, it won't be if he comes down one morning and finds him dead. I just know that when you're that low, I mean, you long for someone not to tiptoe around you all the time, avoiding the subject. You feel exposed enough as it is. Right. Uh, I've tried to get him to talk to a doctor. So they could shove more pills at him? Uh, not necessarily, no. Uh, Gail, I thought you were off all this. He needs someone to acknowledge that his problems are real. I mean, being told that he's the only one that can help himself doesn't help. Not to begin with. That's the frightening bit. That's why he did what he did. Curly! I can touch the top of the tent with my toes, look! Coffee's ready. Let's have it in here. Ah, you see, it's only a one-man tent. I can't see any other men in here. There you go. Thank you. Uh, oh. So this is where you'll be spending your nights? Yep, guess so. It feels really safe. Like a cocoon. I need you to go away. Yeah, so you can have my job. No. That's a consolation. 
what I mean is it's a good thing you're going, Curly. Me and Andy aren't quite, you know... You remember when you told me that you'd married Raquel? Anne, come on, you've had a drink. I have today, yeah, but never when we've been working together before I haven't, because I've never had the courage, you see, to say anything. I didn't know if... Oh, you must have realised, Curly. Should we get out of here? You know when she left you and you came round to see us? Andy said you came round to see me. Oh, did he now? Did you? Anne. It was awful that night, Curly. You were so devastated. But I had butterflies. I was excited you were free again. But you're not. But I could be. No, no, Anne, Anne. I mean, aren't you supposed to be in love with Andy? I thought I was. I've tried to be. Well, don't keep going with it. Don't try to make it work because it won't. It'll be all right when you're gone. Not for Andy, it won't. <laughs> Really quite roomy. Shouldn't you have it all packed up by now? Well, I was going to do that this afternoon, although I didn't get round to it for one reason or another. Well, can I give you a hand? Oh, no, no, I'll do it later. I've got to learn to fend for myself. However, there is one favour I'd like to ask of you, apart from storing my telescope. I've got a few things in a, in a box here. Uh, some photos, Raquel Star certificate. I know the marriage is over, it's not about that. I'll keep them for you, Norman. You know, Raquel and I, we had some good times. Hardly a crossword. Well, you hang on to those good memories, and these will all be safe with me. Right. You know, I'm really glad now that I'm having dinner with you. I don't think I could stand a lot of fuss. Oh. Shall we go, then? Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hiya. What about you? Have you uh, heard anything from Steve since you last saw him? No, I haven't, have you? He rang Christmas Day. Well, they're dead handy, things, phones, aren't they? Yeah, well, he knew I'd have problems visiting, you know, what we work and everything. Ah, well, Christmas is over. There we go. Emily, how many years have you lived on this street? Since 1966. <laughs> You'll not equal that record, <laughs> which is probably the idea. Fancy a drink before dinner. We've got time. Yeah, but we've got this. Well, it's early. Probably won't be that many in yet. Yeah, I'll go on then. Quick one. Oh, well, uh, let's put these inside. Oh, I'll do that for you. Right. No use knocking, because Mr Subden's out with some arm friends. Right. Oh, there you go. Oh, thank you, Norman. Oh, wait a minute. Right. About 45 seconds and counting. Yeah. Everybody quiet, he's on his way in. And then you go and announce at the last minute you don't want any fuss. <laughs> never believe me, Emily. I never thought I'd get rid of you this afternoon. I know, yeah, now you know why I had to force Anne on you, don't you? I can't believe you've done all this for me. I helped. Yep, she skived off a whole afternoon's work. <laughs> you had no idea. <laughs> Look, I, I really don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. Hey, hey, now, now, stop that. You'll have Alvira at it. Get that down here. Some... Look, I'm, I'm just nipping round there and I'm doing my make early, all right? Yeah, you'll do that, Lou. It never quite tastes the same with permission. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Julie! How are you, fellas? Listen, I'll just get a drink. We'll be over in a sec, all right? Yeah. Ashley, you all right? Uh, just don't come in along. I've asked him. He said he'd give it a miss. I didn't know this dude was on till I got it. Well, should I go and tell him? Um, oh yeah. Uh, listen, can we just have a quick word? Come. The summer. Yeah. Maureen's told me. What? Germany, Mac, with one of your pots of coal. Oh, yeah, 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 probably, yeah. Well, I've got a couple of dresses for you. Mates of mine could give you a bit of work if you need it. It's not managerial work. No, no, it's labouring stuff, itinerant, you know. 
Uh, it might suit you better when you're travelling. Yeah, thanks, thanks. I'll give you the details later. <laughs> Way in day at the Diet Club. A scene repeated at hundreds of similar clubs across the northwest. I've always been overweight. I've never done it before and I'm doing it for myself. Very much overweight. Very high blood pressure. All right then. And yeah, all right. Within nine that didn't take long. I've lost over no. Stone. Too crowded. He's a bit of a do one for Curly. He's going abroad. Could tell a good send off. Bringing with it a range of serious health problems. But Martin in there. Risk of heart disease, having high blood yeah. pressure. Um, arthritis. Anything on telly? Diabetes in late, later life, even cancer. Uh, I wouldn't blame you if you don't want to stay. Can I go where? Oh. No oh, thanks, if it's all right, I'll stop here. Two years on, and with the help of the occupational health unit, she's managed to slim down and was only one stone. Yeah, well, you're going to go to the next one. Yeah, I'll stop. No, I don't really know what I'm going to have. Oh, no. No, no, please. No, no. Okay. Here is my. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Hey? Believe it. If his party gets any wilder, I'll have to call the police. Sure, I told him to come straight here. Maybe I said meet the flat. Blame come to you. <laughs> Norman, lad. Norman. Shh. Send out. Uh, put this somewhere safe, and whatever you do, don't lose it. The list. Dress at every square in Europe. Yeah, well, actually, I didn't think I <laughs> Now, 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 if you're ever in trouble, you contact anybody in that envelope. Make yourself known, say you're a dealer, and you will be welcome and looked after. The greeting's the same in any language, isn't it? Oh, yes. 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 yes uh, what you've got there, Curly, is information. It's your passport, passport. around the world. Now, no, no, tell no one. Keep Shh. it to yourself. No one. Hi. 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 My mum's just arrived. Yeah? Uh, have you seen Ashley? Uh, well, I've told him, so he's dashed round to Don's. You know, he likes him. He genuinely likes him. Well, we do. Most of the time. Mm. Yeah, we do. Ladies and gentlemen, oh. a bit of us. Please, a bit of us, if, if you don't mind. I have a few words to say here and a bit of a presentation to make to the man of the moment. Mr Norman Curley Watts, will you please step forward? <laughs> Right, well, Look, just what can wait we for say? Mrs. Well, what is it? With you gone, what reason have me and Vera got to open the door for? Because yeah. <laughs> usually we find you banging down the door every night on the dot. <laughs> You've been a good mate, Curl, not to mention a good paid customer. We have seen you rise from collecting rubbish to feeding us rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, on, and on a personal note, though, I, I just happen to know for a fact that you have captured the art of. One lady behind this bar. Yeah, don't say and, and that lady is my wife. True. <laughs> and I suffered for it when you lived with us because you got all the best treatment. And when you moved out, I'm sure she'd have preferred it being me. No, <laughs> never. Dad, Curly, son, I, son. Because I think that's how me and V have always thought of you. Improvement on the real thing. Aye. Anyway. Everybody's putting the loose change. Our Vera's going to remortgage the pub, and I think I'm—I uh, think I'm talking for everybody round here when I say that we hope that this is one rover that returns. Yeah. Oh. There, my son, yeah. Curly. That's for you, there. Yeah. 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 Where's he going? Just got in myself. Didn't know he was going anywhere. Hi, Alma. Oh, Just yeah. got back. Yeah, this afternoon. How was your Christmas? Oh. Fine. Ooh, I'm starting to wonder why I'm leaving. He might, he might be trying to phone. We'll let him come to you. No, I'll be back. Right. Uh, what's that saying? Uh, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. Well, you know what you've got. Samantha, she, she's got my house. Gail and Martin have got my car. And if there's any justice, Anne will get my job. <laughs> <laughs> I've said a lot of goodbyes. It seems funny that it's, it's me that's leaving. Up to this week, I didn't think there was anything left for me to hang about for. But when you've got to go, you've, you've got to go. I've made some good friends on this street and I'll remember you all. 
And I'll remember what you all mean to me. Thank you. Hey, you can take me in your suitcase if you like. Hey, Curly, no, there's an offer you couldn't <laughs> refuse, eh? Or a threat. <laughs> Don't tell me work. Hi, Fiona, it's Liz. I uh, just wondered if you'd heard anything from Steve. You know, over Christmas line. No. But Liz, when am I going to be able to forget him? I've got somebody new now. All these wreck my last relationship. I do not want it interfering with this one. I'm sorry. No, I am. Night. Night. As if this one ever calls again. Desmond! Morning! Trisha! <laughs> Come on, Annie. Take a picture of me, Curly. Jenny! Oh, there you go. Add another. I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it, Norman. Oh, are you going? Yeah. Have a wonderful time. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for everything. Bye. Bye. Oh, it was a gorgeous hotel, right on the edge of the lake. Mm. It was fantastic food. Finished all their ideas. Now it was perfect peace and quiet, except for his mobile going off every five minutes. <laughs> hey! Perfect peace and quiet. I'm talking to you. Really, I thought it was the sound of the motorway traffic still ringing in my ears. <laughs> you think you're so smart with your put-downs, don't you? You chuck us out of our jobs, and you think we're too scared to ask questions. Well, we're not. We have been asking questions. You still have to keep paying me. Pay you for not working for me? Yeah. Well, I did think of that before, but then I thought it was easier and quicker to sack you. Check your facts with DSS. I will be as soon as they're open. I think they'll confirm I worked for you long enough to get maternity benefits. Oh, really? Yeah, you'll be hearing from them. Oh, I look forward to that. You do know that the child support agency will be after Terry, don't you? <laughs> if they can find him. They'll find him, Vera. It's their job to find him. Hmm? Curly, could I have... Are you Sorry. leaving? Uh, when Bill comes back from the loo. Popular guy. There's a tenant for the books, eh? Me with a woman and child and you off on your travels. Well, I'll give it six months. Your trip on my relationship. Don't go breaking any world records. See you, Curly. I'll have to see you first. Hiya. Travel safely, Curly. Yeah, I will. <coughs> Give him a snog, then. Go on. Good luck. Yeah, and you. Look after her, Bill. Yes, I will, yeah. Fond of him, aren't you? Good mate, eh? Yeah. He has been. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. See ya. See, See you, you again. See Hello. Hi. Hi, I didn't even know you were going anywhere. I wish you were best. Thank you, Elmer. Yeah, here. Oh. <laughs> here. Bye. Trisha seems to have done her homework. I don't even want to think about it. Well, you might have to. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I've had enough. And I've got some packing to do. So I thought I'd get out before someone gets too drunk and tell me what they really think of me. I think you're nice. Everyone does. All the girls say so. Which girls? Are you alright, Maxie? Yeah. See you around then. Yeah, see ya. You were uh, waiting on a taxi? Yeah, I guess so. All oh, right. Well, thanks for coming. Good night. Yeah, see ya. Have you ordered one? No. You can't be walking about on a night like this. Go over to the telephone box. Now, I'll tell you what, just wait a minute. Can't be a tick. Hello? Yeah, can I have a taxi, please? 
Yeah, yeah, I'll wait. Yeah, everyone says you're really nice. I never find the nice ones. Always the horrible ones. Will you be nice to me? Taxi. Yeah. Yeah, straight away. Yeah, now. Yeah, 7 Coronation Street. Yeah, where are you going? Uh, yes, 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 it's 7 Coronation Street. No, I'll tell you what, uh, sorry, can I cancel that? The, uh, the lady's uh, changed her mind. Actually, I've just made up my mind. Bathroom's free. Oh, morning. Morning. My last morning in England. What a great feeling. Tea or coffee? Oh, well. I bet you're one of those decaffeinated types, aren't you? Well, don't you worry. We've got everything in that line here. Mint tea, chamomile. Used to be someone who lived here who was into that. Um, I mean, anyway, so I was the nice person that you were looking for, eh? I'm sorry I had to go straight into the observatory afterwards. What well, one last look at the stars? Where I'm going, you see, in the southern hemisphere, they're all the other way around. Really? Mmm, can't wait to see that. Apparently the water goes down the plug all a different way. See, it's a different polar pull. Fascinating. Ah, the last post. Bills, probably. Well, Samantha can deal with that. She's coming round to pick up her keys in a minute, anyway. Actually, I think I might pass on the coffee, if that's OK. I mean, you must have a lot of packing to do. Not really. Oh, well, if I get to work now, I'll get my head down for half an hour. I mean, I'm worn out after last night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you must be. Well, uh, thanks for uh, everything. Oh, actually, I'll go out the back door if that's OK. I mean, we don't want people gossiping, do we? No, no, no. Well, then, no regrets, then, eh? No, not at all. Uh. Loads of luck. Take care. Thanks. Not much to come home to, am I? I don't know, after at Christmas I had. My mum did have Trevor round in the end. He just ignored me most at night. I got my own back, though. I won 15 quid off him at poker. Hey, what? I say. I won fifteen pound off Trevor at poker. Oh, good, yeah. Down to you, that. Me? Why? You let me out play. He tried to laugh it off at first. He reckons he was letting me win, like. Then he upped his bet and I still beat him. He was dead miffed then. He won't even let me mum watch Carol service on telly. He's in a bad mood all night. So I've taught you so much. You taught me loads. All that stuff about specialising when you bet. Who wanna look at two year olds now? Box of tricks, that's doing well. It's one of its last two outings. It's going somewhere today. I might put a father on it. Hey, now, hold up, hold up. What are the odds? I don't know. Well, you see, if it's winning, they'll be short, you see, now. The golden rule is, if you miss the wedding, don't go to the funeral, you see. Anyway, if they're less than five to two, you'll keep clear. Yeah. Well, I mean, who's riding it? Where is it? Well, does it matter? You've got a lot to learn, lad. Hey, Christmas is hardly finished, and here I am spending again. Hiya. <laughs> Hello. Oh, morning, love. Oh, you must have been up with luck. Been to DSS. Oh, you never said you were going that early. Well, I went as soon as they opened. You get a result? Yeah. They gave me 17 quid, and then they said I'm going to get another 60 tomorrow, backdated. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I'm going to get eight to seven a week from next Monday. What about rent? Yeah, they're going to sort it. Maternity? Oh, uh, well, woman wasn't there, she was on holiday, but they said, as it wasn't, you know, urgent, could have come back on Friday, short-staffed. Well, that's not bad. At least you got the ball rolling. I did, yeah. yeah. Uh, did they ask you any questions? Well, it was like flaming mastermind. I mean, there were forms like this to fill in. Did they ask you who father was? No, didn't seem to care. Hey, is it all right if I have a bath? Yeah, of course. Uh, there's plenty of hot water. Yeah, you come out stinking from them mm. places, don't you? What? Nothing. Oh, now, come on. Look, 
It was just some uh, curly what said last night. You know about Trisha going to DSA. Well, they'll get in touch with child support agency and then they'll they'll track out Terry down. What make him pay? But they didn't even ask for his name. Well, that it's maternity benefit. Well, we'll see when she goes back. Ooh, that would be manna from heaven if they made him cough up. Yeah, but we don't want our Terry back again, do we? Look what happened last time. He would be breaking the law if he snatched him back. Yeah, we know how law abiding our Terry is, don't we? Yes, but even if he did try something, who's going to bankroll him? No Jeff Orton this time, is he? No, us. Look, he knows we've got now. He slung his hoop straight away when I told him all our Cliff's money was in the pub. Now, there is no reason for him to come back. I don't think he fancies changing nappies. Oh, Jack, I don't like it. Look, He'll find a way round it. Vera, I know he will. Vera, 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 I'm telling you, the law is on our side. For once in his life, our darling son has got to clear up his own mess. <laughs> Do you know, I didn't think you'd go through with it, Curly. To tell you the truth, I didn't think you had it in here. Well, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, should you? You know, I like a man full of surprises. Well, to tell you the truth, um, a lot of people think I'm a bit, uh, crazy. What do they know? So what if you are? Better than being a nine-to-five anorak, isn't it? Mm. Hey, what's this? Oh, you'll like this. This is me currency converter. It's got everything in here from yen to rupees. Also, watch this. Time zones. Look at that. California. Nine hours behind. Southeast Asia, eight hours in front. Mm. So when you're watching the sun set on Weatherfield, think of me, Samantha. I'll be watching it rise over the Grand Canyon or the harbour in Shanghai. I didn't know you had a romantic streak in you, Curly. Yeah, well, I used to write poetry when I was younger. This is part of me I'm trying to rediscover. You get more interesting by the minute, you do. Oh, you know, and it was completely on spot. Thank you. I mean, you know they ruined those little villages, tarting them up and so on. I do. And quiet. I mean, you forget what silence is, don't you, when you live in a town? I'm boring you silly, aren't I? Yeah, just shut up, Alma. Oh, I say, hey, you are still coming to lunch, aren't you, on uh, New Year's Day? Of course. So then, how was, uh, how was your Christmas? Hope Audrey didn't prove to be too much of a trial. What is it? Sorry. What's happened? It's Dom. He tried to kill himself. Oh, no. Christmas Eve. Well, why didn't you tell me? Because we're trying to keep it quiet. Because we've talked about nothing else since it happened. Oh, that's terrible. But is he all right? How did it happen? In our car, in Kevin's garage. He left the exhaust running. We found him just in time. <gasps> Kevin's garage? The one that Mike sold to him? The one, the one that caused him to go bankrupt? <gasps> of course, but then he was breathalyzed, wasn't he? The day before. <sighs> so he'll lose his license as well. Mike again. Well, it was Dom that was over the limit. You can't blame Mike for that. No, but you can just see him sat in the back, can't you, chortling while Dom blows into the bag. Well, I shouldn't worry, Alma. Not many people know about it. Look, uh, do me a favour, don't tell Mike. No offence, but he's not the most tactful of people, and, and if he says something to Dom, then... Look, are you sure you still want to come on Wednesday? Well... We can't let it come between us, can we? Anyway, Don brought a lot of it on himself. Yes, but whichever way you gloss it, Mike played a part. Well, people have to make up their own minds. Jack, get this man what he wants. Yeah, just a half, Jack. I've got to get a bus at half. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a lift in if you like. Oh, cheers, pal. No problem. And where's your first port of call? Well, the bus takes me down to uh, Folkestone. I'm booked on the late night ferry. Hit Gay Paris tomorrow morning. <laughs> a few days there, and then wherever the wind takes me. New Year in the Moulin Rouge, eh? Oh, the Louvre, Jack. Oh, the Louvre. What did he say? The Louvre. <laughs> the Louvre, Jack. It's a famous art gallery. All oh, oh, right. Oh. Well, whatever tickles your fancy, Curly, eh? Sure <laughs> adventure. <laughs> I knew 
There was something odd about you this morning. I just realised where it is. What? You were wearing that top yesterday. Yes. And those trousers. So what? So, who did get home last night? Huh? And you're the one who says I've got a one-track mind. Well, you have. Come on, there is no other reason you would be wearing the same thing two days running. Who was he? You won't forget the keys, will you? Oh, yeah. Hang on. No going back now, you know. There you go. How's it feel? Like the prison door has opened and the sunshine is flooding in. Well, come on, Curly. If it's half one, last to move. Yeah, I'm with you, mate. Good luck with the house. Yeah, you too. Right. See you, folks. See you, Curly. Right, right, let's swing him off then. Come on. Good luck, Kid. Oh. Take care, won't you, Norman? I will do. Hey, all the best. Come <laughs> here. Hey, darling, all the best. Oh, whoops. There you go. Oh, that's that's the car. Hey, one, one of them from the Casbah, one of them exotic dancers. <laughs> See ya. Uh, Bye, goodbye, everyone. Ta da, girl. Ta da, son. Good luck. Bye, everybody. Bye. All right, you're set. Let's go. Ta da, son. Bye. Bye. Ta da, son. Hey, come on, let's get in. Yeah, it's cool. It'll be back one day. Chance to change your mind, you know? Nah, I couldn't go back if I wanted to now, could I? I'd look a right wazzock. <laughs> no, I can't wait, mate. <clears throat> I only wish I was coming with you, eh? Right? Just seems like one problem after another at the minute. Why don't you? What, just up and go? Well, you read about it, don't you? But, uh, I tell you, I could be tempted. Yeah? <laughs> nah, I'm only joking. I'm not the type, am I? I mean, I'd like to think I was, but. I haven't got the guts when it comes down to it. Now, ten years ago, maybe. But I've got too much going for me here now. I'm too old and all apart from out else. I know, I know. Boring, isn't it? It's not boring. People do what they want to do, don't they? Well, I don't know if that's true, Curly. It's not everyone who knows what they want, is it? Still, it's not us, eh, kids? Nope. Listen, best of luck while you're over there, eh? OK? Think about me changing them bedpans when you're up that mountain. Yeah, yeah, will we? Okay. Come here. Hey, take care. Yeah, see you, mate. All right. Do right. some for me, eh? Will do. Here we go <laughs> into the big blue. Get in there. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck, now. You won't believe this. Elaine phoned this morning, before I went to work. Carl wants to see me again. Says, can I go down New Year's Day? He's obviously very fond of you. Yeah, but it, it's going to muck our New Year up, if I don't. Well, you don't get to see him very often. Well, I know we sorted this out the other day, but you must be getting brassed off with me now, right now no matter what you say, Molly. I'm not. Will you stop going on about it? You see, on the one hand, I want to make it up to you. And on the other, I feel I don't want to let Carl down. It could be another year before I see him. Well, then go, Bill. Bill, I understand. Honestly, just go. Is it all right if I get our Jamie a Coke? Yes, no, oh, I can. Uh, Luke, love it. Me, me and Alvira were thinking, uh, next Friday when you go to DSSS, they, they, they probably want to know who the father is. Yeah. Is that a problem? No, no, no problem. No. I'm not ashamed of him. Oh, no, no. Good, good. You, you will tell him then. Yeah. Any reason not to? No, no reason at all, no. Nice to see you again. You're looking well. What's going on? Sorry? Just cut the pleasantries, will you? 
I got a message saying Steve's in trouble. Oh, yes, Steve. So what's happened to him? He's perfectly all right now. It's the trouble he could get into. Is that some kind of threat? He'll be all right as long as I keep on seeing you, is that it? Please, please, what is all this? You're being very brittle today. Blackmail? Violence? What are you taking me for? So what is going on? I think you've come across Malcolm Fox. He's the reason Steve's in here. Well, exactly. You'd think he'd have learned his lesson. What's he doing? Fox is putting silly ideas into Steve's head. Unsavoury ventures for when they get out of here. As the name suggests, Fox is vermin. He's got a loser written all over him. <coughs> but none of us is perfect, of course, but there are limits. So, I thought I'd better warn you before he strays too far. And that's it? You called me in here just to tell me that? I don't think you realise. This is a very delicate stage in Steve's development. If he learns the wrong instincts now, it could start a vicious circle. He could be in and out of prison for the rest of his life. I thought this was something we should talk about, Liz. I might be able to help. Molly, not in. No, she's had to nip to the bank. Why? Sum it up. Well, it's this Bristol business at New Year, as she told you. She has mentioned it, yes. Well, she says she doesn't mind me going. But I don't believe it. Has she said out to you? No, but she has been a bit mardy this last few days. Yeah? What you've got to remember about our Maureen is that she often keeps her thoughts to herself. And if there is some trouble in her, she won't always say it. Well, this is what worries me. I mean, I feel bad about leaving her. I'm worried that she's not saying no. Also, you've got to bear in mind what happened with Reg. He left her for a woman at the other end of the country. He used to say everything were dandy, but he was carrying on. She's not going to forget that in Ori, you know. No, and who can blame her? I think she thinks that I'm on that game, you know. Up to you to reassure her then, isn't it? You thought I wouldn't come back, didn't you? That's why you did it. Well, why should I think that? We got on very well last time, didn't we? You got worried when I turned your little shopping trip down. Shall I tell you why I did that? Because you lied about Sean. Not that again. That was no ordinary nugget. They knew his name. They never even took any money from him. Some thug set that up. And who was the thug when Skinner took 800 quid off Steve with the dog track? Steve owed him that. You know, I'm puzzled. You seem to think more about Sean Skinner than you do about your own son. Steve's the one I'm worried about. Oh, and I'm not. <laughs> I see myself in him at that age, you know. Clever. Charming. A bit too impressionable. He just needs setting on the right course. There's still time. So how could you help? I'd have Fox dealt with. Meaning what? He'd be told to mind his own business. Stay away from Steve. Oh, what? He'd have his head kicked in? A warning should be enough. Look, if you have reservations, I mean, you do want me to look after Steve, don't you? I want what's best for Steve, yeah. Good. Well, in that case, I'll leave it up to you. If you think I can be of help, all you have to do is give the word. It's up to you now, Liz. So Curly got away all right then? <laughs> yeah, it was raring to go. <laughs> it was nearly at the ferry by now. France, uh, oh, well. Back to the ironing. <laughs> See you. Yeah, you can tell so, uh, are you seeing him tonight? Who? This new bloke? No, I don't think so. I think he's busy. You know, he, he travels a lot. Right, what does he do? He does maps. Mm -hmm. Maps? Yeah. You know, he takes her up to date and everything. Right. Sounds a bit goofy. No, he's not actually. Quite dishy. Oh. It's about six foot. He's got hair to about here. He drives one of them off-roader things. Quite arty looking. Mm. And he's got a flight in the keys. All oh, right. When are you next seen him then? Oh, I don't know really. He's not sure of admirers. Oh right. Women in every grid reference, eh? Well, maps. Grid references. Oh, what do you mean, like ley lines? 
Well, if he's got all those women chasing after him, probably, yeah. <laughs> he was just saying how bad he feels about letting you down. I've told him it doesn't matter. Are you quite sure about that? Because he's not stupid, Bill Webster. You'll know if you're hiding something from him. Well, what, what could I be hiding? Well, how would I know? But whatever it is, get it out of it, it's bothering you. Clear the air before he goes away again and you'll feel better. The coral reef forms a barrier to an undersea world that has to be seen to be believed. So, we're going to go and see it. You were right. You have a lot of small fish. You're in the eh. coral garden. Box of tricks. He said, not back it. I put two quid in and it fell. <sighs> Should have listened. To me. What do I know, lad? What do I know? Hey, listen, you know you told our Jack you'd give out Terry's name to the DSS. What is this about Terry's name? Because they'll pass it on to child support agents and they'll trace him. They'll find him. That's great, isn't it? He'll come back. But we don't want that. Look, listen to me, it's trouble. Well, Jack didn't seem too bothered. Look, will you listen to me? Look what he did to our Tommy, eh? Look, it's best for everybody. <coughs> He never finds out. Believe me, honestly. <sighs> yeah, you're right. I mean, you know him better than I do, don't you? I don't want to lose my baby, do I? Well, I'm only thinking about you and baby, love. Look, I know it's sad on you. It's sad on us. But it's best all round. And listen, it's best if you don't, don't say out to our Jack. Oh, yeah, don't worry. Right. About Bristol, I've had this idea. Why don't you come with me? Then you'll know there's nothing between me and Elena. I believe you. No, but with Reg leaving you, like he did, and that, you must be a bit worried somewhere. I'm not worried. <sighs> then you're still angry about Christmas. No! Aren't? So what is it? The summer, isn't there? I know you too well, I won't let it go. It's not about you, and it's not about Elaine, and it's not about Bristol. It's about me. Why? What, what's happened? Like? I wasn't going to tell you, but it's gnawing away at me. And with you keep saying how badly you feel, it makes me feel even more guilty. <laughs> well, you're right, Pen, aren't we? Now, come on, Rodin, it can't be that bad. Family. Whilst you were in Bristol, you see, I was so lonely and fed up and, uh, and cross. I slept with another man. So you think you know me, you don't know me at all, you only know the good bits about me. Yes, I know, I know. I'm sorry, but I'm really sorry. Well, Happy New Year, Vera, if I don't see you. Oh. I've got a big do at the hospital tomorrow. Oh, good, good night, love. All the best. Good night, Emily. Bye-bye. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye. Norman! Oh, whatever's happened? What are you doing back? Is everything all right? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. I just changed my mind, that's all. Decided to come home. <laughs> 